Hello everyone, welcome to Wilton Mill. It's Easter Sunday, it's finals day for the 2024 British Open Championship for both Honda Cadets and all of our Rotax classes as well. We're here at Wilton Mill, it's the first meeting of a new Vera Tools British Kart Championship season and it's great to have you along with us for the ride. Today we've got all of our super heats and the all important finals to decide who will take home the coveted O plates across five categories here today. 220 drivers competing for those for those titles which allow them to run the O plate for across the course of 2024 it's going to be a great day's action here dry at the moment but always with Wilton Mill you've got to keep an eye on on the skies let's see how the drivers get on across the course of a full day of racing here on the motorsport tv network of channels and a very warm welcome indeed to uh, a slightly blustery Wilton Mill this morning for finals day on Easter Sunday for this, the 2024 Vera Tools British Open Championship, the Rotax and Honda British O Plate. And uh, myself, Andrew Mather, on commentary once again uh, with Henry Baudet. Uh, Henry, thrilling day yesterday through the, uh, through the heats. Great to be streaming it, uh, be broadcasting it here for, uh, for the first uh, time in the season. Um, what, what did you make of it? Well, firstly, uh, thank you very much, Andrew. Yes, it was an excellent day yesterday. Here is a look at the circuit which 220 drivers will be tackling today. Hard to believe that uh, yeah, 1991 Wilton Mill was built. It's undergone several changes since then, not least the very last corner you can see on our Alpha Live graphics there. Yesterday, it was extremely exciting. I have to take one issue with what you said in your intro. You said a warm welcome. Warm is not yeah. a word I warm would use heart. to describe the conditions today. Um, we're not going to talk about what could happen uh, after one o'clock because the, the graphic is lying, ladies and gentlemen. Um, no, they, they, there is a little bit of precipitation in the forecast. Uh, as you said, the superheats, that's something new. Going to be interesting to see how that changed. We haven't got pre-finals. This is superheats, double points, mm -hmm. and it's simply, it's it's like having heats three or four together. So drivers competed in two heats yesterday. Well, most of the drivers competed in all their heats yesterday. We have two heat races to go. You can see uh, two heat races to go this morning. Uh, yeah, it was an excellent day. Yesterday, there was a bit of give and take. Yep. Today, much more, much more take, a lot less give. Um, I did speak to one parent out in the paddock who went, I think it's gonna be, mm, it might be a, a, bit of a, a bit of an incident fest. Uh, and whoever, so you'd be, but that's the nature of this type of event because it's winner takes all. Mm. No one cares about who comes second. No one wants to come second. It's not a championship. You're not playing it safe, thinking, okay, well, I want, this is gonna be, I'm not going to take the win, but this is a good points weekend. No, it's uh, all, it's, you know, it's all or nothing. And, of course, you know, a happy Easter to everybody, but it's not just you and me, Andrew. Indeed, it's... Uh, Our it's, third wheel. It's a team of three this year, and uh, hoping that we can... Head down for the first time today to, uh, to Nicole Sutherland in the pits and uh, Park Ferme. Nicole, over to you. Thank you, boys. So over here, Wilton Mill for the second day of racing. Yesterday, action-packed, very exciting. And undoubtedly today, we're going to see a number of drivers on a bit of a, a redemption drive. Today, more changeable conditions. There's a lot of atmosphere in the paddock. Is it going to rain? Is it not going to rain? So we're definitely going to see uh, probably at some point what some drivers would refer to a bit of a scrap in the, uh, in the paddock trying to change the, the setups over. It's running a lot cooler as well today. So engines will be running colder, drivers will be closer together and undoubtedly we're going to probably see some very quick laps. We've got a bit of time to fill before we kick off for the rest of the day. Um, looking forward to seeing who's going to take some of these home at the end of the weekend. We're just going to head over to Jag Rotax. So Jag Rotax, for the audience at home who might not know, are the UK importer of the Rotax engines. This weekend, fantastic entry, 220 drivers, which has broken a record. So we're just going to go and catch up with Gary from Jag. Gary, can we pull you for a chat for a second? Can do, yeah. We're just highlighting over the stream how this weekend record-breaking entry. What can you tell us about that? 
I think it's just a, it's a, it's a success of the Rotax class. Uh, stronger every year, engine sales more and more every year. Uh, it's just a popular class. I think it ticks all the boxes in the UK. Yeah, of course. And also, I think Jag and Rotax continuously making changes to different classes to make it more fair and more interesting for the drivers. Can you tell us about some of those changes? Yeah, I mean, uh, obviously Rotax, uh, as the uh, manufacturer of the engines, are forever uh, liking to trying to improve the engine uh, over the years. It gets better and better, um, and they continue to every year. You know, the new parts come out, they're improving on parts, the parity now on the cylinders. You've seen out here this weekend, the par you know, the, the, the uh, equalness of the um, racing is is unbelievable, and we're getting comments all the time with the parity wise how good it is. So, yeah, they're doing a great job. That's fantastic. Great to hear from you, Gary. We'll throw back up to Henry and Andrew in the comms box. Thank you very much, Nicole. Uh, yeah. yeah, great to hear from, uh, from the guys at Yeah, of uh, course, we have to say, first of all, we'll be waiting for the, the start light to be given. Happy Easter. Hope mm -hmm. the Easter Bunny has been. But of course, because it's Easter Sunday and the Easter Bunny, that gets a chance to re reference Watership Down. You know, bright yes. eyes, burning like He's fire. Already, got, got, it's a Sunday morning scene. I, if, if the kids in the paddock, parents, show the kids Watership Down. That'll give them nightmares. Oh, look, it's the Easter Bunny. Oh, look, he's been eaten by a dog. Uh, but there we go. Do you know, interesting fact, Mike Bat wrote that song, uh, yeah. uh, Bright Eyes, for Art Garfunkel. Do you know what else he wrote? Go on. The Wombles. The Wombles. The Wombles. Go on, give us a song. Go on, Andrew. Oh, Go on, Andrew. Wombling in Wimbledon. I can't remember. Uh, come on, are we? The making good use of the things that we find. Things the everyday folk leaves behind. Tell you what. Let's have a little look. We've got two heat races remaining. Yes. Uh, you've got Micromax. That's race 15. They're the carts that you see down on the grid. They are the youngest members of the Rotax family. Mm -hmm. uh, then you have Honda Cadet GX200 going out next. That will complete the heat races. Yep. So everybody else did their two heat races yesterday. Uh, and that will give us the full intermediate classification mm -hmm. for the, not the pre-finals. Every, every time I say there were pre-finals, you have my permission to punch me hard in nah, the face. Well, Anthony did. Um, well, I like it. No, uh, so then we'll be in the super heats. Now, the super heats, uh, the grid positions are decided based on the intermediate classifications mm -hmm. at the end of the heats. Mm -hmm. It's a double points race. So the, the super heats uh, don't decide the grid, the starting grid for the finals. It's you add the points together, yep. and then the top 34 drivers in points... Uh, start uh, uh, qualify for the uh, main events. So everybody else, if you're not in the top 34 in points at the end of this race, uh, we don't have any rep charges nope. or B final. So it's a straight elimination. You know, you got your super heat. If you're not in the top 34, then uh, you are done. Your chances of O plate glory are over. Well, I can see the mechanics walking away. And that means that very shortly we'll be underway with what will be an eight lap plus one lap heat. And then the super heats, they're 10 minutes plus a lap. How long are the finals? 12 minutes plus a lap. That was a rhetorical question. A big hello to everybody on the live chat. Uh, big hello, Michael Burke, Q uh, turning in from Bathurst. Australia. You are Bathurst, Australia. Good day or good evening. Yeah, nah, yeah, nah. And uh, there. But now, the carts are on the grid. That means one thing, Andrew Mather. It means that race one of the day, heat 17, it's Micromax, heat two, coming up now. Second heat of this O-Plate weekend then for Micromax. Let's have a look at their grid. Starting on pole position, Joshua Cook in the number nine, the remaining top ten driver from last year. Charlie Page alongside on the front row. Dean Pahal and Lucian Smith on row two. Luke Millwood and Elliot Travis on row three. Now, row number four will be Matt Jolly and Austin Oman. Logan Rolf and Alfie Garrett round out your top ten. Alfie Mir and Maximilian Abrahart on row six. Starting from the seventh row of the grid, James Roots goes alongside Sebastian Behrman. Josh 
Pushka and uh, Arthur Ferro start on row eight. Jensen Walker and Benedictus Masioka start on row nine. Archie Rogers, Tyler, uh, Harris Barber, Chester Forks, Albert Ferro, William Crombie and Xavier Ramsey. That's your top 24 and still there are more. Row 13, Harry Radcliffe and Oliver Dawson, Ethan Lloyd and Toby Biggs on row 14. Harpadas and Adam Galudi start on row 15 with George Swire completing the 31 Cart field. All of these drivers guaranteed a spot in the final, but uh, this heat, the results from it combined with the one from yesterday, will set the grid for the superheat later on this morning. Away we go then. Eight minutes plus one lap. First race of Easter Sunday here at Wilton Mill. And it's a solid start for Cook from the front of the order. All 31 drivers. 30 drivers, in fact, we've got one did not start. Oh. That's Harper Das, and that's a problem for the 44 the straight away. That's Lucian Smith. And uh, uh, Lucian Smith was starting right at the sharp end of the field. So uh, commiserations to Lucian. He's obviously going to have to go back to the drawing board, and that's a real shame for both him and for the, uh, the Jacks Project One race, the Jacks Motorsport Project One racing group. Uh, we spoke to several drivers in this class, Benedictus Masiokas, Alfie Mayer, and of course, Jack Marshall, uh, on the Paddock Show yesterday, which you will be able to watch during the lunch break today. It's a blinder. It's but, indeed. Uh, on the track now, we have got into the boots. So this is boot one, followed by boot two, and then the final chicane. Those drivers using a lot of the curbs, and that's a Hunter Motorsport cart up into th third position. Max Jolly making a very good start. And... Uh, Moving on to the rear bumper of second place driver Diem Pahal up the hill. That's the RCE car of Diem Pahal, the number 23, the Richardson Chassis Engineering Group. And Diem uh, driving very well in his first year. They got involved in an incident, but uh, he is uh, at the forefront of this race chasing Joshua Cook. Yeah, I've been really impressed with Diem Pahal this weekend. This has been a big step forward for Pahal at the start of 2024 in compar comparison to last year. There's Elliot Travis in the number 35. Yeah. I would keep an eye on Elliot Travis today. He's got a very good record around Wilton Mill in tricky conditions. If, and it's a big if at the yep. moment, the rain was to come, Elliot Travis could be uh, a, a proper good bet in uh, Micro Max here and today. He, he's also got a very Alain Prost-esque crash yes. helmet design. Proper helmet I was, design. I was looking at this and thinking, what? Why is that familiar to me? Why, did, why is that familiar? And yes, it looks like the professor's helmet. Now, battle on the second. Max Jolly had a little look coming out through Fine Lady up towards Christmas Corner. There's a move further back in the pack. That's the number 21 cart of James Roots. Uh, the Roots, the Roots, the Roots is on fire as he moves up a position into the top 10. He, he's running with the Evolve Motorsport team. He's just got Danny Sweeney helping him out uh, on the driver coaching and uh, some of the engine work. Uh, and it's obviously working for him up into the top 10. Yeah, another driver, very experienced. A lot of these uh, young pilots have already raced at least uh, a few months, maybe even a year at the cadet level. They've often raced through the Bambinos, even at uh, this tender age. Three or four years of experience underneath them as they go into 2024. Five minutes, just over five minutes remaining in this one. There's a warning flag going out, Henry, to the number 14. That is Max Jolly in the number 14. Yeah. Just a warning right just, just now. A, just a warning. A few other people on the live chat. Hello, Terry Ellingham from uh, ten well, watching from Tennessee. Uh, Lucas Ellingham uh, had a bit of an up and down day yesterday, uh, but he's walking in Memphis. I, I, it's Sunday morning. You've got to have a good sing song. That's three <laughs> three little tunes. Already? The first, uh, yes. Sixth position, Charlie Page coming into Wilkins down the hill towards Osiers. And again, such a technical corner. That curb that uh, the top three all rode really well. Mm. If you hit that curb at the wrong angle, if you slide into the side of the curb, and there was a move going on there, the number 15 cart. I think that was uh, picking up position. Alfie Mayer. Um, you can, and again, there's the, the, the final curb. And, oh, and a spin for the uh, number 55 cart of uh, Josh Hushka uh, for the Sam Pollock Racing Team. Just go to show that if you hit the curbs wrong, it can actually, especially in these smaller carts, it can really, uh, you know, really turn them around. We, we've seen it this weekend. We saw it in the pre-event uh, last we week. We saw it last week with Theo Bradshaw yeah. in, inverting himself. It's, uh, uh, <laughs> it's, it's, I think it's one of the things that is quite good about that new final corner. that you. It's not just a case of chuck the cart at it and hope for the best. You've got to be very precise yes. as a driver with, uh, with your inputs. 
There's the number 14 of Max Jolly on your screens for a moment. Austin Oman having another good weekend. Stronger one week ago, took the final win in the club meeting that preceded this, uh, this 2024 O plate. And it's looking fast again here. What is the pace like at the moment? 53.28. Yes. Uh, the fastest lap at the moment, make that 53.19. Uh, the driver who set it, Max Jolly, there in third. Now, we've got five classes of kart racing uh, this weekend. You've got, obviously, Micro Max, Mini Max, Junior Max, and Senior Max. We've also got Honda Cadet. This is the second race meeting with the new layout. Now, the four Rotax lap records that were set last weekend, three of them were broken yesterday. The only survivor, I believe, is Minimax. Minimax, and it, and it survived by one hundredth of a second from, uh, from one week ago. So with these cooler conditions, good for the engines, yes. I would expect that record to go pretty early uh, on in, uh, in today's running. But we'll talk about that later on, of course, when we get to Minimax. We've got two yep. minutes and 40 seconds of this second heat for Micromax to go. Joshua Cook doing a fine job at the front of the order, Henry, holding the lead, in fact, extending that lead now to more than half a second. Yes, we do. Now, obviously, Nicole Sutherland is in the pit lane. She'll be watching some of the action, and during the course of the day, especially during the longer races, we'll be able to chat to Nicole maybe during the races. But we've also got a new feature this year of Al Alfie Garford. He's our driving standards advisor. He's not a steward. He's helping the stewards. He's helping David Manchester in Motorsport UK race control. There is Alfie. You can see him with the officials. Now, on those screens there, that's not the Alpha live, uh, live cameras. That's the Motorsport UK track cameras. And Alfie can then assist uh, and so, uh, the rest of the stewards. And he is the driving standards advisor. He advises the stewards. He's not a judge of fact. He's not making making decisions himself, but he, as, as, a, as a current champion in the British Championship, in the TKM classes, he can, you know, say to, the, okay, that, that's a racing incident, I, you know, that's something that I, is a, or that is a driver was being a little bit cheeky in because he knows all the tricks of the trade. And his dad, Sam, is out working in the scrutineering as well. Which, which is good. But anyway, back to the action. That's just some of the new features, ladies and gentlemen, that we've got for you uh, in the Motorsport UK British Championship coverage, obviously by Alpha Live uh, this year. But on the track, the same action as we've always come to expect. Close quarters, no quarter asked, and none given. Joshua Cook needs Dia Bahal by uh, 35 hundredths of a second and uh, there's a the move Charlie Page on Elliot Travis Travis holds him off now can Page get to the inside this is going to be interesting no no one's brave enough to go side by side yet into that final chicane and it's, it's quite good positioning there from Elliot Travis just nipped Charlie Page right onto the apex there wasn't really any space for Charlie Page to accelerate through and take advantage of having that overlap new fastest lap of the race Max Jolly 53.09 Means the top three are now covered by 0.4 of a second as Page has a look down the inside of Travis for fourth place. Good defence by Travis there, using the camber of the road that's present through Christmas Corner. You can hold an outside line to defend around there. Yes, you can. Uh, you know, then across Inkermans, and that's Ashby's now into Wilkins. Page having another little look at the inside. I have to say, Page went for the move. Travis defended. They ran side by side. You know, that's good sport in driving at the moment. This is only the heat race, though. These micro drivers, they've still got their super heat and the final to go. Yep, they have indeed. Good work by Alfie Mayer and Maximilian Eberhardt, the two zip uh, uh, factory team drivers. They've been working together. They've closed up this gap now. We're on to the final lap. It's a battle of three at the very front and then a group of five for, uh, for fourth place down to eight. James Roots may have a... Uh, thing to say about this as well, once again, Travis using the positive camera around the outside, holds the speed, holds the position ahead of Page, uh, ahead of Omen. Omen but now down the inside on Page. Page is going to use the outside line side by side as they run towards Wilkins here. This is good news for Travis. He's breaking away. Oh, very close there with Alfie Mayer. Alfie Mayer down the inside of Omen gets a position as well. Eberhardt's going to have a go. Meanwhile, oh, back at the front, change of lead. Pahal has found a way through past uh, Josh Cook and is going to come round to take victory. Dean Pahal takes victory in heat two from Joshua Cook and Max Jolly. What a finish. Well done, Dean Pahal. Um, and again, I was speaking to Dean's dad last night and there was some 
some uh, laughter because as Dian crossed the start finish line, yes, yeah, so there's a big smile from Dihan Pahal. Uh, uh, Dian's dad was telling him to overtake and giving him the signal, okay, overtake, overtake, overtake. Yeah. And then as Dian was going up the hill, towards Christmas Corner, away from the paddock, Dean's dad is still giving him the signal, like he's got eyes in the back of his head. But he wins by two tenths of a second from Josh Cook. And looking down the order, uh, Xavier Ramsey picking up a position, Harris Barber moved there. Now, of the Pharaohs, Albert Pharaoh finishing 20th. And uh, but his Arthur Pharaoh was a little bit further ahead. So that's, uh, that's good stuff there. And a great win for Dian Pahal. Yeah. Uh, and, the, and the RCE team, uh, Force Motorsport, uh, Jordan Baines on the engines as he comes in. Now, there, there on the left-hand side, that is the Wilton Kart Club official holding the Telephone of Doom. What, Andrew Mather, does the Telephone of Doom signify? Well, the Telephone of Doom comes out when the evidence is required mm. to, uh, to verify that a driver's front fairing has dropped. Uh, it's often the sign that a five-second penalty is on the way. Oh, for, yes. Uh, for the Fist bumps driver. all round. Now, uh, uh, what the there's a big smile. Before we speak to Dean, a quick hello. Hello, Ka hello, Cathy Watson. Uh, saying hello to John and Shay Watson. How are you, Cathy? Hope you're okay. I hope that you've got your Henry Hoover stickers uh, out. Uh, you're watching the carting. And I'll make sure that your dad's behaving himself. How's that? Okay. And th that's what we like to see. There's Charlie Page. And uh, again, driver coaches. And look at that. There's other members of the team coming over to congratulate Dian. And again, in typical Micromax fashion, the, the telephone of doom has not been used yet no. because they all behave themselves. If only they continued on that trajectory up into their mini junior and senior careers. Indeed. Well, I think uh, the story of Micromax is we've had a number of drivers move on, of course. To yes. Mini Max. Yes. But we are not going to be short on talent. We're not going to be short on entertainment. Never this short year. on talent. The only thing short about the, dri is the short about the drivers is, is the drivers. The yes. Uh, yes. But uh, yeah, it looks like everyone was through. A there. clean bit of health. Well done, uh, well done, well done to uh, Michael. Now, Deanne's little character mm. and Nicole Sutherland is about to discover this because she has got Tia Bahal down in the pits. So we are here with Dian Pahal, race two winner. Dian, you won that race on the last lap. Can you tell us a bit about that? So the whole race, I was right behind Josh Cook. I pushed him through the fast corner on the, uh, on the start of the race. I was behind him all, like every single lap. Not one point I overtook him. But on the last lap, um, I think it was Max Joy, Jolly, uh, he gave me a little nudge from the back and I had a chance so I went for it and it turned out I won the race. That's great, well done Dean. looking forward to seeing what you do for the rest of the weekend. And we'll just head back up to the comms box to hear a quick word from our partners ahead of the rest of the action. Thank you very much, Nicole. Great to hear from uh, Dean Pahal down there, uh, for the winner of that last race. Now, on to the next one, though. Honda Cadet, Heat 2, uh, coming up, Henry. Yes. This should be a good one. Yes, indeed. Here's your group. Kevin Ivanov and Margaris Kovakis on row number one. Kian Sullivan and Ed Spain share row number two. Elliot Bork and Ricky McIntosh Jr. on Row number three. On the fourth row of the grid, Andrew Sutherland and Luke McGall, Jack Fulbrook Harmer and Ronnie Smart complete the top ten there on row five. Ralphie Branscombe and Albie Smith on row six. Ralphie Branscombe, most popular driver on the live chat, always has huge amounts of support. Archie Cannon, reigning national champion Ryan White, Harry Grant, Shay Hilton, uh, Shaylan Srikanton and Jayan Prakash. That's your top nine rows of the grid. And in fact, that's all you're getting because there are only nine rows, 18 drivers. 
And uh, yeah, why is Ryan White wearing the number one? He is the defending and reigning Honda Cadet Motorsport UK British champion. Uh, we spoke to his team last night, his LMM Motorsport. Mm -hmm. Now they actually ran uh, Ryan to uh, the British title last year, but he was entered as a Project One driver because somebody didn't fill out the paperwork in time oh. as an entrant license. But we're not going to say that. That's between me and you, okay, oh, Andrew? Okay. We'll spare their blushes. Nobody heard that. No, 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 no one heard that at all. Um, but of course, he's uh, he's running the, the the Project One colours, and uh, yeah, that's always always good to see. Didn't qualify very well, but he raced very well and. Uh, Spoke to Paul James last night at the Paddock Show, the team owner from Ambition Motorsport. And uh, again, Ambition are back to the forefront, uh, Honda Cadet. And, and more significantly, he was saying that, okay, there was a, a few mur mur murmurings of discontent when they moved from the GX160 engine to the G200, the GX200 engine. But overall, now you're seeing it's going to be better for the class. But standing start for these 18 drivers. And, uh, well, Andrew Mather. Uh, if the Micromax race, which was clean, green and exciting, is anything to go by, what can the Honda boys do? I hope for another good one here. Eyes on those lights for the start of eight minutes plus one lap for the first race of the day in Honda Cadet. Heat two is underway and they've all got away safely this time. We had a bit of a delay yesterday for the anti-pole side of the grid, but they're all up and running. Good start for Ivanov. Good start for Kovekis as well from the front row. Then going to be... Sullivan and Spain hunt running into Christmas quarter for the first time. They're all through the first major braking zone, Henry, and on their way down to Ashby Corner. Yes, and they're in third position. One of the ambition drivers have feigning a move to the inside. That's the number 33. That's Ricky McIntosh Jr. going through in about sixth position. And they're three wide into Wilkins. The 45 carts in the middle of that sandwich, Harry Grant. And uh, they all uh, continue. Interesting to see that a couple of the only a couple have got the old school metal reel bumpers. Everyone else going for the uh, the plastic arrangement. Uh, there's obviously a reason for that. Some people think that it helps the setup of the cart. Uh, it helps the feel of the cart. So they, you know, uh, and other for others in this category, there's obviously going to be a difference in weight. I would imagine. So uh, you know, I'm not sure which is heavier, the the plastic or the metal. Someone on the live chat will correct me and tell me, I am sure. Hint, 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 YouTube audience, please tell me what weighs more, the metal bumper or the plastic bumper. So uh, still early stages of this one. Ivanov leading from Quebec is Sullivan, Spain and Bork. That is your top five here in Honda Cadets. Drivers looking to succeed. Kian Bernard, of, uh, of course, who won the O-plate for Honda last year. And further back through the history. Yeah, yeah. And Noah Indeed. Wolf is an example. Of Noah years. Wolf is there, and yeah. uh, I mean, I, I, Soylent Green. It's Soylent Green. New uh, Soylent Standing Start is good. Yes, it is for these kids. They get Soylent Green are people. No, Soylent Green. Um, yes, the Standing Starts are good because they, these kids uh, they, they watch Formula One. They watch yeah. their heroes, and they get their own Formula One type start. Uh, obviously, you can't do it for uh, uh, two strokes because. It decreases the life expectancy of the clutch considerably. You mentioned Formula One. Oh, metal bumper to... is heavier. Yeah. There we go. Metal bumper is heavier, you know. Uh, uh, so, obviously, for a bit of extra weight round your rear end, it's um, so a problem I've had for most of my life, um, <laughs> is, is uh, you put the metal bumper on. Mm. Mm. Now, you mentioned Formula One, Henry. Yes. Go back to 2016. In the, the old formula of, of Honda Cadet, Ollie Behrman was Euro Plate champion. So he there certainly you go. was. Oh, somebody else is asking, when is the paddock show getting uploaded? The paddock show will be viewed during the lunch break. Mm. So, uh, uh, it will be on the channel afterwards. But it's going to premiere. The paddock show will take, make its premiere during the lunch break. So you've got no excuses not to stay tuned all day. So again, Alpha is doing a lot of different things this year as we watch the top four close up. But yeah, the Paddock Show is premiering. We got our own little red carpet yes. as well. I'm going to put a nice dress on nice. Uh, uh, to uh, it's interview all the celebrities, like a proper red carpet at uh, a proper film premiere, uh, karting style in the mud at Wilton Mill. Top four drivers. Oh, Whoa, and there's speaking of mud. That's Ricky McIntosh Jr. Oh, and his teammate there, Harry Grant. 
doing a bit of rally cross racing. Uh, great reactions there. Ricky McIntosh Jr. broadside on the outside kerb, coming out of Ashby's. And uh, of course, the drivers are blind going into that corner. It's downhill. There's that tyre barrier in the middle. And of course, when you have a look at the height of these drivers, yeah, they can't see over those two rows of tyres very well. So you're coming downhill off camber uh, around the corner and suddenly, you know, the, all the cart wants to do is, is go that? left. You're trying to steer it right. So good reaction driving there as uh, uh, Margaris Kamekis sets a new fastest lap uh, and uh, a 50 40, oh, one. That was at elbows out and the 51 cart goes has been Ronnie Smart on that Project One cart gets going again. Uh, that was... That's, that's the type of action you're going to expect. That was a little bit more take and a lot less give. As you said at the start of the day, it's uh, no thoughts of championship standings and points. This is a one-off event. Once we get to uh, to the seat, well, the championship proper, which you can watch all here on the Motorsport UK uh, network of channels, broadcasting every single Saturday and Sunday live across the course of 2024, the Vera Tools British Kart Championship. Once we get to that, everyone will start on zero. One of these drivers will, of course, hold the O plate for 2024. Another new fastest lap of the race, Ed Spain 53.7. This is your front four. Oh. Ivanov, Kovekis, Sullivan and Spain. All three quite experienced drivers across yep. the categories in their young careers. Sullivan has a little look to the inside there down into Ashby. The other thing with Ashby, of course, it's downhill, so all the weight transfer, yep. even in these, these smaller carts, these younger drivers, it's all shifting to the front. It's asking those front tires to do a lot of work. Now, the two ambition drivers, they've been working together. Ed Spain has been pushing Kean mm. Sullivan and keeping them in contention. Last lap, we saw Spain sort of feign a move going up towards Christmas Corner. Now on your screen, you're looking at the battle for fifth, sixth, seventh and eighth that's ryan white elliot fork luke mccall and the pink crash helmet ralphie branscombe i think right now Harry, i'd keep ah. working if i'm that that second quartet because we've seen three seconds in a honda cadet race discipline with two and a bit minutes on the clock and uh, they're not quite doing that at the moment but the fight has begun at the front of the field down the inside ed spain on his teammate takes third place away from kids sullivan now sets about trying to close into yes. Quebec is an even overhead. Yes, indeed. You know, they were, they were breaking loose going through, uh, uh, you know, up the hill towards Christmas Corner. There's the first move. That's Margaris Kovacis moving into top spot in that uh, the number 15 cart, the Zebra, the flying Zebra, uh, uh, we'll call that because it's uh, flying towards the front. Ivanov trying to come back at him. Uh, then Ed Spain, he's now past Kian Sullivan. Ed Spain has got the fast lap of the race. And so he's thinking, so, OK, sorry, Kian, I know you're your teammate, but I've got to go. And Kian now beginning to fall off the back, although this will help him. Oh, I'm an arm up the inside of Quebec. It's, that's going to slow them down. Spain around the outside of Inkermans. Great move there. Now down the hill. Now watch Ed Spain. He's going to get a good run up towards Wilkins because Kovacis was defending. Will he jinx the inside? Here comes Ivanov back at him. Wheel to wheel stuff there. And uh, I think that was... Uh, now that camera position there coming out of Ashby, that's John Ratcliffe on that camera. It is. Oh, keep him out there. Don't yeah, have him back in the comms really box. Oh, I'm joking, I'm joking. Uh, but again, great work there from our Alpha Live camera crew here as uh, so the... the, the, the Final corner, so Kovacis, he's defended. Now he's pulled away again, and the two ambition drivers have got to work together. And the gap back to fourth place, where it was three and a half seconds, is now just under three seconds. 30 seconds to go, Andrew. Possible but unlikely. Yeah, at this possible point. but unlikely is a very good way of putting it, and this is why, because they're fighting hard over that fifth place and uh, not able to take advantage of the slightly slower pace that we're seeing from the front quartets right now. I haven't said that. Really good pace from Ed Spain last time around at 53.7. New fastest lap of the race. This lap plus one more to go, you'd think. Number 14 of Elliot Bork having a look over the shoulder there. Uh, Branscombe gets past McGall. So Branscombe up to seventh place now. Good opportunity for Ryan White to break away. Change of lead at the front. Now, did they get across the line before the timer clicked to zero? Because uh, I've not seen a final lap board come out. So, yeah, I uh, know. Yes, no, we are now on the last lap. So, there it is. Confirmation. Ivanov, Kovekis, Spain, Sullivan. This is it then. 
Can Ivanov hold on? It's going to go hard to drivers right here to hold that line down the inside. No opportunity for Kovekis to go through through Christmas. That's oh. a decent attempt from Spain, but the right decision just pulls back. Doesn't go for second place immediately. Kovekis looks down the inside into Ashby once again. Ivanov may run wide here. That's the tricky thing with Ashby. He's lost the lead. Yep, uh, he's trying to get it back though. Elbows his way up the inside, going through Wilkins. Now down to Ozias. Good run. Watch the number 26 of Kean Sullivan. He's going to get a good run down this straight, but his path to position is blocked. There's Ed Spain to the inside. Can he make it work round the boot? Will he look underneath going into the boot? Yes, he can. Gets the move done before the final corner. And now, look at the ambition cart in third place. But Kevin Ivanov takes the win. And that's as close as I've seen a move, an, an over-under move there from uh, Kian Sullivan. It didn't quite work out for him, but he came within four thousandths of a second. The rest of the field crossed the line. Now, Andrew, while we wait for the results to come up, you mentioned in your intro mm -hmm. the Motorsport UK uh, channel of ne network of channels. Yes. Uh, what does that mean? It's expanding out. That uh, starting for 2024, uh, there is a new specific is starting there? channel. Right. Okay. So I've got my UK phone. Channel. I've got my mobile telephonic device. So if you're on, if you're on YouTube, and right. If you're not I am. On YouTube, get on YouTube. Okay. And subscribe to the new right. channel. Karting UK. What nice do I do? Simple, what eh? do I subscribe? I mean, so I, normally my subscriptions so are best left Karting unchecked. U you search for <coughs> Karting UK on yes. YouTube. Right, I'm doing that now. And then when you found the Karting UK channel, I have. click the big red subscribe button. Yes, okay. Well, I'm going to set this up and look at that there. Like, car How would you spell karting? I, I, no, <laughs> I'm joking. Okay. I'm joking. Okay. Right, karting. I'm doing it live. This is, how you, this is how you subscribe to the new Motorsport UK network of channels. So Karting UK. Press that. Now what? Now what do you do? You ho hopefully you're all doing this at home. I've got an advert for indoor go-karting in Leicester. That's just my uh, I tell, algorithm. I'll tell, tell you what, we'll, we'll do it live on air, but there we go. That's how you do it. You subscribe to Karting UK, the new home of British karting content. Now is that across the board? Is that other championships as well? I think this is where we... We'll ask the social media manager. We'll, we'll ask the social media manager about that. But there, there is your top three. Uh, Kevin Ivanov, uh, Red Bull helmet, and I'm going to say, let's have a look. Could we have a record? Two, Two the, races the, in a row. The Telephone of Doom has not been. That's a nice livery cart there, the number oh, 23. No. I like. So oh, close. no. I just said it was a nice livery cart. Uh, Shailan, Shaila, Shailan, uh, Canton, privateer driver, really nice livery cart. Pity he had a nose cone penalty. The Telephone of Doom collects its first victim of the day. That's a five-second, non-appealable non time penalty. So, Andrew Mather. One little bit more information. Okay. On, these things have at yes. handles, don't they? So it's mm. at Our Karting UK on YouTube. At Our Karting UK. That's, that's Rolls off the tongue. Perfect. Uh, right. Let's head down to Park Fermi. I believe we've got Nicole Sutherland down there for some more thoughts with our drivers. So, Ed, really, really exciting last lap for you there. You started the race fourth, finished second. Can you tell us a little bit about it? Yeah, well, on the last lap, everyone was defending, so I tried to go for the switch back up at Christmas, but it didn't work. So um, I went, I tried a big move down the inside at the boot, and then um, I went, and then he went a bit deep, um, so I switched back to him. Mark. Fantastic, Ed. And are you looking forward to the rest of the day? Yeah, hopefully I'll win the O-plate. Great. Very best of luck to you, Ed. Just quickly, before we head into the rest of our races, we've got a short ad break from one of our partners. Welcome back, everybody, to Wilton Mill. You're watching live coverage of the 2024 British Open Championships for Honda and Rotax. We are getting into the next stage of 
proceedings here for the Oplate 2024. It is the start of the Super Heats. Here is your grid for the first of them. Super Heat A in Minimax 950. On pole position, Finley Lines alongside on the front row, Luca Holmes Ballack, Tom Reed and Zach Starbuck on row two, Charlie King and Keen Bernard on row three. Jensen Chalk, Joshua Griffin, Leo Livings, Riley Murrow, Emerson McAndrew, Euron and Miles Burton are your next six drivers. Louis Radcliffe and Blair Smith go from row seven. Otis Cleary and Harry Taylor on row eight. Jensen Sale and Ollie Thompson start on row nine. Then it's uh, Maximilian Braxov, uh, Fent and Stoneman, Adam Juadatis, uh, Akil Nane Giannone and Ilya Veliko. So, can drop a gear, disappear, Finley lines do the same trick as what he did yesterday when he dominated all that's missing is an O and a lap record is indeed so this is the stage of the event where drivers will really start thinking about that top 34 the majority of the drivers yes. in mini max will of course make it through 44 of them at the start uh, of the uh, of the entry list but that's going to be whittled down to 34 across the next two races really to be solidly in you want to be in the top 15 i would say uh, to not have that fear of what's going to happen in super hit heat b and how the maths are going to work out yep. remember it's 10 minutes Oof. plus one lap now uh, for uh, the super heat and a big good morning to tony hogg watching alfie ward sorry andrew and it's, it's a right, we're start. Go again. that's okay we're gonna go around, around again i just saw there tony news. hogg uh watching from dubai uh and uh, uh alfie ward again races out in dubai for the brand motorsport team and uh, so what's your favorite group? I like Madness. Oh, is that a different, is that a different? Someone asked the question, what's your favorite group on the live Madness chat? Madness is a good chat. Thank you, Jacob Marples. I like Madness, I like Syntax. Um, I'm all, if you, and go and look at Hot Knives as well. They're, they're excellent. But if you really want to know, uh, you know, thing, um, the Rum Jacks, mm -hmm. there you go, look them up. So it's not just casting that we do. No, 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 the Rum Jacks. Uh, have a look at them. Right. Uh, moving, very, moving back to go-karting. Very everybody. quickly, quick recap of yes. yesterday. Uh, this is how the intermediate classification looks. Finley Lines perfect, two races, two wins, zero points. Edward Haynes second, he'll have pole position for Super Heat B on four. Luke Holmes Ballack on five. Blair Smith in the number eight on eight points. Tom Reed on ten in fifth and all the rest of it down. Have a look at that on Motorsport Dash timing in due course. Those points are carried over from yesterday, remember. So yes. it's this race, this slightly longer race with double points. Will be the points from it will be combined with the two from yesterday. That will set our final intermediate classification. The top 34 in that, they're the ones who go forward to the final later on this afternoon. Are we ready for a go? Yes, we are. 10 minutes plus one lap. First super heat of the O plate and away we go. Good start for both of the synergies on the front row. Lines and Holmes Ballack up towards turn Three and four we go now, defending on the inside there. Joshua Griffin's had a very good start in the number five. I think he's gained a number oh, of positions around there. The six has Here's gone the around. Jensen Sale's gone round as well. And the 29 of Achille Giannone has also had a problem at Christmas. Oh, yeah, there's the Italian driver, Kia Giannone. And uh, so his dad, was, uh, you know, in the, the palette this morning. But Finney Lines, now, question, Andrew. Uh, Finney Lines, has he led every lap of every race he's done so far oh, i, I he believe has, yes. he has so and uh, look that's a good thing but it, it's not necessarily because it's not all not 100 percent a good thing because finney knight knows how good his car is and i mean he has gone off like a cat with a firework up its backside uh coming up there but at some point you know when all the drivers all the top names are together you know, is that car, as McCordy Austin and the uh, Synergy team got that car working where it works well in traffic as well? Because you've got to work well in traffic, you know. Uh, uh, and there's the, the, the farmer, Tom Reed, running wide there in the number 36 cart. And uh, he drops a position. Jensen Chalk now making his move up towards things. So, uh, Gen Mummy Chalk, you can, start, you can open your eyes and start watching again now. You've got to the first lap and a half. And Jensen's still out there and doing well. As things have settled down a bit, you can start watching the car team. Five second penalty from oh. race control to the number 34 of Ilya Veliko. Coming round to complete lap number three then. It's lines from Holmes Balak. Another really fast start. Now what do Holmes Balak, Starbuck, Bernard, Griffin, what do they do? Because if 
if they fight, Lines is just going to disappear again. We saw this yesterday. He's down the inside. There yep. is Kian Bernard, yep. FIA Academy representative for the United Kingdom in 2024. Remember, another great move past his teammate back into the top three. You saw Kian Bernard's parents this morning. You're proud of South Africans now racing, now obviously living in the UK. What I like about Kian Bernard is he uses my old race number, uh, 82. Obviously destined for stardom. Uh, and also on the live chat there, the rum jacks are awesome. Uh, correct, Mr. Spank. That is, they, they are a uh, very underrated band. Uh, but someone, someone asked, you know, who's your favourite group? And I answered, that's, that's yeah. why uh, I'm here to simply provide an information service. But look at Finley Lines. 1.6 seconds up the road now. Uh, new R. Ah, 49.37 and yet. Not, yet, not yet, not yet. Not We're yet. still waiting for that lap record to go. Now, the two zip drivers. Yesterday, when we went into the zip hoarding during the paddock show, it wasn't exactly the most jovial of atmospheres. It had a bit of a rough day yesterday, mm. but obviously things have picked up. Worked hard on the carts overnight, and uh, now they're coming back to the fore. The strawberry racing team also getting their, you know, all their ducks in a row. Tom Reed, six. Jensen Chalk 7th. Is that the number 74 of Charlie King Indeed. running in 8th position? So, yeah, you've got three strawberry drivers at the front. The Dan Holland racing team also well represented. But what is good is that we talked about the powerhouses yesterday, yeah. your strawberries, your KR Sports. They're all playing second fiddle to Synergy and Zipcart at the moment. I think the lap record's going to go in this race. Oh. 49 one two, a new fastest lap from Finlay Lines. Change for second place. Confirmed there. Bernard has got past Holmes Ballack. This is a very key phase of this super yep. heat now for, for me, Henry. Can Bernard, easier said than done, close in that gap to Finley Lines? Because it's nearly two and a half seconds. If you were with us yesterday, uh, if you missed any of the action, don't worry. You can watch it back on the Karting UK YouTube channel and others do give that a subscri uh, subscribe at our Karting UK. You'll have seen Finley Lines dominate two races and win by more than five seconds. It's down the inside. That was Joshua Griffin yep. going for a move on Zach Starbuck for fourth place. And doing so, Tom Reed has come through in all of that as well, has also gained a position with some opportunistic driving. Five minutes and 45 to go. What is the pace like? Well, well another really yes. good lap from Lines 49.15 um, this time. No, 49. For Bernard. Yeah, he dropped off a little bit there, Finney Those Lines, by, by three hundredths of a second. He needs to pick up the pace. Well, I mean, but you know, there's tyre conservation, not massively a factor. Yep. There's a move from Jensen Chalk. He is Jensen Chalk, your reigning Micromax Rotax Grand Finals champion. We have Team UK sent came away with Jensen Chalk champion last year of the grand finals in Michael. Oh, there's a problem. There's a Starbuck. problem for Zach Starbuck. Oh, um, someone slipped the Costa in his fuel tank and that's what's gone wrong. Oh, no, we were just talking about how well the Zip team are doing this morning and one of them have gone. Uh, retirement for Zach Starbuck. Into the second half on time now. Line still leading, 2.9 seconds. Here's an attempt at an overtake from the number 77 of Leo Livings. Lovely stuff from Leo Livings. He's done that many times through Christmas Corner. And that was a move, I think, on the number 43 of Miles Burton. Uh, goes up to 11th place. Now, Starbuck has picked... Oh, no. this... Oh, I was about oh. to say he's picked by the pace back up. No, he no, hasn't. He has it, no, and that, that has gone even from bad to worse for Zach Starbuck the, the, out of the race. And now there's going to be a question mark, depending well, on other results. Who was the driver that ran up over the back of his rear tyre? As Zach Starbuck was slowing down, another driver behind him, and I couldn't quite catch the number. We'll have a little look next time around. Uh, literally jumped up over the back of him as he went there. So that was a, a potentially, uh, you know... Uh, unpleasant accident, but it was okay. There's Tom Reed now into fourth uh, fourth position. Finley Lines leads by three seconds. Yeah, it's, it's he was not joking when he said drop a gear, disappear yesterday. That's that's going to be his call sign. So drop a gear, disappear, Finley Lines. He definitely got the setup and uh, the mechanics of the car right this weekend. And Finley Lines with his driving is delivering the performance as well. One thing to have the machinery underneath you, it's another thing oh, you got to, to drive it. it. Yep, yep. Three and a half minutes remaining in this one. Tom Reed nicely coming into this race, I feel, Henry, because he started. Where did Tom Reed start on the grid? Well, he started on the second row, went back a bit, and is now coming back through. That's him up, back up to fourth place now. Can he set about closing down 
uh, the two drivers ahead, Holmes Ballock and uh, Bernard. Yes. Looking oh. further back, there's Leo Livings once more. He's now into the top ten. The uh, Fiber King graphics on the Iridium visor of Kian Bernard. Uh, there, uh, we were briefly talking about. I got interrupted by uh, Zach, uh, Zach Starbucks slowing down, but yeah, we have got Jensen Chalk, Micromax Grand Finals champion, Rory Armstrong, Minimax Grand Finals champion, uh, Timo Jungring's here watching his brother Ralph race. Mm -hmm. uh, Timo is going to be racing uh, KZ2 in Europe this year, which is fantastic news. But like, yeah, this championship gave us three, we're not allowed to use the word world champions because the FIA get upset, but. In the Rotax, in the Rotax world, in the world, they were the best Rotax drivers in the world. That's excellent, Andrew Mather. The best in the world uh, yeah, from this championship. Three of the six classes. And Spencer Broad in E20 came second. And what was the biggest Team UK entry? 29 ever? Yeah. drivers. Two minutes, we're two we're gonna minutes have to go then. We're going to have more this year. And they're going to blink and cheer when I tell them to win the grandstand this time. Sorry, <laughs> sorry. Uh -oh, uh. Anyway, moving swiftly on, uh, look back at the stream there. But again, good battle developing now. Uh, luckily, uh, we've got some good battles because to quote the old American uh, short track oval uh, commentators, Finley Lines is stinking up the show. He's <laughs> right now, but uh, we got, ah, for, He's getting closer. He's getting Another, closer. What is the lap record again? 48.99. 48.99. I mean, come Edward on. Haynes come on, in Finley. the Minimax A quite final for uh, for the club meeting that preceded us here. Quite frankly, uh, disappointed you haven't done the job yet, Finley. You know, but there we go. Now, uh, minute minute plus change to go. Uh, we're looking at we're looking at quite a t not. I say tame. It's not. It's thoughtful. It's mature. It's tactical. All these drivers know one false move this state it could either knock them out of the main event or put them so far down the grid that in the 12 minute final they really haven't got much of a chance and also this is super heat a for the class you've still got super heat b to go so the drivers don't know exactly what they're doing there's an oh that was a change for second change place for Luca second, Holmes yep. Balak on the last lap got through past uh, Kian Bernard for that spot. So a good run for Bernard up three spots from uh, from where the Zip Battery team driver started this race. 25 seconds to go then. Lines in full control, just pacing himself home. It's down the inside once again. Beautifully done by Bernard. Reed takes second place, but Reed, Chalk, and Griffin are approaching now at quite a rate. They could see the opportunity of some uh, some better scores here, and potentially this could elevate them up on the grid for that final. Five seconds remaining, so we are going to have another lap. Lines is gone. That five-second gap that we've seen in two races so far this weekend through the heats is there once more. He can relax and bring this home for the next two laps. Bernardo's got to fight really hard around the outside there. Side by side, the two strawberries beautifully done by Jensen Chalk. Gets through yep. on his teammate up to fourth place. Bernard defends again. Holmes Ballack to the inside. That's potentially going to open the door for Jensen Chalk once again. He's getting very close out there. In comes Joshua oh. Griffin as well in the number five. Tom Reed's back down the inside of his teammates to retake that position between the Strawberry Racing drivers. What a tremendous sequence of corners that's emerged with Luca Holmes Ballack back at the front of the order now. Kian Bernard having to work really hard at the moment to hold on to what is now third place. Yeah, excellent racing as they come out of the final corner and uh, starting the last lap. Finley lines now six seconds up the road from Luca Holmes Ballock as we watch Bernard, Reed, Chalk, Griffin, and Emerson McAndrew Uren joining the party. Uh, it was a late invite, but he's thinking, well, okay, sometimes, you know, the last person through the door picks up the scraps. Out of Wilkins, down the hill towards Ozias. Uh, Holmes Ballack, Bernard are now clear, so, well, Bernard's not quite clear yet. Reed having to defend from his teammate Chalk into the boot. Over the curb, McAndrew Uren trying to take a position away from his teammate as well, but... Uh, Everybody stays in the order they were, and on the last lap, Finley Lines gets within five, five hundredths of a second of the lap record. Really good, strong. So the question is, 
who, if anybody, can beat that driver. And I'm, I'm getting to the stage where right? the only person that can beat Finley Lines is Finley, is Finley Lines. Lines, yes. Yeah. A, big, a big good morning to uh, Jan Echterman back on the live chat after a couple of times oh, away. Yeah, yeah I, think, I think it's because I called him up being a New York Giants fan, uh, which is rubbish. Um, and why don't, people, why don't we come down south to Camberley Kart Club? Well, I haven't been to Camberley Kart Club since about 2001. Why don't the British Championship go to Camberley Kart Club? Well, yeah, I can imagine 250 drivers, uh, about three dozen articulated lorries, uh, 40 massive awnings, all rocking up a Camberley. I think we'd fit in a treat there. I, I'm just <coughs> going to add some uh, some balance to the broadcast. Uh, yes, for Jan. Yeah, 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 yes, yes, yes. Oh, he's drinking. He's drink from, from my Jan Echterman is, uh, we is. We suffer in, in solace <sighs> as fans of Big Blue. Tony, uh, Soil and Green, Tony Pond is my favourite in human history. I agree. You give me Tony Pond and a bus chass and a Metro 6R4 in CompuVision graphics, and I'm a happy man. He even drove one at the Birmingham Super Pre one year. Well, he had him after Group B rally car. Oh, Group B rally cars. Oh, dear, I've got to sit down sit in the down. minute. Careful. <sighs> it's not even. Um, well, it's just over the 11 o'clock. After today. Group B got banned, they did. Oh, and there is Zach Starbuck. Uh, Walking back, be interested to find out what happened to his cart. They, after Group B rallying died, uh, along with several spectators and quite a few drivers, um, they uh, had a, a, a one-off uh, Metro 6R4 event, the Birmingham mm. Super Prix, and Tony, Tony Pond was in that. 25 Group B Metro 6R4s booming it around uh, the streets the of Queensway. Birmingham. Is, on, up the Queensway is a, oh, a joy to behold. There, anyway. Uh, there, there, there we are. Uh, sorry, we'll carry on. Um, uh, uh, yeah, and apologies to um, uh, all New York Giants fans. You, you, you know not what you do or say. I'm, we know we're, we're bad at the I'm a, I'm a Detroit Lions fan. There we go. Anyway, there we go. Uh, moving straight on. That's the first super heat out of the way, Andrew. Now, Finney Lyons still has got a perfect score. Luca Holmes Ballack has nine points. Uh, thanks to the wonders of uh, motorsport-timing.co.uk, we'll be able to get, bring you up to date with who is where. But Nicole Sutherland has got the undefeated Finley Lyons standing with her right about now. Race winner Finley, Finn, another dominant drive from you there, winning the race by almost seven seconds. Can you just tell us in the audience what it's like out there when you're driving by yourself, how you make sure you don't make any mistakes? Well, I mean, like, normally when I get a gap, I'm not really just trying to coast around, trying to save the tyres. But apart from that, it's quite easy. And have you found today, now that the temperature's dropped quite a bit, what have you found with the tyres? Is it different to drive? I mean, yesterday it was quite hot, so you, to, you didn't have to like um, get much heat in the tyres on the wall that, but today you have to get a lot of heat in the tyres. That's fantastic, and we're looking forward to seeing what more you can do this weekend, Finley. We'll see you in a little bit. And I think we're also going to try and catch up with one of our other drivers, which is Harry Taylor. Harry, in this race, went up from 16th to 9th, I believe, so we're just going to grab him. Harry, have you got two seconds just to talk to us? You had a great drive then, went up from 16th to 9th, I believe. Can you tell us a little bit about it? Well, yeah, it, it was a great race. I probably should have driven better. I didn't drive my best, but we go again, I guess. Very best of luck to you for the rest of the weekend. Well done, mate. And we'll just go back up to the comms box, short word from our partners, and then over to Henry and Andrew once again.
Welcome back, everybody, to Wilton Mill. Getting ready for the next race. It's going to be race 18 in the schedules for this year's British O plate for Honda and Rotax. And uh, Edward Haynes will start on pole position for it, alongside on the front row Blair Smith. Oliver Spencer and Jack Collinson start on row two. Finley Hines and Hasnain Khan start on row number three. Max Gilman and Jaime Albros go from row four. Alex Goodson and Daniel Minto start on row five. Benjamin Lorne, the overtaking machine, starts on row six alongside Albie Friend. Devin Taylor and Max Wheatley go from row seven. Theo Bradshaw and Daniel Wisniewski start on row eight. Kieran Stewart and Josh Cormack will start on row nine. And towards the back of the field, Alfie Ward and Connor J. Winfield on row 10. Amrit Atwal and David Hyans on row 11. Adam Turacek completes the 23 cart field. Uh, that was David Hyans and his sister Gemma are out racing at Craft yes. Sport. Yeah, really good to, to see them both there from East Stirling. Well, not East Stirling, but from Stirlingshire up in Scotland. Uh, right, uh, while we're waiting, um, there's a, there, I was most upset. Uh, the garage next hotel that I was in last night, thank you to Donna Edwards and Harrison with his family, who we will talk about later on, uh, did not sell Iron Brew. Oh, no. So I've been forced to drink what? other products today. Forced, unhappily, and now I'm out. So I'm going to send someone up to give me some water. Getting ready then for the next super heat. Superheat B, if you're just joining us here at Wilton Mill for Minimax 950s. Oh. Uh, next race for the O plate for this year. 10 minutes on the board plus one lap. Who's going to join Finley Lines on the front row of the grid for the final? Well, we're going to find out now as oh, one card is already uh, in the grass before they've even made it to turn one. Uh, I think was that the 85 was of Benjamin Lawn. I thought it was a Coles racing machine yes. going wide, and it was. Oh, big oh, move from the back the there, and round goes Finley Hines. Half spin gets righted back by the number 16 uh, there in the middle of it. Didn't know too much about all of that. Bit of a scrappy start for Super Heat B here in Minimax. Yes, but uh, everyone else now, there is the number 91. That's Albi Friend. He's the rating, and he's already picking them up and pulling them down. He had a bad day yesterday, and he's going to now get the cart working and making his way forward. Uh, I mean, 18 points will put you third on the grid uh, for that at the moment. Uh, at the end of this race, we'll get some sort of intermediate classification as they cross the line. Well, it's Edward Haynes, your race leader. Edward, hardly... Oh, OK. Only 10 years old. He's got so many championships under his belt already. Uh, just having a little quick a quick glance at uh, his, his racing CV. There is uh, Haynes in the number 46 cart. Um, yeah, you know, doing a, doing a great job. I can't, I've, lost, I've, lost, I've Whoa, lost the date now. Oh, round there. Once again, Finley Hines having a, a heart, another half spin. A bit of a rough race so far for, uh, for Finley. Already lost eight positions on the first lap. And uh, it's going to probably have lost another three or four in that latest contraton. Edward Haynes, situation is fairly simple. If he wins this race, he books himself a spot on the front row. He was on pole position, virtue of being second in the intermediate classification yesterday after everybody raced twice. He's under a bit of pressure here from Oliver Spencer. Looking a bit further back, that's the number 19 of Jack Collinson under attack from Jaime Al uh, Ambrose down the inside. That's the number 26 of Alex Goodson looking for a move on Theo Bradshaw for eight. But Oliver Spencer, winner uh, last year in Micromax, if I remember correctly, the first ever Micromax O play yes. champion, of course. Yep, uh, what well, I'm saying there, big hello to Tracy David Robertson watching from the UAE, cheering Alfie Ward on. And uh, yeah, they could find Iron Brew for me when I was in Dubai earlier this year, and I can't find any in Daventry. It's absolutely shocking scenes. Uh, Blair Smith, that's Stonehouse Smith in the number eight cart. So we've got two Blair Smiths, one from Stonehouse in Scotland, one from Coatbridge in Scotland. So Stonehouse Smith is just at the fastest lap of the race, a 49.68. Now, we were watching Finley Hines uh, in Super Heat A, setting lap times consistently 49-1, 49-0. Early stages of the race, still seven minutes to go, but the pace is still slower. Haynes, at the moment, uh, has got four points. He would start alongside Finley Lines on the front row of the grid. Uh, Blair Stonehouse-Smith 
who would be starting fourth. Oliver Spence would be starting fifth. Tom Reed, Kim Bernard and Jack Collinson would be the rest, the top eight on the final grid if things finished as they are. And now the UAE contingent get excited because Alfie Ward is out there in his brand racing suit. At the moment, Alfie is 14th driving for Lee Murray's MLC motorsport team. Finley Hines, out that spin, he has recovered to 16th. And all 23 runners are still going. Kieran Stewart still recovering from his injury. He's there in 22nd. Good move there again from Alfie Ward. That's going to be six positions gained now for the driver of the number 63. Still in the first half of this one. Plenty to play for for all of our drivers. Remember, it's the top 34 out of uh, the 40-odd drivers that we've got here this weekend. 46 of them uh, in practice. Had 44 earlier. We had a couple of late entries. It went up to 46. 23 each in the Super Heats. For 12 of those drivers, this is going to be the last race they have this weekend. For some drivers, they've yeah. still got that opportunity of racing through. Oliver Spencer continuing to put a bit of pressure on the race leader. Here they are. Oliver Spencer, new fastest lap of the Super Heats so far but holds position as down the inside good run so far from Albi friend that's what we need to see from Albi friend had a tough day yesterday through time qualifying and the heat but is now up to fourth place and of course you know if anyone, anyone familiar with the work with the works of douglas adams oliver spencer running the number 42 we all know that 42 that's the answer to uh, everything, uh, everything. Yeah. life the universe and everything yeah. yes it's a hitchhiker's guide the galaxy reference everybody uh, get reading it. Uh, now, there's the number 44 car. That's Theo Bradshaw uh, making light of the fact that uh, during the last weekend's race, Theo Bradshaw managed to invert his cart on that last chicane. Uh, obviously, he's fine. But it just goes to show as you watch him attacking the curbs there. So these young drivers, yeah, last weekend, he had a very scary accident. This weekend, he's just using that corner. He's forgotten about it. And it's just bang, 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 straight through again. I... I'm going to say something that might be a bit controversial. I don't like those flippers on the like inside. Flippers. No, I think I think uh, I was at an event at, in the USA early this year, uh, Orlando, which had similar flippers, and a driver was sort of launched onto them, mm -hmm. and James Overbeck did a full 360 in the air. I saw uh, that. Uh, luckily, yeah. he came down on his wheels and carried on, but it could have been a lot worse. And so those flippers, they're bolted into the curb, and you know these cars, they could just. If a car's being hit from behind at a certain angle, they can act as a launch pad. Oh, oh. dear, no, it's been a terrible race for Finley Hines. Uh, and that's it. But that's just my opinion. It is not an opinion shared by Motorsport UK or Wilton Mill or any of the official British Car Championship. I would just like to make that clear that, uh, yes, it's just that I think that those flippers, you could do without them. The, 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 the drivers won't be driving straight over that curve at that level because they'll think, no, that, that's a silly way to do it. The drivers, the drivers will police that corner themselves. Onto the back straight there. This is the battle for the lead. It's now three of them. Blair Smith has picked up the pace and is now just behind Oliver Spencer. Here's a move. This is the number 16 of Hasnain Khan, who, well, that was, that was the driver who was uh, volunteering, whether well, it was uh, truly voluntary or not, but he was there, uh, was uh, putting... Finley Hines back in the right direction at the start of the race. So it's had oh. a bit of a delay. Spencer down the inside Move. and uh, takes the lead. Haynes tried to fight his way back in there, but in the end loses two spots as Blair Smith goes through as well. Yeah, last year, Edward Haynes in uh, Micromax, he was the smiling assassin because he, he, he's got a face that butter wouldn't melt in his mouth. Uh, but yeah, when you get him on the track, he took, he, he took the little devil horns come out. Uh, but yeah, and he's very, you know, with, with the moves, he's, he's extremely decisive. And there was a case of, okay, in Micromax, I could have stayed on the outside in Minimax, and a little bit more power, just got to back out a little bit, and it cost him a little bit. But yeah, the Smiling Assassin, now with Edward H and now with Tooley Motorsport, running in third, I'll be friend there in fourth position. And now, uh, Blair Smith, Stonehouse Smith, he will look to the inside, possibly going to Christmas Corner. No. That has changed things in the uh, the live final intermediate classification. Yes. Remember, the points from yesterday carried over, combined with the points in this double points superheat. So Haynes moving down to third place has also demoted him down that FIC. It's promoted Luca Holmes Ballack, who's in the clubhouse now, watching this race probably uh, from the sidelines. 
Luke Holmes Ballack is now onto the front row for the final. If Edward Haynes can find a way past Blair Smith, he would retake that yes. position. He doesn't necessarily, right now, with how the maths are working, need to win this race. Well, question for you, Andrew. Uh, would you rather start second on the outside row or would you rather start third on the inside row directly behind the pole sitter? Mm. Mm. I'll go third. Answers, on a po answers in the live chat. Looking at things as they are, you know, would you be looking at the way the circuit layout is? Would you rather start second or third? Get your answers coming in on the live chat. One minute and ten remaining then. A slight opportunity there for Haynes to get down the inside of Smith, but wasn't quite able to take advantage of it. It was a very slight opportunity. One minute remaining on the clock. This is where the drivers will start to be working harder than ever. They've gone beyond the length of a standard heat from yesterday. The other bit of news is, I think they're going to have... Ooh, that's going to be very close next time around as to whether they see timeout or not. Oh, so this is, a, this is a nightmare situation if you're, if, you're a, if you're a leader for uh, Oliver Spencer. Know, indeed, it's... Oh, Hayes oh, down the inside Haynes. on Smith and spins. Losers more than third place. Now there goes Friend, there goes Minto, there goes Collinson. And now Edward Haynes is definitely not going to be on the front row for the final. But you know what? That's that's learning. That That's a learning move from there. Oh, and Whoa. somebody else behind Albie Friend running very wide. Oh, that's Blair that's Smith has gone wide. So, Stone has been... He's Damage, got a, radiator. Ah, yes. Radiator's gone. Yes, indeed. Good spot there, Andrew. And, and that's co coating his right rear tyre with water. And there he goes off. The track again, and uh, oh, Chris! Oh, that's the one photo that Chris Walker missed. He was looking the other way, um, but uh, that is a shame. So again, that's going to be a bit of a damage there, uh, a bit of a repair job, and it means that uh, wow, Oliver Spencer, he's he's got uh, he's maximising his score. So that pretty much settles the argument for who's going to start on the outside row of the front row. Uh, it's going to be Luke Holmes Ballack, unless. Unless Ed, Edward, no, Edward Haynes has got to pick up three places and he's running fourth, nearly six seconds off the lead. Here's the man, Oliver Spencer, looking back in the past, that's Josh Cormack in the number 21. There's Alfie Ward. Uh, big uh, shout out to everybody watching uh, back at the uh, Dubai Cartrome and the Al Ain Raceway in Dubai and Abu Dhabi. I'll see you later this year as we start the final lap, Andrew Mather. Well, we do. Oliver Spencer had to keep pushing on. It's quite a strange way for Oliver Spencer's race to finish. He'll be yes. with, with 45, 46 seconds to go. It's like, crumbs, I'm going to keep pushing on here. I can't relax to, to uh, shorten this race by a lap. He's now going to look over his shoulder and think, well, well where's everybody gone? Haynes has left the scene in terms of the battle for victory, as, uh, as has Blair Smith. I think Blair Smith will still be fine in terms of making that top 34 with the results that he had yesterday, but it's not going to be the kind of starting position for the final later on today that he would have wanted. This young man here, though, yeah. Oliver Spencer, winner of the O-Plate last year in Micromax, now stepping up to Minimax, is going to have a very useful position on the grid indeed. Oliver Spencer wins Super Heat B and books himself onto row two for the final later yep. today. And Edward Haynes on the last lap passes Jack Collinson and Edward Haynes will start third, pushing Spencer back to fourth. Subject, of course, to any post-race issues. And looking down the order, well, a good finish for Albie Friend in second place there, but still work to do. Friend isn't going to be on the front four rows of the grid. But that's okay. Last year at the O-Plate, Albert started on the eighth throw of the grid and still managed to come through to compete for the win. There's a look at your top ten. Hasnain Khan, Max Wheatley. Uh, good drives for those. The privateer driver, Max Wheatley, finishing in the top ten. Amrit Atwal uh, finished on the order. But there is Oliver Spencer. And so, now that, that's, that's like looking back 12 months. Dan Holland racing and Strawberry Racing leading the way in Minimax. But it's not been the case all year. There are plenty of other contenders in the mix. They are indeed. And, uh, well, we'll see Minimax back out. They've got one more remaining race for this weekend. And it will be the first of our finals going off for uh, at 2 o'clock. 2 o'clock on the nose.
uh, if you're particularly interested in that. But don't go away, don't uh, leave us, because we've got plenty more racing to go here uh, this morning. The remainder of the morning, we've got the two super heats for Junior Rotax coming up next. Oh no, not good news if you are Adam Turacek. That is the telephone of doom coming yep. out. Take a picture of a dropped front fairing. Uh, as the rest of the drivers go through, there'll be sort of a penalty, uh, in-race in penalty for Kieran Stewart, the number 14 car who's just gone through. Uh, Kieran moved uh, up to 14th there in that race. Did see uh, Max Gilman in car number 69. Uh, a poor race for Max. You can just see him there. Uh, is that him getting out? Yeah, that's him getting out of his car. He's got the... Oh, he's, uh, I don't know what went wrong there. The Tuli Motorsport cart. Uh, uh, oh dear, the Kraft Motorsport number 25, David Hyorns. Uh, yeah, there, Max Gilman. He's already had a bad race, and his bad race stays a bad race, doesn't get worse. But who had a good race? Oliver Spencer. And Oliver Spencer is going to be chatting to Nicole Sutherland. It, uh, oh, I'll be friend is going to be chatting with Nicole Sutherland uh, 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 very shortly down in the pits. Max Gilman's a shrug at the shoulders. But uh, wow, well, I'll be friend. Here he goes. So, Albert, second place in that one all the way from 12th. How did the race go for you? Uh, well, I just got a good start. So then I just managed to get into fifth, I think, by the first lap. And then uh, I got another overtake down about halfway through the race. And a bit lucky, um, the two in front of me crashed. So then I got another two positions. But it was already the last lap, so I didn't have enough time to catch the leader. But... 12th to 2nd is decent. Decent, very decent. We saw you, unfortunately, had a little bit of bad luck in your first heat yesterday, but are you feeling that that drive then will make up some places for the rest of the weekend? Um, yeah, I'm just hoping I have um, like a mid-pack starting position for the final so I can be in the fight for the win. That's great. Thanks for your time, Albert. We'll see you a bit later on. We'll just go have a look, see who else we can find through like a sea of carts in the park. Ferme, see who we can try and catch up with. Daniel, have you got two seconds? Yeah. Daniel, how was your race in that one? It was all right, just at the end, something really up, just something happened. And what are you hoping for for the rest of the weekend? Obviously, O plate it would be great, but what are you thinking? Yeah, top ten would be good. That's great, thank you, Daniel. So, uh, next race, Junior Rotax, Super Heat 1, but before we'll throw up to an ad break and then back over to Henry and Andrew. Thank you very much, Nicole, uh, down there in Park Ferme. We're getting ready. We're going to turn up the heat now. Junior Rotax Super Heat A is up next. And uh, we'll be having a look at that. Uh, well, you said turn up the heat. Uh, that, everyone in the paddock goes, please, please. Could, could Mother Nature turn up the heat? Um, I've got to say, it's our commentary position here. It's, uh, it's, it's nice and warm, isn't it? It is. Yeah, no, it's yeah, really it's pleasant. It's really toasty uh, yeah, in here. Big yes, thanks yes. to Wilton Mill for being our host again. Big thanks to Jen Wade from Rotax mm. for providing the commentators with uh, Daisy the Cow Belgian chocolate Easter eggs. Thank you very much, Jen. Uh, Jen and Daryl Smith here from Rotax uh, as, as ambassadors and also to help and just to assist and to advise and to guide. And once again, now, we are in year... Are we in year four or five of the Vera Tools? I think we're in year four yeah. of the Vera Tools sponsoring it. That, uh, you know, they, 
such a valuable input. I believe we still have the Vera Tools driver today. Vera Tools have invested or they've given away tens of thousands of pounds of tools as part of the Vera Tools driver of the day. Now, everyone knows I'm a tool. Are you a tool rebel? Oh, I can be a tool rebel. Well, I we're going to we'll find out who out. the biggest rebel is because the next race is up now. Let's have a look at the grid then for Super Heat A on pole position. Thomas Min Spearing, perfect day yesterday. What is this Sunday going to be like? Alongside on the front row for this one is Lewis Goff, William Antrobus and Joshua Turnbull on row two, Charlie Neve and Adam Wooden on row three. Uh, there we got Albie Lapper. Hello to Barbara watching back home. Uh, uh, Charlie Cox, Noah Barham, Joel Dixon Cohen, Leon Hasty and Cax for Tom Alasty. On row seven, Aidan Mitchell and Jack West. Harrison Whitcomb will not be starting. Oh, well, I'll like explain why eight. in a minute. Uh, well, so it will just be Kaivich on, uh, on that one. Ryan Gandor and Kenzo Craigie start on row nine. Carries a crowd of Ryan Gill, Vlad Tomenchuk, Jacob Woods, Naomi Garcia and Zach Turner. So uh, row 12, Owen Wallace and Ariman Bansell on row 13. Harry Hurst, Grover and Eric Grinsmith on row 14. Isabella Stansmore, Wilson and Oliver Meek complete the top 30. The whole grid is completed by Omar Cindy and Matteo Palazzo on row 16. Now, Henry, very, story time. Very, very quickly, we run Park Ferme tyres here, which means the carts have to, you have to take the tyres off the cart before you leave Park Ferme. Yesterday, at the end of the first heat race, Harrison Whitcomb came in, his mechanic Nigel Hathaway um, had to deal with the fact that he needed a broken exhaust. He only had 50 minutes before he had to get up with the next one. So he was taught to the scrutiny of Paul Classen, uh, took the exhaust off, and then was like thinking, okay, I've got to go to this awning and that awning to get a well, let's do the exhaust. Walked on a park for me with the tyres on, turned round after about five paces, went, oh, sugar, uh, got to go back in. By that point, too late, sadly out of the race. Uh, commiserations. Hope Harrison is watching. I know Nigel was feeling absolutely terrible about it. Um, uh, oh, someone's lost things. a chain guard. Someone's lost a chain guard. Uh, uh, the big question, who's it? Who's it? Well, that could be a, a very, one. very... Ex see, this is how, you know, the mechanics are under an awful lot of pressure here. Uh, and that chain guard coming off, that could be the difference. We'll find out who it is very shortly. That could be the difference between a driver making the final and making and not making the final. So I uh, hope Harrison is watching uh, back home. He will be back, and uh, you know there have been plenty of plenty of drivers have uh, uh, have have been excluded from a meeting because the mechanic has just innocently walked out. You know, didn't do anything. He didn't even get to his order. He got ten paces outside. Uh, park Fermi turned round and went, oh no, and uh, walked back in. By that point, unfortunately, um, you know, the, the rules the rules, and uh, that's why Harrison Whitcomb is not racing today to answer the questions on the live chat. So, early stages of this one, William Antrobus has taken the lead of this race. Thomas Mint Spearing fighting hard at the moment for second place. He's now under attack, is out. Oh. That is Adam Wooden, who started on the third row of the grid and will go no further than lap two. That could be critical for Adam Wooden. Uh, looking down the order, uh, everyone else still racing. Obviously, the officials haven't found the cart with no chain guard. Uh, now, we can speculate, but of course, we're not the officials, and I wouldn't want to say, oh, it's cart X, Y, and Z without a chain guard before the officials have seen it. Um, because, uh, I did cost Kai Hunter uh, uh, a Cartmaster title one year by saying that he passed under a, a wave yellow flag when nobody else apart from the team cameras and me had picked up on it. Good move so, by Kenzo Craigie yes. there down the inside at a bad day. Yes, I think we found who our missing chain guard Ooh. driver is because the number 84 of Jacob Woods has just received the technical flag out of the race as well and out of the O plate for 2024. That was Omar Cindy of yes. the drivers left on the run up to Christmas. So not a good start for Omar, well, not a good weekend for the Saudi Arabian driver. So Jacob Woods, the number 84, has in fact uh, Omar Cindy's also had the technical flag. Ah, so this is it could this be, is a classic one of those. It could be either of them all. That's that Aiden Mitchell running wide. It is the it precision was. racing driver Aiden Mitchell going off. Um, Omar Cindy, the first Saudi driver to put him, the, the, his nation, on an international karting podium at the MENA Nations Karting Cup. 
uh, back in 2022. Interesting fact about Omar. There's Albi Lapa uh, in the number 29 car, first year in juniors. And, uh, you know, like a lot of drivers, find the transition from the smaller chassis to the larger chassis, you know, a little bit difficult, but getting to grips with it quite quickly. Now, I don't know if we can get a shot of the number 84 from uh, looking from behind the car. That's oh, going to be okay. the best way to identify if uh, that is our cover. Oh, there's sparks coming well, off the, the, uh, the curb on the edge. The 84 the car, looking there, um, Jacob Woods there, driving for the MLC Motorsport team. Uh, he's going to come. That's a, that's a KR Sport car. Yes, I know they look similar. No, that was yesterday's talk. Uh, ah, yes. There is Jacob Woods. And yes. yes. They, or, or rather, no. There wasn't his chain guard. Uh, now, there's a move going up the hill towards Christmas Corner. We can have a little look down there uh, at the cart there. You can see the chain exposed. Why do they have that? You can see the carts there. They're all very liveried up in terms of their teams. Uh, you cannot have chains flying off at 70 miles an hour. Um, that would be unwise. So you've got that plastic cover to, if the chain does come off, and they do come off from time to time, uh, that it's not sent catapulting at the back end into the boat race of the drivers following. Six minutes to go then in this one. Antrobus still leading from Turnbull. Leon Hasty has got through into third place ahead of Thomas Minspear. And Kenzo Craig is flying, though. Yes. Needs a big day. This is a big race for him. He wants to yes. propel himself up through the order, get a good grid slot for that final. He's been having a, a decent season. Not always uh, the best of luck so far in, uh, in 2024. I'm seeing his racing in Europe. But look at him now, flying through the order. This is going to be pleasing Argenti Motorsports. Uh, quite a lot right now. That's him going past Joel Dixon Cohen up to eighth place now. Yes. So how many has uh, Kenzo Craigie has now gained 10 places in five laps under the watchful eye of uh, Ron Meadows, the rest of the Argenti team here in the paddock. There he is, the number 44. Of course, using uh, his hero, Lewis Hamilton's karting number. Well, now his race number. Uh, there's William Antrobus back at the sharp end. Turnbull Antrobus and Leon Hasty up the inside into P2. We've got a five-car breakaway for the race lead. And look at that. Variety, the spice of life. You have got uh, Dan Holland Racing, Thule Motorsports, Sam Pollitt Racing, and Argenti. One, two, three, four. Coles racing in 60 pack. Sam Pollitt and Sam is gonna. Uh, Sam and uh, Anderson Chilcott will uh, admonish me for not saying that uh, the only team with two carts in the top five is Sam Pollitt racing. There we go. Kenzo Craigie is trying to uh, make that fact uh, no longer relevant by closing in. You've got the Coles racing cart of Charlie Cox next. Then you've got the number 60 uh, Strawberry racing entry of Charlie Neve. Uh, I could see Gavin, Go uh, Gavin Goff back in the, uh, the pack there. He worked a lot of it. He's a mind coach. He works a lot with the driver's mental side. And he's worked with Charlie, and it's uh, paying dividends. And then it's Kenzo Craigie in eighth. Now, let's have a look. We've got four minutes to go, Andrew. Kenzo, last time, well, a 47.09 last time for Kenzo, but he was trying to pass somebody on that lap. That was a lap he went past Joel Dixon Cohen. He crossed a uh, 46.85. For Kenzo Craigie, that is, well, the leader did a 47.6. It's so eight tenths of a second quicker is Kenzo Craigie. There he is. He's closing in on Charlie oh. Neve. Oh, we've got an action at the front. Yeah, Hasty having a go for the lead. Didn't quite work out. Antrobus is being squeezed out. Tell you what this result is doing right now. It's absolutely blowing the final intermediate classification location wide open. Three wide off uh -oh. of Ashby. They just about get themselves sorted by the time they get to Wilkins. Jacob Ashcroft's going to be watching this one, thinking that the door's going to be wide open for him getting the podium, uh, getting pole for the final. Now with spearing down in fourth place, that would be an eight-point oh. score at the front. Hasty. Leon Hasty, well, that has been coming for the last couple of laps, has found a way through past Joshua Turnbull. And there's still nearly three minutes of this one to go, Henry. Now, there was an advert, uh, it was for a breakfast cereal. Uh, you can modify it. Uh, it's hasty, hasty, very, very hasty. Oh. Leon Hasty, who's just been passed for the race lead by Josh Turbel again. And that has brought Charlie Neve and Kenzo Craigie to pie. Now, Craigie, he makes one move up the inside. Gone. He's passed the number 60 car to Charlie Neve. He's now, he can't hang about. He's got to go again. He's got to find, because otherwise he'll lose that momentum and he'll just get 
caught running at the same pace. He was running eight tenths of a second quicker than the rest of the lead pack. Now he's going to get caught into the pace unless he can make moves. Side by side, there's Goff. Uh, no, is that, yeah, that's the 74 of Lewis Goff now up into P2. Craigie, he's got to go. He's got William Antrobus next up. He's already passed Harrison Crowther. Oh, sorry, Harrison Crowther is following Kenzo Craigie uh, through. Now here goes Craigie. He's got to go. He's got to go. Yes, he can't indeed. go. Antrobus is defending. Uh, Thomas Midsbury might be to be about to get a bit of a surprise. He's going to over, look over his shoulder and see his teammate right there and go, where on earth have you come from? Antrobus down the inside. There goes Spearing out uh, a little bit wide. Cox has got through for another position. Back at the front of the order. That is a change for second place. Leon Hasty has got past uh, Lewis Goff there. Joshua Turnbull has disappeared off the front of this order. This has been quite the super heat A. Eh? This is classic junior Rotax at the moment. And there's still a good number of laps to go. Warning flag we just saw yes. there. The number nine of Leon Hasty is uh, a... a attracted the attention of the officials and race control but it's just a warning right now kenzo craig is still there in eighth he's actually lost the rear axle the rear bumper there oh, yeah. of harrison crowther he's he's down by what about half a second now just judging that from the picture crowther having another look down the inside of thomas been spearing he recovered well uh, through the second half of that last lap holding himself there in sixth place Intermediate classification, the final intermediate classification as it stands. There's a five-second penalty for Naomi Garcia coming in. Ah, she's Remember trying. at the moment, she's this trying. is just drivers who are in this race. This does not include drivers who are yet to go in Super Heat B. Goff on eight, Turnbull on eight, Spearing on 12, Andromus 10, Hasty on 23. So there's plenty still to be decided. Another bit of news from Race Control. Investigation board going out to the number 13. That's Vlad Tomanchuk. Yes, indeed. And uh, up the hill towards Christmas Corner. And now down towards Ashby. So Antrobus is behind his teammate with three seconds to go. So they will get the last lap board next time around. Is that enough time for the two Sam Pollock Racing teammates to pass Leon Hasty and get after Josh Turbo? I think not. Although, if Hasty can get up the inside, now he's got to get a good run up towards Christmas Corner. If Hasty can make a move or try to make a move or force Turnbull to defend, going up towards Christmas Corner now, that's going to give Goff and Antrobus a chance. Turnbull is defending. Watch the two Sam Pollock carts now try to get involved. And it's Coles Racing versus Argenti oh. further back. Yeah, Kenzo Craig, you're trying to go around the outside there. Great last uh, lap, penultimate lap from Hasty. Not far off the, the best pace we saw one week ago. But can they find a way past Joshua Turnbull? Hasty having to defend and attack at the same time here because this is crucial for where he's going to be on the grid for the final. Into the boot for the final time. Is Joshua Turnbull going to hold on here for a really strong victory in the first superheat through the final chicane, through pit bend? There is the chequered flag and a win for Joshua Turnbull by 0.36 of a second. Leon Hasty P2. What has happened to Kenzo Craigie? Oh, He's fallen down no. all the way to 16th place. It's Turnbull from Hasty Goff. You one, two, three. Brilliant race for Sam Pollitt Racing. Oh. Two drivers in the top four. William Antrobus, the second of them, Harrison Crowther, fifth, Thomas Minspearing in sixth, Charlie Cox, Joel Dixon, Cohen, Jack West and Charlie Neve complete the top ten. But it just doesn't oh, seem to I... fall right for Kenzo Craigie. The pace, the race pace was clearly there, Henry. Yeah. But something happened there on the last lap, and it's P16. Uh, we couldn't see. That could be uh, critical now. Uh, the wonderful thing about this family of karting, and there's, so there's Harrison Crow, there's mum and dad. Uh, oh, yeah, tell him to slow down there. That's right. Uh, uh, there's uh, Adrian Coles at the top there. Uh, the wonderful thing about karting, we are a global family. I just spotted uh, Daryl Henderson and Uncle Phil Henderson, uh, who from Landau, but then moved to Australia. They're now back at Whittle Mill. I'm going to go and say hello to them. So Absolutely. carry on. So the, uh, the drivers are coming on in for uh, their post-race scrutineering. Checks of all the front fairings, of course. And uh, if that telephone of Zoom comes out, we know exactly what it's going to mean. It's going to mean a five-second penalty for Joshua Turnbull. That was a, a very accomplished drive under a level of pressure. 
And uh, whoa, you can tell from his body language, I think he's a bit relieved there. That was a mighty penultimate lap from Leon Hasty. He really closed that one in. But Turnbull, using all of his experience, holds on, takes victory. Won't be pole position for the final, because at the moment on our screens, uh, I think a tiebreaker between himself and Lewis Goff goes in the direction of Goff. And, of course, we've still got Super Heat B uh, to run. But what an opportunity for those drivers in Super Heat B now, especially Jacob Ashcroft and Harry Bartle. They can have strong runs starting from the front row through to, uh, to the finish. They could be on the front row for, uh, for that final. I think there was a, a number 97 uh, getting a picture taken of the front fairing. That is quite clearly someone's exhaust. Uh, that's been handed back over the fence and will be reunited with its owner in due course. Oh dear, there's, yeah, well, quite clearly the number 16 is going to be getting five seconds added to their race time. That is Matteo Palazzo, uh, finished in P26. Uh, same as well there for, was that Kasper Tomaleski going through? Yes, it was the KMS number 20. Five seconds added for that front fairing to be dropped. Uh, right now, though, we're going to head back down to Park Ferme for another interview. Nicole Sutherland is with Joshua Turnbull. Josh Turnbull there, super heat winner. How was that, Josh? I mean, we didn't show very good pace yesterday, but we showed it then, and I think we'll be good for the final. And we saw you gain and lose the, the lead a couple of times and a good battle with Leon Hussey, number nine. Can you talk through us that a little bit? I mean, he got past me, but I managed to get back and defend the rest of the race. I think Leon did very well to stay in his position because of the hack behind. But yeah, just really showed our pace in that one. Yeah, and if the finals are anything like what we've just seen, they're uh, going to be busy. What are your personal expectations for them? I mean, it's going to be hard, but like we showed there, we can fight through and, you know, hopefully finish on top. Well, very best of luck to you, Josh. Uh, we'll just go and try and catch up with Leon Hasty, number nine, who's also involved in that battle for first. Leon. Great fight there between uh, you and Josh. We also w saw William Antrobus involved in that one. Can you talk us through what went on? Uh, well, I had to start further back than I'd imagined uh, from a bad heat yesterday. So I uh, started 11th and just had a really good start and uh, got into the battle really early and then just came out in second. Yeah, and uh, O'Play, first big race of the year, the one everybody wants. You reckon you can do it? Uh, I mean, it's going to be difficult from the results, but yeah, I hope so. Fantastic. Best of luck to you, Leon. We'll also try and catch up with William Antrobus, who was in that fight for the front, took the race lead quite early on. William, can we grab you for two seconds? Yeah, sure. So we saw you race leader at the start and then a good battle going on. Can you talk us your opinion of how that went? Yeah, I think it was really good in my opinion, but uh, just couldn't really pull away to everybody. But we did have the pace and in the end I would, would, was with Lewis and then I pushed him along to the front pack and we got there in the end, but just didn't get the moving on the last lap. And your mindset going into the final, are you feeling confident? Yeah, I feel confident. If I've got a good setup behind me, I think I could have a chance of it. But it's all about the hack and the end of the race, in my opinion. Fantastic. And we've also seen the temperature drop quite a bit from uh, from yesterday. Did you find that affected the race at all? or? No, I think the track's the same, in my opinion. But it's just it's about how you drive in these conditions. Fantastic. Best of luck to you, William. We'll go back up to... Henry and Andrew in the comms box. Thank you very much, Nicole. Great work as ever down uh, in the pits. I'm doing a fantastic job on the first weekend here. Right, let's uh, make fun of some people standing at the gantry. Yes. You've got the whole Dan Holland racing team there. Uh, there's Lizzie uh, Higgins in the long, long, long black coat. Brandon Nagelvort to her left looking at his phone, probably looking at something he shouldn't be looking at. Um, now let's have a look. Oh, there's Mr. Westover. Good to see you. Oh, to Mr. and Mrs. Westover living in Espanol. Mr. Malozzi is there. Uh, there's Mr. Carter at the back there behind the gentleman with the thing coat there. Sean Carter. That's a great, great, great haircut there. 
Nice growing mullet there, Dave Wooder. There's Chris Walker, carpix.net on camera, thumbs up. Now, I have spotted Stu Stratton in the paddock as yes. well. Don't tell Chris Walker. Well, no, I did see them together earlier. They weren't punching each other. That's OK. <laughs> oh, here we go. Now, let's have a look. Uh, who else have we got along the top there? And it's great. First of all, it's great to see how many people are here. And yes, ladies and gentlemen, today is the start of British summertime officially. And that is why everyone's got woolly hats on. And there, so it's yeah, British summertime. Give us a wave from the gantry. You've got the Hunter Motorsport team there on the right. There's uh, Mr. Rusakovs. Uh, yeah, there's one brave Tony Kart driver Very there. Brave. Yeah, oh, I will only wear my race suit and I will represent Tony Kart no matter what the temperature is. Uh, but uh, yeah, <laughs> yes, welcome to British summertime, ladies and gentlemen. Um, yeah, so it's speak to Naomi Garcia and her dad from Trinidad mm. and Tobago, and they were, oh, they've never been as cold in their lives as they are here. But here we go. Uh, the ne what's the next race? The next race is Junior Rotax Super Heat B. Let's go. Second of the super heats for Ginny Rotax. Let's have a look through the grid. Jacob Ashcroft has pole position alongside on the front row, Harry Bartle. Jacob Dukes and Harry Freeman go from row two. Joshua Smith and Lucas Blanford go from row three. Brian and Truman and Uncle Tyrone go on row number four alongside Cameron Nelson, Aris Mieskis, Hugh Bolton, Kai Clark and Benjamin Baker. Row seven, Luca Manny and Owen Neve. Fiddly Buck and Victor Hansen go from row eight. Michael Walker and William Archer start on row number nine. Zach McDonald and Zach Green uh, are on row ten. Followed by Michael Dalton, Shane Chandaria, Emily Cotty and Jack Thompson. Row 11, Rory Armstrong and Jack Baker, John Richardson and Elliot Surtees from row 14. Jake Gruffity and Callum Foster start in row 15 and then the last row Eli Baden is a non-starter Sebastian Lush will complete the 31 uh, cart field had a little spin out of the pits but it's got going again it's fine nobody saw it Sebastian no one saw it or mentioned it no which is good but his tire is nice and warm now there we go uh, into they use the old circuit here uh, on the rolling lap they come in the tram lines Lights are out, we're off and racing, here we go, through the first corner, it's a good start from our pole sitter, Jacob Ashcroft, up the hill we go, and uh, everyone defending towards Christmas corner, Ashcroft and his teammates side by side, that is new leader, the 35, Jacob Jukes. Jacob Jukes with a great start there from, uh, from grid number three, rest them filing through, all looking uh, relatively calm by junior standards so far oh, in, uh, in this one. You say that, I can see a yellow flag at post number five. Ah. But everyone, ev well, no, everyone extricated themselves and carrying on. Carry on. So coming around to complete lap number one then. Jacob Ashcroft, the mission statement is simple. Win this race, get pole position for the final. Has been unbeaten so far this weekend. Single lap pace has been brilliant for Jacob Ashcroft. Uh, set a 46.33 yesterday. Uh, on yes. his way to those two victories, but this is a different kettle of fish now. End of lap one, and uh, well, it's Jacob Jukes who's come through to the front of the order. Then, so Jacob Ashcroft immediately down to third place. Now that is still good enough right now if the scores are. But well, we'll hold that thought because through comes Harry Bartle. Harry Bartle takes the lead early on lap number two away from Jacob Jukes. That's bringing everyone back to, into play. Is that Brandon Truman on the move yeah. in, uh, going up to third place? Really good start to this one. Sorry, no, it's Harry Freeman. Harry Freeman coming through into third place. Apologies there, getting confused uh, with my number eight on the second digit. End of lap two then. Bartle leads, Duke second. Truman has made it now up to third place through the third sector ahead of Harry Freeman. Smith fifth. Jacob Ashcroft is now all the way down to sixth place. Well, this just shows how quickly this format can change things, Henry. Yes. We're talking about Jacob Ashcroft going and having a nice race, probably winning it, and, and now he's looking at sixth on the grid for the final. It, you know, it just goes to show how quickly things could change. Harry Bartle, well, that's sorry, that was the number 72 making a move. That was Aras Bajewskis. Now, Bajewskis, 
Sorry, I do apologise. I've only been commentating on him for four years. I can't quite say his name right yet. I do apologise. Uh, but yeah, now, Jacob Dukes. Uh, Brandon Truman, you know, in third position. Uh, luck luckily, uh, for Uncle Tyrone, or rather not luckily, uh, you know, he's got carts behind him because, you know, it was at a funny angle. They're behind you, Tyrone. He's not behind him anymore. He's alongside him. That is Harry Freeman making the move up into P3. It's because he was at a funny angle. He was indeed. Yeah. And uh, down on the inside there, that's a good defence from Joshua Smith to hold Jacob Ashcroft back. Jacob Ashcroft has got a move now. This would be a 12-point score. Remember, yesterday it would have been a six-point for a normal heat. This being a super heat, all the points are doubled. And it's the karting form of where lower score is the better score. Someone oh, running wide having, uh, yes. down the exit of Ozias. Uh, Getting there. agricultural. Indeed. Uh, and we'll have to see who that was. I believe Might have been Michael it Walker. was. Oh, it was either Michael Walker or no, it was actually uh, Luca Magni of the Dan Holland Racing Team. Oh, now Ashcroft, the fight back is on uh, for Jacob Ashcroft. He goes past Joshua Smith. Put Ashcroft back into fifth position. Now, Dukes continues to run second. Bartle pulling away. Now, does that mean if Harry Bartle wins, we'll get the first mention of Rodney the dog in his interview? Because uh, his dog Rodney on the back of uh, his crash helmet always mentions big up to Rodney the dog because Rodney does watch the live stream. I'm not joking. Well, Jacob Ashcroft has made some great progress on that lap. He weaved his way through there. He's up to third place now. Now, what is that going to do with the FIC? It's going to put... And all of a sudden, Jacob Ashcroft's back on the front row. Exactly. He's, uh, there we he's are. back up to uh, second place in the final intermediate classification now. If he can find a way past Jacob Dukes, he could be back on for pole position. So it's a very move. roller coaster race yeah. for the youngster. Good move there from Lucas Blandford uh, in the number 59 cart to pick up a place. Five minutes and 30 seconds to go. Harry Bartle in control of this race and for the moment in control of the point standings for this phase of the 2024 Junior Rotax O-Plate. He would have pole position for the final if things were to stay this way. Jacob Jukes is there in second place. Just under two seconds back and he's got a good gap to Jacob Ashcroft behind. But here comes Ashcroft. Here comes that lightning pace that we've seen Ashcroft be able to pull out. We've got to keep reminding ourselves this is the step up weekend uh, meeting as down the inside there that's the number 59 of Lucas Blantford going for a move on Hugh Moulton in the 51. And uh, more news from race control five second penalty for Kai Clark in the number 76. Oh. Uh, but back to Ashcroft, this is what's been the most yep. impressive thing for me this weekend, Henry. Last weekend ran in the in the pre event in the in the club meeting here at Wilton Mill. This is still relatively early days for Jacob Ashcroft in this step up to junior. The chassis change as well as the uh, yep. the engine and the, the powertrain change. But he just seems to be, you know... Well, he's a talented driver. Yeah. You can, he adapts very quickly. Now, one thing that, uh, yeah, you are looking at this year, the carts, well, the back end of the carts looks slightly different this year, particularly the rear bumpers. So uh, there is a move and a great shot there. So... Uh, each team or each cart now has colour-coded rear bumpers. A lot of that is stickers. It's not a part. Next year, it'll be a homologated part. This year, you're allowed to put uh, colours on the rear bumper. Number one, it helps us identify them. Number two, it does give the drivers a more of a visual clue of, you know, where the exit of the rear bumpers is. But when you have wet tyres on, mm -hmm. you know, lots of drivers fall foul of the rear width tracking and you yes. get excluded. And it does sort of give you a bit of an assist on that for the mechanics. Uh, props to the teams that have made up tiny little bits of plastic with their team logos. Now you can see there the number 15 car, Joshua Smith. That's the Jacks uh, rate motorsport with the Project One Racing Group. Now, those are just color coded. There's orange tape and green tape. All the strawberry team have got a little S on them. Smart thinking there. Mm -hmm. That's S for Spencer. And if it's a junior member of the, draw, the strawberry team run by Mark Baines, that's an S for Sheffield Wednesday. Um, but then the other teams have... Oh, yeah, I know, I know exactly. Um, but the other team, now look at that, they've actually got little graphics kits already for this rear, the, tip, the tips of the rear bumpers. Very smart stuff indeed. 
Less than three minutes to go then, still Bartle in full control now with Jacob Jukes under a lot of pressure now from Jacob Ashcroft. This on your screens is the battle involving Harry Freeman and Joshua Smith. Now with the battle for Jukes and Ashcroft, so it's Evolution Racing versus DHR, both, uh, both running LN chassis, of course. Now I think there, there, there needs to be a competition amongst the paddock. Uh, the prize should be an Alpha Live, uh, Alpha Live beanie hat or something like that. The first driver to get a sponsor and get a sponsor logo on those rear bumper flicks, which you can then see on the Alpha Live cameras as we have a change. It's a significant change because Jacob Ashcroft has put Jukes in a box and passed him for second place. And taken the lead in the final intermediate classification. That is four points apiece now for... Bartle and Ashcroft. Ashcroft, based on results earlier in the weekend, would take uh, take the tiebreaker in that one as things stand as we uh, as we understand it. So I think it's not really enough time now for Ashcroft to close into Bartle. That is a, a 3.28 chasm is down the inside. Lovely stuff from Joshua Smith as oh, out of the race. That is, is that Elliot Surtees possibly? Because uh, Elliot Surtees hasn't come through sector number two. Three. Yeah, Elliot Surtees, he had the, the team had repaired that Carlos Sainz chassis, uh, which was damaged in a crash yesterday, and it appears to have uh, gone wrong again. Uh, John Richardson, uh, the driver from Azerbaijan uh, for the MLC Motorsport team, down in 27th position. Shane Chandaria, the Kenyan driver, he's up to 20th. And there's a move. That is the number 41. That's Cameron Nelson picking up what is fifth position from Joshua Smith and oh. there's Blanford again so Lucas Blanford on a charge and Blanford now moves into a seventh spot and Zach Green on the move as well this is not a good moment for Harry Freeman had a quick start to this race but is starting to fade so Green through into eighth place brilliant year last year for the Green family as a whole looking for more success in 2024, Zach doing a good job here. 24 seconds to go on the clock. 24 seconds to go. And where is our leader? Leader is probably 21 seconds. Now it's 21 again. seconds to go. You want to let me know where he got to go? 21 seconds to go, go, go. He's gone. That's Zach Green up past Lucas Blanford for seventh place. How many songs is that in the race morning so far? That's we did everything from so solid crew to water ship down. Oh, can't love being back in the British Championship. There's the 78 cart of Harry Freeman. Now defending from Hugh Moulton. Uh, further back, Owen Neve moves up to 23rd position. Rory Armstrong. Now, Finley Buck. Uh, Mr. Grid for Finley Buck. Uh, he's got a new nickname. Bumfluff Buck. Because he's got the... And I, I, it's, he's oh, got no. a, oh, the, the, yeah, the teenage Bumfluff moustache. Oh. Apparently his mum is begging him to shave it off. And Finley's gone, no, no, no. Uh, Bumfluff Buck. No, I'm not sure he's going to make the final, sadly. And that, that joke was with approval from his dad before anyone gets upset. <laughs> Hugh Moulton uh, takes advantage there, gets past Harry Freeman for 10th place. He was having a go at uh, Lucas Blanford's 9th place. This is a bit further up the order. Going into Ozias now, the fight for 4th place. Truman, Smith and Nelson. Oh, Very fast finishing. Zach Green just behind them as well. We are on the final lap, by the way. Harry Bartle is going to come through for a comfortable victory. And book a spot on the front row of the grid for the final, yes. which he will share with Jacob Ashcroft. Difficult start for Ashcroft, but a great fight back. Gets second place, loses his winning streak, but I think he can be pretty pleased with that result, yeah, Henry. And he and Ashcroft unofficially will take pole position because... He was better in qualifying. Time qualifying, yeah. Uh, Jan Echterman asking, will every round of the British Karting Championship be live streamed? Yes, Jan. And more than that, not just every round of the British Karting Championship, but every day of the British Karting Championship. That'll be Saturday as well as Sunday, which is great news. There is Harry Bartle, William Archer, 56 15th. Luca Magni after his off-track excursion, finishing 20th. Sadly, some of those drivers, the back of the field there, that's the last we'll see of them. Their chances of O plate glory are over. Now, at the end of Junior Rotax, who is going to be the most nervous driver in the paddock in the Junior Rotax paddock right now? Answer, Kenzo Craigie. Yeah. Has he made the top 34 or not? Well, we'll, uh, we'll remain to see. 
sure the uh, the results will be being tallied away. Ian Rogers uh, and Ian co. Rogers yes, and uh, everyone in. Uh, oh, here time we go. Hang on a second. We got we've got hot. We've got. So no. far, at least 10 junior Rotax drives have gone through and the Telephone of Doom has not come into play yet. Hang on a second. This could oh, be oh, 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 no, 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 no. You, no. You, 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 I've cursed it again. Cursed it again. Uh, there's Jacob Ashcroft. Uh, he, no, for a driver that went through the quid yesterday off his dad for a break. <laughs> no, I'm joking, he didn't. Uh, I'm not quite sure if Barry's had to. Ah, now there is uh, the number 69 car there. That would be uh, Callum Foster for the Bradley Shepherd racing team with a, a radiator that is a bit skew if. Uh, there goes Shane Chandaria, the uh, Kenyan driver in cart number uh, 56 for the Pro Train Racing Team. Now, Harry Bart on the back of his crash helmet, uh, you should see, unless he's got a new crash helmet, there was on his old crash helmet, he did have quite literally a picture of his dog, Rodney. Uh, oh, the 68, John take Richardson. a ticket, yeah, there from Azerbaijan. He's got the Azerbaijan flag across the top of his crash helmet. Smart crash helmet design there for John. Uh, the number 42 cart. Uh, Emily Cotty mm -hmm. uh, goes through, and some of the back markers. Now, Elliot Surtees, he did finish that race, a couple of laps down, or, or, or rather the cart stopped and it restarted again. Um, but there we go. Yes. And, uh, well, just get a, a picture taken. Ah, for, just uh, for posterity, shows. yes. But, uh, it's not going to affect too many things because uh, unfortunately, poor thirty P thirty one in uh, in that one. Uh, we will next see Junior Rotax for the big one, for the final. Yes, two thirty uh, is the final for Junior Root uh, Junior Rotax. For now, though, let's head down once again to Park Ferme. Nicole Sutherland has Harry Bar. Harry Bartle, Junior Rotax, Super Heat B winner. Harry, we saw you lose the, the race lead and then come back into it after a few laps. Can you tell us a little bit about that? The uh, start was a decent start. I dropped a third from second. And then the second lap, I got in second. And then from there, I caught the leader and got into the lead. And then from the rest of the race, I just held it until the end. And uh, we see the finals are anything like what we've seen so far this weekend they're they're going to be difficult what are your expectations i mean the expectation is to win obviously but uh, anything that can happen so hopefully we can win and i uh, i've seen throughout the winter i think your six final wins in a row you reckon you can make it a seventh uh hopefully yeah best of luck to you harry we'll go over and find some of our other race front leaders we'll go back over to jacob ashcroft who we've caught up with a few times already this weekend because of how fast he's been so jacob very impressive drive from you there we saw you drop drop back down the order slightly and then come back into second can you tell us about that a little bit yeah i had a, I had a rubbish start dropped down to about fifth or sixth and then i just when I got happy with the car and I got back to it, um, I managed to get myself back through the field and I caught Jacob Jukes and then pulled away from him and then I just held that gap in second. So when you say happy with the car, what, can you tell us a little bit about that? What was wrong or? Well, on the formation lap, I didn't really get a lot of heat in my tyres, so it was, a, I, it was a little bit slidey on the first few laps. When I got some heat into my tyres, I was really fast. Great, great to hear from you and sure we'll see you again at some point this weekend, Jacob. Best of luck. So we'll throw back up to the comms block for an ad break and then we'll go into the next heat of the day. Thank you very much, Nicole, uh, for uh, for the interviews down there in Park Ferme. We're getting ready for the uh, for the next super heat. Uh, Michael Max will be out on circuit next for race number 21 on the schedules today. Just the single super heat uh, for Michael Max yes. here, Henry. Uh, good things. Yes. Guaranteed spots through to the final. 31 Excellent. drivers on the grid. Yes. Uh, so a little bit of pressure off. We've spoken to some of our Michael Max, Max drivers about that already this weekend. But this is still a big one because you, know, yeah. you want to get that good grid position for the final. 
again, double points on offer uh, here. And what, what I do like is the fact that even though um, the Micromax drivers don't need a Subi, they've still got the same amount of racing. Yeah. So in some of the other racing series that I've been, that, you know, when, you have, when you've only got one grid of drivers, they, they lose a race because they're all going to make the final, mm. and I don't like that, but uh, what Motorsport UK have done. Now, uh, in the box, the bottom hand right of the screen, that's the timing building. You can see Ian Rogers and Everett. There's someone spotted them on camera there at the top. Across the top there, that's the restaurant here at Wilton Mill. Um, yes, hello, sir. Who waved again? Is that, what, what badge is that on his jacket, I'm wondering? Uh, so, oh, let's have a look. So we've got at the top of the thing, so Mr. Hibbert, I can see you. I can see your head there. You're on the left hand on the right hand side and Anderson Chilcott uh, and Marvellous Marv you're at the one side of the paddock so we're going to do a Mexican wave starting with you working all the way across to Kai Hunter at the other end so ready on. okay Anderson and Marv you're going to start the Mexican wave it's going to go all the way across the, uh, the, the front there to Kai Hunter at the end we're going to start in three two one go Hang on, hang on, hang on. Pollitt's involved. Keep it going, here we go, keep, keep it going. going. Come on, Kai. Kai Hunter, you let us down. Right, there we go. Thank you very much. Uh, that was, uh, that was, that that was, was more, exhilarating. That was, quite, that was maybe a Guatemalan wave, just a little bit below Mexico and <laughs> not quite as rich. Uh, but there we go. Well done, uh, Paddock. Thank you very much. Uh, That's the audience participation for the day. <laughs> yeah, apologies to everybody in Guatemala. Um, before that. Um, now, there's talk about the budgets for the British Karting Championship. Uh, well, that, 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 that varies, obviously, depending on what you go to. You could do it for a lot or you could do it for a little. Uh, not everybody in this paddock is spending much, much money. There's Stu Stratton. Um, Mr. Car well, he's, he's not Mr. Karting, that's why there's someone else, but he runs Mr. Karting uh, and he's in his pink tab out there. Uh, Stu was... This is, this, this is the only type of weather that Stu likes because it's not yes. warm because he's ginger and he burns like a crisp. Let's go. Next race up, race 21, Super Heat for Micromax. All right, time for Micromax's Super Heats. Let's have a look through the grid determined by the results from the heats yesterday. Joshua Cook. Pole position alongside on the front row, Charlie Page, Max Jolly and Elliot Travis on row two, Austin Oman and Dean Pahal on row three. Maximilian Abrahart and Logan Rolfe go from row number four, then Alfie Garrett and James Roots, Arthur Farrow, oh dear, and Luke Millwood. Two drivers off and one still sat on the grid. Moving into the midfield then, row number seven, William Crombie and Josh Hushka, uh, row eight, Archie Rogers, Tyler, and George Swire, row nine, Alfie Mayer and Sebastian Behrman. I think Behrman is one of the carts involved in the problems there. Of yeah. The Connison slap. Ethan uh, Lloyd, Harper Das, also not out there. And a bunch of drivers, and maybe it's their transponders they haven't picked up going through sector number one. That's right. Alfie Mayer. Alfie Mayer, he's, and he's had one. Uh, and that's the number 87 as well. That's uh, Archer Rogers, Tyler, trying to get themselves out of the... Uh, grass are we going to get a start this time around no we're not which is good and now we'll try and see well i can see a couple i think alfie mayor is back on track and coming around the boot or is that somebody else the number 82 cart has just crossed the line that was george swire uh, for kr sport uh yeah alfie mayor sebastian beerman for ambition motorsport doesn't appear to be out there uh yeah swire and uh, Mayer are uh, both, and we also saw the 87 of Archie, Rogers, Tyler. So uh, Swire, uh, uh, Rogers, Tyler, Behrman and Mayer all starting together, and they all seem to go off together, which was um, unfortunate. A very quick run through the grid again. Row one, Cook and Page, Jolly and Travis, row two, Owen and Pahal, row three, Abraham and uh, Rolf, row four, Garrett and Roots, row five, Arthur Farrow and Millwood, row six, Hushka and Crombie, row seven, Swire and Rogers Tyler, row eight, Behrman and Alfie Mayer due to go from row nine, Masiokas and Radcliffe, row 10, Ramsey and Walker, row 11, Barber and Albert Farrow, row 12, Forks, Biggs, Lloyd, Galudi, Dawson, Das and Smith. That are Those are your 31 starters. We're going to go around again. Of course, we're going to go around we've again. Yeah, After we've a still steaming got run through the grid, we're going to have <laughs> another formation lap. Uh, we'll have a little look there. Uh, as we've got 
couple of carts still. Alfie Mir, one of them, still desperately trying to catch the pack. Oh, no. That That's is your pole Joshua's sister. cook. That's your, uh, your pole sitter, Joshua Cook, who was, at the moment, he was leading the intermediate classification, and something has broken on the... The KR Sport, well, the, the, the KR Sport Junior program, uh, the, the KR Sport Junior team, which is uh, Micro and Mini. Uh, that's uh, to Toby George has got some work to do on that one to get it back up the order come the final. So our pole sitter out of the race before it's even begun. Plenty of drama before the start of this one. It will be 10 minutes plus one lap. Our pole sitter will not take this one from the start, so it'll be over to Charlie Page. Max Jolly and the rest of them. Away we go. Green light for the start of this one. Side by side. Good attack there from Charlie Page. Takes the initiative in the early stages. Max Jolly's had a good start as well in the Hunter Motorsport entry up towards Christmas Corner for the first time in this one. Oh, Round it's cool. goes Elliot Travis. And he's not happy about that one at all. And it's the other KR Sport that's in drama on lap one. There's another spinner in the background. It's someone with a 50 plater upwards. I think it, well, it, it could have been uh, a, it's an RCE cart or a Sam Pollock cart. I couldn't quite see it was that sort of livery. It might be Josh uh, Hushka then, the 55 uh, for Sam so Pollock. Yes. Racing it going is. round is not come through sector number one. Down the inside, Dean Pahal won the heat earlier on this morning, is out of the race. That's the number 29 of Adam Galudi, who will go no further oh. in this one. My oh my, what a what a plethora of drama, dramatic moments we've had. And that was only the first lap. Jolly for Pahal, Page, Rolf, Owen, Abraham, Roots, Garrett, Millward, and Arthur Farrow. That is your top 10 as we go on to lap two. Yeah, I, I mean, incredible. Alfie Mir, uh, he didn't quite catch the pack, almost. He's already up 20 to 25th. He's passed Elliot Travis. Hauschka as well down at the back with Cook, Behrman, Galudi and Das either not starting or retiring on the opening lap. Uh, and that, So that means that a lot of drivers at the back, if we look at Lucian Smith, Lucian Smith from 31st to 19th simply by staying out of trouble and keeping all his all the bits on his go-kart together. Now there's Logan Rolf jumping uh, uh, the uh, the barriers there, uh, the, the, the curbing there, not jumping the barriers, sorry Gary. I know that his dad and mum and dad jumping the barriers? No, no, no. Uh, Logan Rolf uh, into a very impressive fourth position in that number 32 car and having a look at the inside going across the top of the valley here at Wilton Mill and then down the hill. What a wonderful set and again. It was designed so that anyone, spectators, could see the whole track from one, one position. And uh, now we're looking, yeah, so Max Jolly leading the way. Dian Pahal, Dian Pahal there for the RCE team. Page is third. Then it's Rolf, Oman, Abraha, Roots, uh, Garrett, Alfie Garrett has been promised uh, an extra bunch of Easter eggs if he gets a top 10 finish. Uh, but you need to do give, don't give it Easter eggs to him during the lunch break because he'll be absolutely hyper off the sugar rush before the final. So at the end of the day, give it to him before school on Monday morning. Oh, it's Easter Monday. So, oh, he give won't it. Be in. No, he'll be in. You know, no, tell him it's Monday. Give him the load of Easter eggs. He'll running off to school. <laughs> no, here we go. The top four it is Jolly, Bahal, Page, and Rolf. Nose to tail. Great view of the new CS55 uh, chassis, the Carlos Sainz chassis, the Hunter Motorsport team. They are the UK's sole importer of that cart. Um, just a shame they painted it like a CRG. There is the Richardson chassis engine. Oh, oh and uh, well, that's that's taking Carlos Sainz Sr., the rally driver, doing a bit of rally cross there. So that change for the lead. Dean Pahal now at the front of the order. Charlie Page there in second place. Logan Rolf now up to third place. Oh, squirming around there through the final corner. And uh, still in the first half of this race. I'm hearing in my ear that the reason the number 95, Harper Das, is not out in this race is unconfirmed reports, which should stress. Uh, missed the gate, apparently. Oh. Uh, so that's why we've not got Harper Das, but at least that consolation. We will see yep. everybody through to the final in this category. And um, I... The, oh. There are some somewhat ominous-looking clouds appearing from 
uh, behind the paddock. So that's behind the main building, over the rental cart circuit, down into the woods by the actual mill building itself, uh, to the sort of, yeah, behind the camera shot, so not looking that way. Uh, I wonder if the rain was forecast at one o'clock, and it's quarter past 12 now. Hmm. One, oh, and there's uh, one driver running very hard. Yeah, Abrahart. So the, uh, the reason the new corner is there is to stop drivers running so wide and crashing into the barriers at high speed. Maximilian Abrahart there, uh, as we got a battle for the race lead. Uh, that is Paige and Logan Rolf into P2 with uh, Jolly. Was down to fourth. Now trying to fight his way back at the expense of Dihan Pahal for third. This is great stuff. And there's the Evolve Motorsport number 21 of James Roots. The Roots, the Roots on fire. Uh, coming up into the picture in sixth position. It's all drivers who know each other very well. Now racing here in Microax. Charlie Page has the lead. We're into the second half of this race now through the chicane once again that's a good line from charlie page oh, a bit too much speed through the final corner though and that may leave page vulnerable to an attack now from logan rolf it's a top three starting to break away this is a big lap for austin Oman, you feel it's got to keep that gap close here comes rolf down the inside for the lead of the race for hal trying to follow through there as well rolf takes it through christmas and for page you've got to hold it in there charlie page oh, oh wide moment close moment for Max Jolly, Charlie Page has been able to hold in there around fourth place. Little check on the radiator there for uh, for Max Jolly. Still holding in there in, I think, sixth place now. But this is Logan Rolf's opportunity to race off the front of the order. What kind of pace has he got with the time remaining? Uh, Matt, now, Max Jolly... He, he's got a great social media where he gives you a guide with it, but it's not a flashy reel. It's Max with his little microphone mm -hmm. talking to the viewer about his day. Loads of media training. I, I wonder if he's going to describe those two moments in his daily update. As we look up the hill, we've got a new leader, Logan Rolf. We've got another new leader, Dia Bahal. We've got another new second place driver, Max Jolly. And we've got another third and fourth place battle between James Roots and Charlie Page. Two, four, six, eight drivers. You could throw a postage stamp over them. And then another couple of drivers are, are coming into this as well. Benedict Tadmasio catches up 10 spots so far in this race up tonight. Xavier Ramsey goes one better. He's up 11 places into the top 10. They're only... 3.6 seconds off the leader to three minutes to go. That's nothing. If, these, if this front group keep fighting, Masiokas and Ramsey are going to close in there. What is happening as well in the final intermediate classification? Well, well it's wide open. Yeah, as Absolutely it stands, wide open. as it stands, four points separate Page, Pahal, Oman, Jolly and Rolf. It's changing lap after lap, the positions. At the moment, Charlie Page uh, is tight in a three-way tie with Dian Pahal and Austin Oman for pole position. But that's now changed because Oman has now taken the lead. And there is the number 544 car. Oh, no, Lucian Smith. He'd gone from 31st to 16th, and he's now back to, I would imagine, about 27th place. Elliot Travis is still 26th after his spin, uh, but Alfie Mayer has gained a bunch of places. He's up into 20th now as this pack, this is the type race, it gets better and better. This is where you think, run them until they, they, they run out of gas. Absolutely, two minutes to go then. Eight drivers Eight in a line. Eight drivers in single file over the start finish straight. Austin Oman, who had a great week last week at the uh, the club event, which is the first run on this new format of Wilton Mill. Has he got the speed? Well, down the inside, here oh. comes Rolf. Rolf with a bit of a, an assist, I think, from uh, Pahal, Pahal yep. behind. Good racing between the two of them. Good recovery there for a moment. Didn't try and fight that one too hard. As out of the race is the number 46 of Toby Biggs. We'll go no further in this one, but oh, very close there. Bahal, oh, and I think there was another driver to the right of them, three wide, uh, nearly didn't work out, as who's this on the scene? It's the number 24 of Arthur Farrow coming through the order now. Great drive from Arthur Farrow, up three spots so far in this race. Problems, though, to report, unfortunately, for the number 22, Jensen Walker. We spoke to his dad during the... Oh, George oh, Swire's out. George, Swire's George out well. Swire out, was having a tremendous run, was up in 13th place. 
but will now fall all the way down outside the top 25. One minute plus one lap to go. And James Roots has caught the lead pack, has passed half a dozen drivers, and is now sitting on the rear bumper of the Synergy car. Uh, is that the Synergy car of Logan Rolf? It is the Synergy, oh, it's a Synergy factory on a barrel. Well, it's the Synergy car. I know Gary, I know him by it, uh, but it's now, uh, right, it's now sort of uh, homologated as a Birrell ART. And that's a Nigel Mansell style crash helmet mm. I've seen going around as well. So you've got a Prost crash helmet, a Mansell crash helmet. That's very just good. Need a, a Senna and a PK. Now. Senna and a PK, and, uh, that, and, 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 and we're back in the 1980s. Uh, Rolf second, and is that, that's James Roots has taken the race lead. Fantastic. James Rooks, the Evolve Motorsport team. They would get, for, for years, it was basically just you know, Hardy Mamasi. This is Chris Lamar's team. But now uh, Rooks goes back to third place. And I've got to say, Logan Rolf has impressed me. He, this is stepping up to for Logan Rolf. Now Pahal. Uh, yeah, Logan Rolf. He's, he's raced for a couple of years. His, his dad, Gary, used to run Vital Motorsports. Uh, Bobby Thompson, uh, amongst other drivers, were drivers that came through the Gaz Tech Academy of karting. Um, but now his son, Logan, has raced in other championships, uh, the National Kart Cup, the Karting Championship, the Bambino Kart Club, uh, what have you. Now he's stepping up to the Motorsport UK British Championship as a, a no-plate, oh. and he's just made a move. Oh, well, Dian Pahal gets the curbing wrong there, and Rolf capitalises, but Pahal sticking it out on the inside for Crook through Oblivion, now up the hill. This is the final lap, and anyone of two, four, six, seven, Charlie Page was leading earlier on. He's now in eighth, but he's still... Oh, the oh, spin Rolf Rolf goes around. Rolf rounds and will fall. That hard work for Logan Rolf will disappear down beyond and out of the top ten. And you did feel that was going to happen at some stage in this race. That's what happens sometimes when there's such a, a close pack, and it is the final lap. At least he will have another go in the final. Dean Bahal had a race win earlier on this morning in the second heat for Micromax. Is it going to be another one? Austin Owen all over the back of the number 23 here into the final chicane for the final time. A lot of curb once again. Dean Bahal is going to win the super heat. What a drive over the line. Owen in second place. James Roots up to third. Luke Millward. What a drive from Luke Millwood right at the end there, getting up to fourth ahead of Arthur Farrow, fifth. All of the drivers in the top five moving up multiple positions. Max Jolly, sixth. Masiokas, one of the biggest movers, if not, yes, the biggest mover in that race up 12. Charlie Page, Archie Rogers Tyler, and Xavier Ramsey complete a top 10 in a pulsating. Super heat there in Micromax UK. Logan Rolf finishes 13th. Alfie Mayer from the back of the grid up to 14th. Excellent race there. Uh, San, I mean, we're going to see all these drivers later on. Dean Pahal uh, said about yesterday, you know, Dean's acting as an inspiration. Uh, for you know the whole Sikh community in the in the UK to show, look, you know this is this is racing. It's inclusive. It's for everybody. He's got a big beaming spa uh, face. He loves an interview. And uh, oh, and and there's George Swire. <laughs> that's the the the, the karting in a microcosm yep. there. One one second you can see there needed down there. He's uh, having a chat. Well done. Some taking some praise there. And the other side, desolation. Karting, 90% heartache. 10% elation. Don't like that ratio. You're in the wrong game. Yeah, good to see. Uh, I think Austin Owen was quite happy with that. We saw a little clap to himself there. Yeah. Coming through to take second place. Uh, how does that leave the final intermediate classification? Should stress these results are provisional, of course. 15 points apiece for the top two in that race. Uh, the tiebreaker at the moment is going in the direction of Pahal, so it'll be Pahal on pole position for the final at 3 o'clock UK time uh, here in Wilton Mill. Owen in second place, Jolly third on 19 uh, points from the two heats and the super heat. Charlie Page fourth on 21, James Roots fifth on 26. Uh, and uh, it's going to be Arthur Farrow, isn't it? Sixth place. Yep. Albert was a little bit further uh, down the order. So Arthur will start sixth. 
Luke Millwood seventh, and uh, Maxi Eberhardt will be eighth. I should stress all those results are provisional. For now, though, let's head once again back down to Park Ferme and Nicole Sutherland, who's with Dear Pahal. We're over with Dean Bahal, who's on their second win of the day. Dean, there was a, a fair few changes for the race lead then. Can you tell us a little bit about it? On lap five or six, it, I was in the race lead. Coming out of Ashby, um, it was three wide. Then I lost two positions. I got into third again, and then they left. And then on one of the laps coming to the last lap, uh, I got lead again and I was feeling someone pushing me from my back bumper. It was Austin Man. I think he could, he could have won, but on the last lap I defended and they battled. I got a little bit of a gap and I won. That's great. Thanks, Dean. Looking forward to seeing you at the end of today. And we'll just throw back up to Henry and Andrew in the comments box. Time for the next super heat, and it's the turn of Honda Cadet GX200 to take to the circuit. Let's have a look through the grid. Kevin uh, Ivanov starts on pole position. Alongside on the front row is uh, Margaris Kavekis. Ed Spain and Ryan White on row number three. Keen Sullivan and Luke McGall on row number three. Row number four, Albie Smith and Elliot Bork. Then Archie Cannon and Ricky McIntosh round out the top ten. Ralphie Branscombe and Ronnie Smart on row number six. Jack Fulbrook Harmer and Andrew Sutherland start on row seven. Harry Grant and Shay Hilton on row eight. Shailen Secretons and Janet Jayan Prakash start on the ninth row of the grid. 18 runners in total uh, for this, the super heat in Honda Cadet GX200. Uh, some really entertaining oh, heats yes. so far this weekend. We saw one of them earlier on this morning. We saw the other yesterday. If you missed any of that action, don't worry. You can watch it back uh, on the variety of, uh, of YouTube channels and platforms that we're on today, including, including at Our Karting UK, uh, new, the new home of karting, karting content in on the YouTube, UK, in YouTube. From right. UK. OK, I've got you. I've got you at. That's the symbol with the A, yes. isn't it? And um, then you've got our, our O U R yeah. karting, karting with a K and uh -huh. an A and an R and a T and an I and an G uh, UK. Yeah. That's Good. It. Keep I'll remember subscribing. that. There's standing start. Here we go. The audience like the standing starts, don't the audience? We do indeed. Hardy Noam Mass, he likes it. He's watching. Uh, uh, the uh, Canadian based. Oh, now, number 49 being wheeled off the grid. That is Andrew Sutherland. <sighs> Oh, the Project One won't go. Dan Ashton moves it to the side. 17 drivers remain. And we wait for the green flag to go up. Then the lights will go out. Then we'll be off and racing. Good start from both drivers on the front row of the grid. Quebec is a really good start from second place on the grid and shoots into the lead in the early stages up towards Christmas Corner. They run 17 of them. Continuing, real shame for Sutherland. And uh, he wasn't able to take this start. Oh, very close there between oh. the two ambitions. And there's a spinner. It's the number 99 of Albie Smith, who's not happy about that situation at all. Oh. And that's going to be a hard way back from there. Chain reaction. The two ambition motorsport drivers, they work really well together. Uh, Ed Spain and uh, Kian Sullivan, they worked so well together. They were trying to get themselves linked up going to Christmas Corner and they just sort of crossed bumpers a little bit and that forced them wide and unfortunately Albie Smith was the driver on the outside that was kind of, yes, was cannoned into uh, by the two teammates who were simply trying to put the, to get their bumpers lined up so they could continue to push on together. Uh, good afternoon to, uh, Hello. to a driver very familiar with this yes. car racing, Hello. Hello. Uh, and uh, a, a mention to yourself, Henry. Good Mas to have you back, Haddy. That's on the Alpha Live uh, YouTube comments. Be better to have him in the paddock, but he's doing other things now mm. in, in racing, Miss Hardy. He represented Canada, did he not, in the FIA Karting Academy because he originally from Toronto. Down, the Blue Jays. Down the hill towards Ashby Corner, that yellow flag that was out, I imagine that is for the recovery of oh, Alby Smith. Oh, I hope well, Alby's okay. 
I think there's a there's frustration, uh, uh, you know, uh, upset more than Albi. It's okay, you know. These these Honda Honda Cadet drivers are aged between eight, eight. and twelve. Wow. Most of them, both most of them are, you know, eight, nine, ten. You've got this. Has got something you've got to remember. Um, but hopefully now, of course, the, the the official was with Albi Smith there, and yep, he's being pulled off. He didn't want to get out of his go kart, but his go kart. Uh, 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 his go-kart will not go anymore. I'm going to come with an, an analogy here. We had a yep. lot of lot of changeable conditions on Friday. Yes. And whilst Albi was out, it was a beautiful rainbow. What you've got to have to have a rainbow, you've got to have rain, but you've also got to have... A bow. The sun. The sun. You've got to have the sun. You've the, got to rain and the shine sun, at the same sun time. Sun rain, that's a mindless. Uh, you know, you've got to, yeah. Isn't that an analogy for, uh, for it, Honda uh, Cadet at times? Yes. Yeah, you, it, after uh, every cloud, the silver lining and all that, you know, after the rain comes a rainbow. Um, and a leprechaun. No, that was terrible, terrible. Sorry, Ireland. <laughs> Seven and a half minutes to go in this one. Kevin Ivanov continuing to lead it. Quarter of a second clear of Margaris Kavakis. Ryan White up to third. Last year's Motorsport UK uh, Honda Cadet British Car Champion, of course. That's why he's wearing the number one in 2024. He's got the fastest lap of the race so far, 54.07 pace from yesterday, but as a reminder, 53.31, the early uh, yes. uh, lap record in race conditions, because there was no Honda Cadet here last weekend for uh, for the club meeting. Yes. It's top three at the front of the order. They can keep working together now. They've got a, what is it, about two and a half second gap over Kean Sullivan behind. That's a healthy gap mm, to have, but can easily disappear in a... In a it, it, it can. Now, Ryan White coming up the straight towards Christmas Corner was trying to make the move on Margaris Kavakis. Uh, he's now decided that, uh, or Margaris wasn't sort of too keen on being overtaken, so Ryan would need to sort of sit in now behind and push away because the chasing pack, which we're looking at now, were briefly single file. If this group, this whole train of drivers, two, four, six, eight, nine drivers, if they all work together, they will close in because if you have a look now, Ivanov, Kovacis and White, they're not drafting. They've separated a little bit and that will mean they're susceptible. But of course, oh, they are. To a, yes, they're working together. They know there's six minutes to go. Plenty of time for this group to catch the three leaders. I always think this is a bit like road racing, like in the end of the Tour de France. Where yes, you've, yes, you've yes. Got you've got the leader of the peloton. He's uh, got to you work know. together. Yes, and then, oh, but then somebody wants, yeah, somebody else wants the yellow jersey. And uh, that was Ralphie Branscombe, uh, who's uh, crash helmet matches Chris Walker's tabard. Uh, but Ralphie Branscombe in the number 96 always gets loads and loads of support online. He's got a very large family, or else he, his dad's outside the paddock dishing out the tenors, trying to walk you past all year. <laughs> Chuck Moss on a comment, mate. <laughs> no, he's <laughs> okay. It's all good. These drivers, they need to get a support base. Yeah. They need supporters who aren't just, you know, family members and friends. They need karting fans, of which we have many on the live chat who aren't related to the drivers. They're just fans of the sport. You know, you want to re you want to you want to try and give uh, the viewers a reason to cheer for certain drivers by telling their stories. Now, Branscombe looking at the back bumper of Kean Sullivan. The gap has grown. It was 3.4 seconds to the race leader, it's now 3.9. However, Ivanov has pulled clear of the new back of the second place. Ryan White passes Kovacis. They're actually, well, there's still a ways for that second group to go to catch them. I think that's a, that's a good call from Ryan White at this stage to yes. get ahead, see if he's got the pace. It's some, well, yes. sometimes a swap of a swap of carts in terms of a double but, formation and also the can fact suddenly that, find two or three tenths. Yeah, also the fact that Ivanov had just set the fastest lap and uh, Kovacis was falling away. So White said, well, I've got to go. He's probably not thinking about being pushed by Kovacis. He's probably just focusing. But this group now, good, smart driving from the 26 of Sullivan, the 96 of Branscombe, and then the following cart, the 35 of McGall. But Branscombe with the, oh, he's got the Jamie Sharp sponsored, that's the Sharp International Transport logo on the front of his thing. A big hello to Joe and Jamie Sharp. Uh, Sharp Transportation offering some sponsorship there to Ralphie Branscombe, up out of Oisiers. Now, 
Branscombe is the lead of this train. Will the gap come down? It's three seconds between Kovekis and Branscombe. 2.9 seconds, sorry. Uh, and we've got four minutes to go. I think that's probably a bridge too far. Might be. It's going to be, I think it's going to be determined in the next lap or so. Ralphie Branscombe, good amount of experience last year, finished third in the Honda Cadet O plate. And uh, let's see what kind of paces. Uh, there with the 96 through the first sector, up the hill once again still. Even off from uh, White from Quebec, so there was a yellow flag out there. Uh, might <laughs> that still for uh, the number 99 of Albie Smith, possibly. Because uh, that's where we saw Albie Smith leave uh, we'll the race it. on lap one. Uh, uh, number 72 of Ed Spain coming into play as well, just behind Kean Sullivan and Luke McGall. Further down the order, who's gaining places? Harry Grant's had a decent race, up yes. three spots to 12th. Uh, Shea Hilton. Shane Sequinton and uh, Jane Prakash are all up two spots as well. This is going to be the telling lap, I think, in terms of the pace of the different competitors over the course of the final stages. What has Ivanov done that time around? 53-7, 54-0s for White and Quebecis. Good wow. pace from Branscombe, McGall, Sullivan. They've all just yes. set personal best in the high 58s, but I don't think that's the kind of... No. The rate of catch-up isn't great enough at the moment, Henry, for them to uh, to trouble White and Quebecis. They're only a tenth or so a lap quicker. We've got two and a half minutes to go. So here is that battle for fourth place. Branscombe still at the front of it. McGall there in the number 35 in fifth place. Then the two ambitions of Keen Sullivan and Ed Spain. Oh, a huge catch there for Ed Spain through Wilkins' corner. I think that was one of those he just got a little bit too close yep. to the back of his teammate. Uh, may have just touched the brakes and it pivoted the back end of the cart round. That was a very good uh, piece of cart control to keep himself in this race. Another lap ticks on by. 1.8, 2.3 seconds now the lead for Ivanov over White and Kovekis. Is the gap further coming down? It is. Now, that's a bit better. That is better from yes. the chasing pack. They took, what was that, half four, a second, four, yeah. five tenths out of the gap ahead to Kovekis on that last tour of the track. And it means uh, Kovekis, in turn, is sort of closing in on Ryan White. So, it's, I mean, Kovekis will probably have a go at Ryan White at some point. Uh, there they are. So these four drivers, they can see it. I wouldn't wouldn't surprise you if you start getting little hand signals. They're saying sort of like push forward, push forward, push forward. As uh, the two ambition drivers, uh, Spain and Sullivan, that's cost them both a bit of time. Well, they decide to battle. This is all down now to Branscombe and McGall closing in and trying to catch White and Kovacis for second and third. Kevin Ivanov, two and a half seconds at the road. He's cruising to victory. Is indeed can keep it uh, nice and calm at the wheel of the number 50 right now. Is there further progress? There is. It's not quite as big as last time. It's around three, four tenths this time for Branscombe taking that gap away from Kovekis. It's only 30 seconds of this remaining. Confirmed change for sixth place. Ed Spain passed Keen Sullivan in that swap of the two Ambition Motorsport entries. Ronnie Smart having another strong effort here should notice there in eighth place that's a gain of four for Ronnie Smart in the number 51 here going on to the back straight Ryan White and Margaret Kovekis second and third have been in this formation for the last couple of laps I think yes. any chance of winning this one are probably gone right now the temptation for Kovekis will be there to go for second place what would it do in terms of the IC well not a lot really uh, even no, on a perfect yes. zero uh, Kovekis is on 11, even if he was to overtake White right now, he wouldn't get any further up the grid for the final. And, and Ivanov crossed the line with one second to go, so next time round it'll be the last lap. But if you have a look, Kovekis was pushing Ryan White up the hill towards Christmas Corner. Now he looks to the inside, the crossover from White is on, Sat wheel to wheel, side by side, look at that, the gap is... Nothing between the two sets of rear tyres. Now this is going to bring Alfie Branscombe, uh, Ralphie Branscombe, right there is the number 96. And uh, Branscombe head down 
hunched over the master panel, trying to create maximum aerodynamic efficiency. And you can tick that one off your karting bingo list. Uh, now we've said that one once. Uh, but uh, Branscombe is now going to start the last lap, and he's got the momentum. He checks over his shoulder. He knows he's got no one behind him. That means he can move around. He can move offline without the risk of. Uh, oh, oh dear. And speaking of NASA Kean panels, Sullivan. and uh, maximum, that's minimum aerodynamic efficiency for Kean Sullivan. It might, oh, it might have been Ronnie Smart. It was someone around in, in the top ten. We'll confirm it in due course. Uh, Kovec is still holding on to second place. What a drive this has been from Ralphie Branscombe. He's kept his head down across the course of the second half of this one. White's looking to the inside on the exit of Ashbury, which will become the outside now for Wilkins. And look at Branscombe. Branscombe's going to get both of them. Brilliant stuff from Ralphie Branscombe. Timed that one to perfection. Through goes Ryan White as well. Kovekis protests. We're on the final lap. Kevin Ivanov is going to take an easy victory here in the superheated claim. Pole position for the final in Honda Cadet. Across the line, second place, and may well Ralphie Branscombe celebrate yes. that one. That was a brilliant drive. It was so clever from Ralphie Branscombe. You saw it. He made one move, and he just sort of he dictated the pace of that second group. He had his eyes the prize, and it worked out brilliantly for him. Well done, uh, Branscombe. There is Keith Sullivan. Sullivan. There's a there's a famous there's a famous bit of commentary from the late great Arthur Debenham uh, from Rallycross at mm. Brands Hatch when Brands Hatch had the best Rallycross track in the world. And it was like it was a uh, Vic Moist in a Ford Fiesta, and uh, uh, Arthur Debenham. And how can he see where he's going? And that was Kian Sullivan's last few laps as we look at the race results. Kevin Ivanov takes it by five seconds ahead of Ralphie Branscombe, Ryan White, and Marcus Kovekis in the top four. Ed Spain, the first of the Ambition Motorsports home in fifth, uh, sixth for Luke McGall, Ronnie Smart, Elliot Bork, Harry Grant, Ricky McIntosh in the top ten. All in the top 10, I should say. Archie Cannon, 11th. Uh, Keen Sullivan in 12th. And with that problem with the, with the bodywork. 13th place for Shea Hilton. 14th for Shailen Srikantan. Uh, J.M. Prakash, the last of the finishers after 13 laps uh, there in 15th. Three retirements. Jack Fulbrook Harmer uh, with two laps to go. And then uh, on the first lap of the race, Albie Smith and Andrew Sutherland. No, I was going to talk about the really nice smart graphics kit again on Don't car 23. But the minute I said, oh, it's, a, it's good. It's, oh, because the minute I did it last time, Andrew, yeah, the telephone of doom came out. But uh, great, great, plain, simple. That Shailan uh, Sikantan. Uh, that synergy car, it, it reminds me of the, the Aston Martin Le Mans sort of British racing green mm. with, the, with the other green flicks. Not quite the, the classic Team Lotus colours, no. but with the green, that's an Aston, yes. There is Ralphie Branscombe. Oh, a, a sigh of relief there. And, you know, in the words of Hannibal the, of A team, I love it when a plan comes together. And it was, uh, it was key that he made those moves because it changed things in the final intermediate classification. I should stress, this is provisional. Ivanov P1, perfect zero score through the three races so far this weekend for Honda Cadets. Kovekis alongside on the front row with 13. Spain and White on row two with 15 and 16 points respectively. McGall and Branscombe both on 25, both on the third row of the grid. Ooh. It's Keane Sullivan who loses out in that regard, Dr uh, drops from that third row to the fourth row. Uh, on 29 points and will be joined as well by Elliot Bork should stress that is a provisional result of course uh, more racing to come up here uh, at Wilton Mill you're watching live coverage of the 2024 uh, British O plate the uh, the British Open Championship for Honda and uh, Rotax the first meeting of the year for the 2024 Vera Tools Motorsport UK British Kart Championships Andrew Mather and Henry Baudet on commentary duties for you here this weekend. And uh, yes, I say, more racing to come up. That is uh, the end for Honda Cadet and their super heats, because uh, we'll just keep you informed with this. They will be next out at 3.30, half past three uh, for the final. The O-Plate 
race for Honda Cadet is then. Uh, two more heats to uh, super heats as well before we go to the lunch break. They'll both be in senior Rotax. Senior Rotax have been very patient across the course of the morning. They've had a little bit of warm-up, a little bit of practice, Henry. Now, yes. uh. or shortly, they will go into uh, into their two super heats. Uh, Marty Higgins is sister and mum there on the camera. Uh, sister's wearing the black coat, mum's wearing the orange coat, just in case anyone was... <laughs> Uh, there's the rest of Dan Holland crew. There's uh, 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 waiting for um, uh, Matty to go out on a munch there. There's Mr. Malozzi there in the glasses. And oh, there's uh, a couple of other co collectors there. But uh, Nicole Sutherland is down in the pits with uh, oh, a, qu a squadron of four stroke drivers. Well, one of them at least. We're over with Kevin Ivanov. Kevin, second race win of this weekend. So this is your first O Plate event, so you're doing pretty well. You happy so far? Yeah, really happy. Uh, heat two, uh, it was good, but we wanted better, so uh, we did a few setup changes to the car, and I managed to pull a gap. And you're running with the Zipcart factory team. Are they happy with how you're getting on as well? Very. We'll catch up with you in a little bit, Kevin. Thank you, and best of luck. We'll go straight back up to Henry in the comms box for our senior Rotax Superheat A. Thank you very much, Nicole. Uh, there's a poll on the way uh, already in the Alpha Live chat. Uh, keep your comments and your interactions coming in. The latest question, uh, what is your favorite English circuit on the Rotax calendar for 2024? Is it Wilton Mill? Is it PFI? Is it Kim Bolton or is it Warden Law? At the moment, PFI is the early leader, uh, but uh, make, your make your choice. Oh, and I've just heard in my ear, if, you, if your favorite is Lark Hall as well, do put that in the chat. I know Joe Bradley, uh, up on the balcony, we'll be cheering for Warden Law all the way. Uh, so at the moment, uh, Joe, Warden Law is third. Uh, so uh, behind Wilton Mill and behind PFI, but I'm sure everyone from Karting North East watching will, uh, will give that a, uh, a vote as well. We're going to get ready for the next race, though. Super Heat A for Senior Rotax is next. Two more races to go then before the break. They are both super heats in senior Rotax. Let's have a look at the grid for the first of them. Lewis Gilbert, winner of the O plate in 2021, starts this one from pole position and is alongside Matthew Higgins. Keen Garrett and Tyler Harris on row two. Teddy Pritchard Williams and Brandon Klein Nagelvoort start on the third row of the grid. On row number four, we've got Macaulay Bishop and Tristan Rennie, Jamie Perilli and Lorenzo Cordal round out your top ten with Angus Scrivener and Jack Collins. Is that Welsh, you know? William Pemble and Christoph Sala on row seven, Ewan Charman and Luke Bates on row eight, Stefan uh, Kaczmarczyk and Morgan Porter start on row nine. Liam Hartley and uh, Ramirion Ubi are next, then Matthew Lambert for the Nib Sports team, Nibbers, and uh, Max Taylor, Jack Gilligan and Ralph Youngling, whose brother Timo is here watching. Benjamin Southgate in his first O plate starts the superheat on the row, uh, row 13. Yannick Jacobs alongside Reese Bailey, Willoughby Steele on row 14. George Hunter and Gemma Hyans on row 15. 30 carts in the field. Remember, it's the top 34 across these two superheats yes. who race through to the final. That means we are going to lose around a third of the field. We started with just over 60 drivers. Uh, at the start of the weekend, well, 59 of them remain. Ah, yes, because so we've had a couple of uh, we've had a couple withdrawals. of dropouts. Yes, here, we, here go. we go. And uh, well, Lewis, no, that's uh, <laughs> big I mean, again. I was going to say, if in in the, the Hall of Fame of false starts, <laughs> Lewis Gilbert has just. That, I mean, he went, and I mean, uh, yeah. I mean, if that wasn't a false start, then Lewis Gilbert would be home and drop. Oh no. That is the number 66 cart of Jack Gillingham. It's only his first year in seniors, and he's not going to make the final of the O plate, I should surmise. Uh, he is out of the race. We'll wait for the gloves. Are the gloves going to be thrown down? No, put in his, he's a private team. He can't afford new ones, so he's going to put them in his pocket instead. But... Uh, Oh, that's a, such a shame for Jack Gillingham, who has done so well. Yeah, and that will be Gillingham gone, because effectively anyone from the 10th row downwards is what I like to say on the outside looking in at the moment. Yes, They're the ones yes. needing big results to move themselves up from 35th and lower 
uh, in the intermediate classification um, from last night. So the, the driver a, on the bubble at the moment is Morgan Porter. Why is there a driver? It's, it's ah, it's a Kraft Motorsport driver uh, wearing one of Lewis Gilbert's old race suits. I thought, why is Lewis Gilbert out of position? But it's <laughs> not. It's just one of his old race suits. Take two, then. Ten minutes plus one lap, and we're going to go round again. Yeah, there was another gap. What was yeah. happening there on the pole side of the grid? I think wow, well, something that shouldn't have been happening, obviously. Uh, but, uh, you know, there we go. Uh, we'll have a little look there. Um, Henry Ops on the new chicane. What was that? Oh, Jay Larkin, thank you very much. Uh, Henry, what's your opinions on the curb at the last corner of Wilkin? Um, it's a high curb. I, I, I understand why the... Uh, so the curbs are what, why the corner is there. I think if you put flat curbs, the drivers would just drive over them, and then you have a track mm. limits issue, yep. and you wouldn't slow the speeds down as much. Um, I don't like the flip flops. Don't like them. Think that they. Uh, I think that they could cause more a problem than they cause a solution. There we go. There's my opinion. Uh, that's the thing. Of, of, but my, of my, this, that's my opinion, and it's not an opinion necessarily shared by Wilton Mill Car Club, British Car Championship, Motorsport UK, Vera Tools, or Alpha Live. It, Thank I, you very much. I, I think, think it, I got away with that one. I think the thing as well is that a couple of people were asking me, are well, the lap it, times much slower with the new chicane? Actually not. They're not as far off. You think that yeah, it's, it's it just a, means the acceleration out of the boot is happening a little bit later. So yeah. for, for seniors, I think we're only about a second, maybe 1.2 seconds off the pace that we're seeing at the height of the summer last year. Never mind that right now. We've got a race about to begin. Ten minutes on the clock. Lights out. Away we go. Good start from Lewis Gilbert. Through into the lead. Good start as well for Matthew Higgins. Immediately takes P2. Better start this time oh, for Keegan Garrity. That is not a good start for the 74. Max Taylor. Max Taylor. And that's another one of the drivers on the outside looking in in regards to top 34, who will go no further in this year's senior Rotax O plate. Teddy Pritchard Williams on the attack as well. Early stages here in the number five. First O-Plate weekend racing for Strawberry Racing. Very pleased to be there. Took a race win on the road. Uh, came first across the road uh, yesterday, of course, in one of the races. Nine minutes and 20 seconds remaining. Coming out to complete lap number one. It's a good start for Lewis Gilbert. Remember the story from yesterday. Had that race with Kai Hunter. Took the lead. Took the win away from Kai Hunter. If he wins this race, he gets pole position for the final. Uh, and uh, we're talking, you know, about Teddy Pritchard Williams and his move from uh, over to Strawberry. You know, he has to sort of change his mindset from being, you know, he's always, you know, when he's with, a, he's always been like, okay, I've got to go and beat the big boys. I've got yeah. to try and beat the big boys. Well, now he's got to change. They've got to beat you, Teddy, because you are the big boy. Uh, you know, uh, Carter, in, in terms of he's with his Strawberry. Oh, and there's the 18, and you and Charmer coming together. Now the Diamond of Dal Rai into the chicane, being chased by Matthew Higgins, Kian Garrity, Terry Pritchard Williams, then Macaulay Bishop in the number 68 cart, in, fifth running in, in fifth. And uh, as we look down at there, now let's have a little look as we look up there. Ah, Lewis Freedom Gilbert Mike. looks over his shoulder, and that clear plastic breather pipe is flapping away. Ooh. Now that is, that's not a technical DQ, nope. it's a distraction and it's not ideal. And he's uh, moving, He's now he's not trying to fix it, he's adjusting the radiator flap. You'll see some of the carts have got the radiator flaps down, others have got them up. That helps the temperature of the water. So, you know, the temperature of the radiators, you don't want to leave the radiator down or race because the, temp the engine gets very, very warm. And if it gets too warm, it then gets expensive. Yeah, oh, it's oh. off there. That's the number 44. Is that catch? Yeah, that is catch magic off the road. It's Josh Gollin, uh, sort of coach uh, driver. And that's the driver who was just on the inside. Started this race from 17th. And here goes on the attack. Matthew Higgins takes the lead of the super heat and that's a good move from matthew higgins early on though still seven and a quarter minutes to go yes indeed uh to Fagloises, uh matthew higgins the dull rise uh lewis gilbert leads teddy pritchard williams and another craft motorsport car on the grass that was the uh, 72 of tristan rennie now richard harris or Tyler Harris, as he as originally known. He's there in the number 84. Uh, he's got the pretty in pink uh, flex on his rear bumper. Um, he is uh, racing well in sixth position. 
Here is the move for the race lead up at Christmas Corner. Pritchard Williams getting sideways. Super Ted trying to pass Higgins. Now to the inside, he's going to defend against Bishop. And we are getting reports. Well, we don't need reports because the visual is on the commentary box window. It's spitting. It is spitting indeed. The pace isn't too bad at the moment. They're about six tenths of a second off. The pace they had yesterday, plus five second penalty for Luke Bate. Now it's starting to have an effect and off. Off is Keen Garrity through the grass, keeps it going again, but it's always, we say it every time here at Wilton Mill, when the rain starts to fall, beware the entry to the boot. It gets very slippery, very quickly. It's the unchanged bit of the boot for 2024, and it's struck again. There is the slippery surface pl uh, flag out there. Yes, Bishop down the inside of Pritchard Williams. The flag saying the stuff on the track that shouldn't be for the driver to the race is going to continue. Whoa. This is all about, this is classic British car now as Tyler Harris falls down the order who's got the skill to keep it on the island as the rain starts to fall Brandon Klein Nagelvoort has set the fastest lap of the race and they've dropped over a second already off their slick of their dry weather pace now uh, Gilbert, you've got, you've got a Scotsman and a Welshman leading if anybody knows how to drive in the rain it's the Scots and, and the, the Welsh. Welsh there we are um, <laughs> As uh, here comes oh, Higgins. Higgins, there they are together, side by side, and back at uh, such the cart control is phenomenal uh, from these drivers because yes, they don't know how much how much less grip the corner they're coming up to is going to have compared to the previous time, and yet they still charge in like a bull in a china shop. Well, we were talking yesterday about how much Mojo tyre rubber has been put down on the circuit right now. There's two things in my mind right now, Henry, that are key. One, you've got to keep uh, tyre temperature yes. in these conditions. But right now, as oh, off is Benjamin Southgate. The 73's gone as well as that. Kean Geraghty again. Yes. And that's just who I was going to talk about. Kean Geraghty, who's already been off once, will have lost some tyre temperature. The he's going to be really struggling, and he's definitely struggling now as they're squirming through the crook, up through Fine Lady. Here down the inside is Bishop on Pritchard Fantastic. Williams and now on Gilbert. Gilbert's sliding, Gilbert's lost tire temperature. Oh, and off, they're off. off, off goes Gilbert. Off goes Pritchard Williams. There was, I think, another one of the DHRs involved there as well. Another plus five second penalties come in. This time it's Tyler Harris. And now it's really getting tricky for them. There, wide is Harris again. This is all front end grip. They've got to keep the tire temperature up. Change for the lead. Change for the lead. Macaulay Bishop, the junior champion from 12 months ago, is a wizard round here at Wilton Mill and has overtaken his senior teammates. Somebody needs to remind Macaulay Bishop that it's raining because he hasn't got the memo. He is now clearing off. There's Harris getting sideways behind the number 49 of Angus Scrivener. Lorenzo Cordal in that number 20 cart, the zip entry. Oh. And that, again, that's Harris understeering uh, through the corner. Scrivener on the outside. Here comes Ewan Charman on the Birrell for the Racing Perfection team. Now, he that, that cart should be good in the wet. Gilbert giving him the hurry up. Uh, Bishop leads by over a second. There's that famous quote from John Wire at the Boat 1000, uh, the, the sports car race at Brands Hatch where Pedro Rodriguez was driving one of the Gulf Porsche 917s and he was lapping quicker on slick tires than some of the drivers are driving on wet. On and wet. Uh, someone put there, he goes, does somebody want to remind Pedro that it's raining? It's the same for Bishop now because he's a second at the road. Morgan Porter from 18th on the grid. He's up into third. Tristan Rennie is there in fourth place. Cordal is fifth. Then it's Nagelbort sixth. Uh, Pritchard Williams, Harris, Charman and Gilbert, your top ten. Well, now, lap times. They were doing 46s. They're now doing 50s. Yeah, they, they, well, they, they were doing 52. So I think if the rain has started to reduce, the tyres are coming back to the drivers. What a drive from Morgan Porter was just outside the top 34 in the intermediate classification at the end of uh, the races yesterday. Is one of the DHRs is having a moment there, running deep. Was it Brandon Klein Nagelfort? Once again, the entry to the boots yeah. so tricky 
We, uh, it's a mystery. We don't know what it is. It, well, it's always that corner. If you've heard, oh, it's off. Off, there's Rennie. Tristan Rennie From off through, uh, through oblivion. And he's going to lose all positions now. Goes back behind his Kraft Motorsport teammate, uh, Lewis Gilbert, in his proper survival mode out there. Yeah, there's Pritchard Williams now up into fifth position, back into fifth position. Gilbert was tenth. And now he, uh, oh, there's two more off. And uh, that is, I couldn't quite see the numbers. It, I think it's one Luke of them was uh, Luke Bates and the other one, it was a straw, it was Romari Ramari and Ubi. Ubi. Yeah, Ramari and Ubi. Under investigation as well, the number 71 of Christoph Sala. 60 seconds to go on the clock. Still Macaulay Bishop leading this one, but Matthew Higgins is fighting back. 0.6 of a second is now the gap. It's a DHR 1-2 at the moment, followed in by Morgan Porter. The 15 places gained for Morgan Porter right now, showing that CS55 chassis. The new one as part of the OTK family. My goodness me, Lewis Gilbert pushing the track limits and uh, to the max there. Squirreling around, coming down the hill towards Ashby Corner. He's quite clearly got the performance back. He's going to try and find a way past Lorenzo Cordell now for fifth place. Teddy yep. Pritchard Williams, who we saw off earlier in this race, has found his way back up to fourth. There's going to be two more laps here at a damp, slippery Wilton Mill in the first super heat of the afternoon for senior Rotax. What is the oh, goal? Oh, going is Pritchard again. Williams. Pritch can he keep it on the wall? Can he keep it pointing yes, forward? He can. Just. Well, that is at least something, but he's going to lose around 10, 15 positions. That's a close moment between Harris and Gilbert through Christmas corner. Another one of the uh, the Tony Carts is coming in now as well down the hill. This is chaos here at Wilton Mill. Off goes the Charman. number 42 of Charman in the Birrell Art. Gets it back on circuit. New and Charman continues to have no luck at all, it would seem, in 2024. And still we've got another lap of this to go. Time is now up. The leader is coming round, I think, to the final quarter in a few moments. Time, in fact, has gone over the line. And Morgan Porter is now 1.4 oh. seconds off. Something has happened to Higgins. He's still there in third, but he's dropped two and a half seconds off the back of his teammates. Yes, and again, Bishop, oh, Bishop running wide of a Christmas corner. Is that going to give Porter a chance? Now they've got a tiptoe. Rain is increasing oh. this ball. Harris is off. The number 93. Klein Nagelbord is off. And this is going to be the real danger zone. Coming down the hill off Camber into Ashby's. There goes Rennie running wide. Perilli in the number 40 cut. He's up in the top 10. But of course, the second bunch of drivers are already on the grid. Have they had time? Have they been given time? There's Lorenzo Cordal struggling and making a move. That looked like Jack Collins picking up a whole heap of places. This could really shuffle the order and who makes it and who doesn't make it because you've got a bunch of drivers crossing the line now. Let's look at this. You've got Porter, Higgins, Cordell. Great day for recovery for Cordell. That could get him into the top 34. Gilbert, Jack Collins in sixth. Jamie Perilli in eighth. William Pemble in tenth. They could have just raced their way in. Two. They will have raced their way in with those results. What a frankly bonkers Super Heat A. And Macaulay Bishop is the winner of it. By one second, he kept his head. He kept it on the road and takes race victory. The junior O-plate winner from last year marches into the senior final. Morgan Porter needed a result in that one and got one up from 18th on the grid. Takes P2. Matthew Higgins squirrels home to third place. Good points for last year's runner-up in uh, senior Otax in the British Kart Championships. Oh. Cordell and Gilbert complete the top five. Collins, Rennie, Pirelli, uh, Scrivener and Pemble all in the top ten. Liam Hartley, great drive as well, uh, up to 11th. Teddy Pritchard Williams was up, was down, was up, was down again, and uh, finishes P12. We'll see though, yep. seem though, through into the final. And look Ewan at Charman, Kaczmarczyk, and Steele. What a drive as well for Willoughby Steele, up yep. 30 places to the top 15. Willoughby Steele, a former O Plate champion himself in junior TKM last year. Uh, and looking at, uh, you know, oh, 
Brandon Kleinagelbort, 23rd. Tyler Harris, 24th. Both running in the top five. Both falling foul of the conditions. And, uh, yeah, there's uh, one of those races where it was uh, uh, a, a, a dramatic race from start to finish. Now, the rules are the... Uh, the, rule, the rules are, you know, obviously the grid gate closes at a specific time. Once you're on the grid, you cannot change tyres. Of course, if you miss the grid gate, then you cannot race. And we had a couple of drivers earlier on who missed the grid gates. And there are officials, there's a digital clock. So the clock, when the clock strikes zero, if it's one second to go, you can, you're in. If it strikes zero, you are out. Oh, there's Teddy Pritchard Williams and uh, there's the number, there's... The number 44 cart going through. And uh, there's the Precision Racing. And, of course, Precision Racing coming back over to the Rotax classes. They're also a TKM team. Uh, but we have got drama aplenty. Uh, one race to go before the lunch break, Andrew. Um, and I'm going to duck outside very quickly to see who is on slicks or wets. Indeed. Uh, so Henry's going to go out and do that uh, very inquisitive piece of karting journalism and uh, of fact finding that he is uh, he's a world leader at. Uh, and as he says, one more race to go this afternoon. And well, if you thought that was exciting uh, from Superheat A, uh, <laughs> this could be even better in Superheat B. Uh, we'll have that in a few moments, though. Let's head down to Park Ferme and Nicole Sutherland. Over here with Macaulay Bishop, race winner. Macaulay, you started seventh, uh, race winner. How was it for you? Uh, quite a tricky race, I'm not going to lie. Um, yeah, the rain come halfway through the race, and um, yeah, I was just leaning when it was wet. Obviously, first one going around the track, so I don't know how fast it's going to the corners. Nearly went off the last, on the last going up to Chris's, but I'm um, lucky to keep the track. We also saw you quite quickly on uh, one of the go from third straight. How was that? Well, the first one, I sort of got forced into it. I got a little push from behind and, um, yeah, just sort of sent it for the move. And then um, the next one just went on the inside, tried a different line to go on first and just made it stick. That's great. Looking forward to seeing what you'll do in the final, Macaulay. And we'll throw back up to Andrew in the comms box. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I can confirm that they're all on slicks. Excellent. Half of the ones are on wets. No, they're all <laughs> they're all on <laughs> slick tyres. <laughs> uh, that's probably a grid gate closing issue. And again, outside it is spitting. Uh, it's spitting, but um, it, you know it's not full wet. It's no. that horrible greasy situation. What you're going to see now is that I mean, let's look back at the grid. We're going to see the grid, uh, you know, very shortly. Uh, but this is the last of the superheats. Superheat B for CD Rotax, a race that will decide the grid order for the final later on today. Kai Hunter starts on pole position. Caden McQueen alongside on the front row. Jack Lilly and Joshua Gray in row two. Guy Cunnington and Ben Folland on row number three. Row four, Spencer Braum and Neo Clark. Reg Hayward and Lucas Ellingham round out your top ten with Alex Moody and Alexander Cole on the sixth row. Row seven, Gustav Uzakovs and Archie Buttle, Deacon Russell and Ethan Lingo from row eight. Alex Duncan and Ethan Martin start on row number nine. Uh, Lucas Schlegel from Austria and Sam Baker round out your top 20. Gabe Fairbrother back for the mini challenge and Sam Longley on row 11. Jukas Prevalonis and Ollie Goodyear on the 12th row. Row 13, John Brown and Caitlin Seabrook, Arthur Thacker, uh, uh, Arthur Thacker and uh, Les Taylor on row 14. Joshua Rudd completes the 29 runners in this one. All on slick tyres. They've had one short formation lap to get some and level of temperature gonna and they're going to get another one. That's a sensible call. So, gives me a chance. Think back. What's the most live, what's the most viewed video in Alpha Live history? It's the video of Wilton Mill yes. with Catherine, Catherine White winning. Yes. And she was the only driver on wet tyres and everyone else on slicks. Slicks. Do you know who was second in that race? Ten seconds in front of everybody else on slick tyres. Uh, voice in my head is going to have a guess. I was say and the Kaden voice McQueen in my head is correct. It was Caden McQueen, yes. who knows this, very, knows this circuit very, very well indeed. 
Now, the other thing that I would surmise is that the CRGs in this race, the CRG is also very good in the wet. Spencer Braun knows his place very well. There he is. Uh, Ethan Ling, who uh, one of the privateers in the number 76 cart. Uh, he's on the cusp. There is Ethan. Uh, he'll be quite good there. And Ollie Goodyear, who needs a good... I mean, well, when you're named after a tire manufacturer, you better be good in the wet. <laughs> Indeed. Oh. Uh, so, yeah, there, there we go. And, of course, Kai Hunter on pole position. You know, he, he's good in every condition. And he's from a part of the world where it rains a lot. Don't be talking about the people's Republic of Time and we are like that. My word. You'll, Ten be minutes. Plus, I'll never be allowed back to Warden Law again. Oh, dear me. I apologise to everybody watching for the people's Republic of Time and we are. Ten minutes. Away we go. Last super heat of the afternoon. Good start for Kai Hunter. This is going to be interesting through the first couple of corners because there's going to be zero grip at tippy -toe, all. Tippy -toe, are they tippy -toe. all going to make it through? Yes, yes, they are. Kai Hunter has got a good lead early on. Straight into second place. There is Caden McQueen. Everybody now has a second scrabble for grip through Christmas corner. Oh. Very good driving from all the seniors. Remember, they've not had the opportunity the previous heat out of getting that temperature into the Mojo rubber for the first few laps before the rain arrived. They've just got to do it from stone cold used tyres as well. There's a good move from the 37 of Reg Hayward. Classic Reg Hayward already up to third place. Now having a fight there with Jensen Graham. Is that not yet? Oh, Graham ran back around the outside on the exit. Joshua of Graham. I get, uh, sorry, I get that Joshua wrong Graham, all the time. All the time. Uh, I get it wrong all the time. Um, and one thing, so unfortunately, we haven't got Les Taylor out there, the craft boys, we haven't got Caitlin Seabrook out there. John Brown is also not out there. John Brown had a flip in warm up this morning, uh, and obviously hasn't been cleared. He was okay, he walked into the ambulance, but he hasn't been cleared to race. Um, Caden McQueen leading by three tenths of a second, Joshua Graham in third, then it's Reg Hayward. Guy Cunnington in fifth, then Jack Lilly, Gustav Busakov's Lucas Ellingham. He knows his place very well, does Lucas Ellingham and the whole Jack Dex racing team. Uh, looking back there, where are... Uh, OK, so Ethan Ling and Spencer Braum on two of the three CRGs. They're up to 12th and 13th. Uh, and uh, Luke, uh, Lucas Schlegel, welcome to, Luke, uh, to the UK, Luca. Uh, they're in 19th position, just behind the third of the CRGs, Ollie Goodyear. Okay. And Kai Hunter has just taken the race lead. So this is the way, you know, you, you besmirch the People's Republic of Tide and Weir, and there, one of their finest goes and takes the lead. I must say, I'm from Sheffield, so it rains even more. Oh, right, oh, there, we, there we go, there we go. Uh, well, that not only does uh, give Hunter back the lead in this race, it also gives him the lead in the intermediate classification, the final intermediate classification. So if the result was to stand as thus, Hunter would have pole position for the final later today. McQueen alongside on the front row. Gilbert and Higgins row would be row two. Bishop, Graham, Lily, Cunnington, the rest of the top eight. Change for the lead again. Caden McQueen getting the inside line to work there. Going through, and it's a KR Sport 1-2, but not anymore, because through comes Kai Hunter. Both of the KR Sports just went a little bit too deep into Wilkins. Open the door for the three-time senior O-plate winner, and he retakes the lead of this superheat. And I, you know, Caden McQueen, uh, leading, but look at the, um, coming through the pack now. They're side by side. Number 76, Ethan Ling. That go-kart is four years old. Old. That go kart is older than COVID. That's how old it is. Ethan is driving a stormer. Him and his dad, Steve, they were part of the paddock show last night. They were one of the true privateers. And uh, yeah, this is one of their chances. They said, quite say, look, you know, we know we, we're not going to compete against the big guys, you know, race after race. But this is the type of race. It's Rain, the great leveller in racing. And this is the chance to shine. Cunnington has the lead. McQueen getting edged wide. Lap times with 54, 55 seconds. That's what? Two, five. three seconds slower than the worst pace we had in the in the previous race. Just showing yeah. uh, how tricky these conditions are. Ooh, it was a bit of a wide moment there for Lucas Ellingham. Won many a club championship around this yep. place. We'll and have had plenty of experience of these conditions. Top five uh, in the O-plate last yeah, year? Yeah, it was second last year. Second in, last in year, in that's the, the one, yes. Last year. 
Uh, and into the second half of this one. But the trouble is, he's, he's right in the middle of a battle pack at the moment with uh, oh, Hayward and Butler ahead. There's Ethan Link trying a bit of a different line. Can that one work? I think he needs a bit more moisture on the track for that wide yeah, that, that's line a very, to then yeah. get the straight run up the hill to work. Oh, as Buttle and Ellingham have a bit of an excursion there uh, through Christmas Corner. Managed to get it back on circuit. This is all around fifth place. Down the inside, Reg Hayward goes now. In fact, I think it's for fourth place, is it not? Deacon Russell. Hello, Deacon Russell. Up six places so far in this one for MLC and uh, is properly on the move out there. And uh, I was going <laughs> to... Well, um, we're looking at the, this middle pack. Look how close everyone is. Last time round, we had seven seconds covering the top 22. Fantastic. Now, Ethan's mum, Trisha, she's not here watching because she's looking after the cat. Trish, just kick a hole in the back door, tell Kitty it's a cat flap and get up to Wilton Mill because uh, your boy's doing a fantastic job. Into the top 10 now is uh, is the Welsh privateer. Warning flag for the number 99 of Lucas Ellingham. Back at the front of the order, Cunnington. And, oh, Hunter down the Boy. inside of the... the, 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 the uh, <laughs> that shocked In me, that one. You don't Inkermans. often see yes. a move on the kick before Inkermans. He nearly made it work. McQueen's all over the back of both of them once again. <laughs> Here comes Lucas Ellingham. Here comes the... Uh, the expert round this place, Cunnington back to the front of the order ahead of Hunter. Still over four minutes of this one to go. Jack Lilly's going to get involved as well there in the number 33. Can anyone just, just is, is there any popcorn here? I just want to sit down. It's like watching an abs, this is absolutely excellent racing. The skill level is superb. Look how close they are. They're driving to the conditions. They are driving to the conditions. This is why British carters succeed on a global level so often. You've got Cunnington, Hunter, Ellingham, and there's Ethan Ling now into eighth place. And he's got the, his fellow CRG driver, Spencer Braum, behind him and alongside him. And there's Deacon Russell passing Archie Buttle. This could be, well, the dragon from Cardiff in Wales, Ethan Ling, could be on. You know, this is... Oh, oh Ellingham. and Ellingham's off. The local experts off. That's how treacherous it is. There are very few drivers, apart from McQueen and Ellingham, that have done more laps round here in these type of conditions, and it's catching even the very best out. Three and a quarter minutes to go. Guy Cunnington still leads this race. Kai Hunter there in second place. McQueen, Lily, Russell, Lee. Ethan Ling's up to sixth place now. What a drive from the Welshman. You can see him just on in the middle of shot there, approaching Deacon Russell. How do they tackle this? He's squirreling around once again, but he's getting that tyre temperature in. He's attacking these corners. Ethan Ling is on a charge. That go-kart is the oldest kart here. What does that mean? That softer. means the chassis is softer, which means he's got a little bit more flex, he's got a little bit of give, you know? And uh, he's now coming up to challenge Deacon Russell, the MLC motorsport driver. And uh, let's see, two and a half minutes to go. Now, in the intermediate classification coming today, where was Ethan Ling? Do we know he was, uh, but he, he was certainly on the cusp, if not outside, looking in. We don't wanna, I don't want to curse, I've had so many cursed the commentators, I almost don't want to talk about it, but they've got the top four coming in too. So, Guy Cunning the Racing, Kai Hunter, Kane McQueen, and Jack Lilly in fourth place. Guy Cunnington Racing, Hunter Motorsports, uh, KR Sports, uh, then Sam Pollitt Racing, then MLC Motorsport, then Steve Ling's camper van. That's your top six. Ethan Ling was P32 at the end of things oh. yesterday. He's oh. going to go up with this kind of result. Jack Lilly round the outside of Caden McQueen. Takes third place. He's the fastest driver out there at the moment. The times are coming back to the drivers. Kai Hunter all over. The second curb there, the uh, the curb on the inside left is hassling the back of Car uh, Guy Cunnington now, winner of the Kart Club meeting in Senior Rotax last week. An adjustment from Hunter. Is it going to go down the inside? It's very close between the two of them. Cunnington holds it round the outside, puts Hunter into the path of Jack Lilly now. Jack Lilly's going to have a go. No, he's going to hold there in second place. McQueen still there in fourth. What's oh, the pace like for it's getting quicker. Russell and Ling? They're it's... still charging along in fifth and sixth. But the track is drying out. 
That's not necessarily good news for Ethan Ling because there he's now going back with that older cart. And this is where Ethan's got to be careful. The track's drying out. All the newer machinery is now getting quicker. So Ethan Ling has got to try and now use his head because he's down to 10th. And a 10th place should get him, it will, will get him into the final. 45 seconds to go. This is now the faster drivers, Ethan. They're going to be coming back at you. There he is, second in this group now. He just can't lose his cool, okay? Uh, you know, that, that car is half the age of some of our, <laughs> some so of our micro drivers. Yes, but, you know, there's the Thule Motorsport car of number 22, uh, Neil Clark. Top five in the British Championship, four member member of Team UK. You know, it's now there. So, Gabe Fairbrother, great driver, Gabe Fairbrother in eighth. But we're looking back now. Will, I think Guy Cunnington's going to cross the line uh, before. Uh, no, the clock strikes Three, zero. Two, one. No, he's going to no, get across. Oh, no, no, yeah. no. So, one and a half oh, seconds. So, two more laps now for Ethan Ling to hold on to a place in the top 10 and then a place on the grid for the final. We talk about the privateers, they're the backbone of our sport. You're going to see Ethan and his dad in the paddock show and, you know, oh, you could, but there's the difference between, you know, the Thule guys, can you go, they, Neil Clark can just go round the outside, that chassis, that with the, the, those, a lot of these carts there, they're two, three races old. Some of the carts, they're changing frames every five or six races. Ethan Ling has probably done 50, 60 races on that number 76 cart. It's the worst place to be right now if you're Ethan Ling because you've got everybody around you battling for position, battling for their spots through in the final. He just wants to make it into that final. He's doing so right now. He just needs to keep it calm. We're on to the final lap then. Cunnington leads by 0.3 of a second from Hunter Lilly there in third. McQueen fourth, Russell in fifth. That's looking fairly steady right now. Down the hill once again. The grip coming to the drivers. That's the number 28 of Neo Clark trying to go around the outside. Oh, Ethan Ling's off and onto the, onto oh. the dirt there. Can he get it back on circuit? He can, but he's lost a number of positions there. That was the risk. That was the worry that other drivers fighting around the Welshman would cause something to uh, to cause him to fall down the order. As he has started he raining again in the final corner. Corner here for Guy Cunnington. Is he going to hold on to victory? Yes, he is. Kai Hunter P2. That is enough to be on pole position for the final later on this afternoon. Jack Lilly P3. Caden McQueen P4. Deacon Russell completes the top five. Fallen Fairbrother Bottle. Baker and Uzakovs all inside the top ten. Where did Ethan Link fall 23rd. to 23rd? I think that he came within half a lap. He came within oh. half a lap. I tell you what, and I don't do this very often, and I, I, and I, you know, there are 220 drivers here, all of whom spend a lot, you know, they spend what they can. You know, some sacrifice an awful lot to go racing. If anyone wants to put a, if anyone wants to think, oh, do you know what, as a club level racer, there's, there's a driver that could use a bit of sponsorship. There's your boy. That shows what he can do when the, the playing field is even. Um, unfortunately, his mum's just kicked over the back door, probably for no reason, because I don't think he's Somebody made the knows. final. We'll have to see. Well, I'm glad we had a nice calm morning, Andrew. Oh, yeah. very calm. No. Very calm indeed. Yes. Drivers coming into Park Ferme then, all looking good on uh, on front fairing check at the moment. Cunnington, 0.36. Where does that put guy on the FIC? Puts him to fourth. So moves him ahead of Macaulay Bishop. So as it stands, should stress again, provisional result. Kai Hunter would have pole position for the final virtue of having scored uh, six points. Lewis Gilbert alongside on the front row, so a repeat of what we saw in the final heat yesterday. Uh, Gilbert on 10. Matthew Higgins third on the grid with 10. Guy Cunnington, as we say, up to fourth place on 11. Macaulay Bishop and Caden McQueen will go at it from row three, both on 13. Jack Lilly uh, and Ben Folland on row four. Uh, of course, pending confirmation of the results from those super heats. I think if you get to Lucas Elling, you're going to be quite disappointed with that result. That uh, was a great opportunity for him. Knows this circuit so well. But that's racing sometimes. It doesn't always go your way. Uh, Reg Hayward, I think a similar story for Reg. Had a great start. Was 
Uh, up there to third place, where did Reg Haywood come in? 19. Yeah, he 19. was up. He, he was up there. We didn't see it in, among, in the midst all the chaos. And now there, there we go. There's the. You can see the the the, the Tom Price style crash. But there's the. Oh, and he's got a nose cone as well. That even you know. It may not happen this year, but he certainly you know that they will know that uh, you know Ethan Ling was here. And then we talked about it. We'll talk a little bit more about you know. Well, Ethan will talk a little bit more in, in the in the paddock show as well. There's a. Oh, that's a. That's a graphics kit. That's that that go kart has had a tough race. <laughs> you know, you know that uh, that graphics they had a tough race. The graphics is coming up, but Nicole Sutherland is down in the pits with Guy Cunnington. So we're with Guy Cunnington, senior Rotax Superheat B winner. Guy started drizzling uh, earlier on just before your heat and track conditions looked difficult. Can you talk us through about what it was like to, to lead on a track like that? Yeah, I was. The, I started fifth, so I was behind on the first few laps. Um, so it's a lot easier when you're behind because you can see the cart in front and see where they're see where they're sliding. But as soon as you take the lead, it starts drying up. You don't know if you need to start going back onto the dry line where the grip is. Um, when you're the first cart that comes to the wet, you're it's really sketchy. But I think we've done a really good job. Um, it's, it was really good to race like Kai because he was really respectful with the like with the conditions. Really, he could have stuck his nose in and pushed me wide very very easily. But he was really respectful, so it was a really good race. This weekend also you're uh, competing for your own team, Guy Cunnington Racing. How do you find juggling being in the car as well as looking after your drivers? Uh, it's definitely a challenge. Uh, it definitely takes a little bit away from my racing, just trying to sort of put the effort into everyone, which is obviously what I'm here to do as well as, uh, as, well as compete myself. But I'm still somewhat competitive, so I'll keep going for the meantime. Great to hear from you, Guy. Good luck for the final. I'm just going to go and try and catch up with Jack Lilly. Jack. Mr. Consistency this weekend, you've not dropped out of the top five. Can you tell us a little bit about how you found the race and how you're getting on? Yeah, we're doing good. Like We've had consistent um, heat all over, so um, it's just all about staying up there for the final and then it's all to play for, for the O plate. And that race, it was just, um, it was really weird. It dried up like halfway through the race and then it started raining again. So um, it was hard to like adjust to the conditions, but it was just keeping it on the island and trying to get the track position uh, for the final, so, yeah. And your mindset going into the final, what are you thinking? Got any game plan or are you just going to open mind? Uh, I'm just going to do what I've just been doing like for the whole, for the, for the whole weekend, just keep my mind set on, on the win and just see, if, um, see how it plays out. Well, best of luck to you, Jack. We'll catch up with you later. So we are breaking up now for a short break for the racing. We'll head up to the comms box who will introduce you into the rest of the commentary live. Thank you very much, Nicole. Yes, thank and, you, Nicole. Uh, yeah, getting ready for the lunch break, but don't go anywhere. No. We've got plenty to come up, haven't absolutely we? Absolutely not. Yes, we have got lots coming up. Firstly, we're going to hear from some of our very loyal sponsorship partners. Then we're going to see a feature on the new corner at Wilton Mill. And then, ladies and gentlemen, drum roll, please. We are going to have the premiere of last night's paddock show. We'll get the red carpet out. I'll get me dressed. Enjoy that. See you for the finals later on. Don't go away. Mill Kart Circuit just outside Daventry in Northamptonshire. It's been a great servant to British karting over the years. Voted for the 2023 event of the year as part of the British Kart Championships. You can do all parts of the outdoor karting pathway at this circuit. 
is a circuit that's had improvements over the years, including the still relatively new clubhouse, which gives drivers and teams and mechanics the best opportunity to view the racing in comfort. But the changes in 2024 have been focusing on safety. The old pit bend, that long, fast right-hander, has been replaced by a brand new chicane with the aid of making the drivers be safer through the final corner while still producing the opportunity to race hard against one another. We're here this weekend at the British Karting Championships for the O-Plate. It's the second weekend we've seen this new chicane in action after last weekend's Wilton Mill Kart Club. Let's catch up with some of the drivers, parents and officials around the paddock to see what they think of this new corner. Here with Nigel Edwards, uh, race director for the Vera Tools British Kart Championships. Nigel, great to see you again here at, uh, at Wilton Mill. New last corner, what, what are your thoughts wow. on it? Yeah, at the end of the day, we all know that something had to be done. You know, it wasn't, uh, wasn't the greatest corner in the world. Um, so I think from a safety aspect, it had to be done. That's the first thing. I think what's been done, I'm quite cool with it. I think it, it's a good effort. It's always easy for people to criticise afterwards, should have done this, should have done that. But I'm sure there was quite a bit of uh, work went into it beforehand. It's created a totally different last section of corners, obviously in the last corner itself. You've still got the boot to overtake in, you've still got the inside. Yes, you've got to be a little bit careful with those curbs because, you know, they are you know what they are. But then again, you should use track limits, so you shouldn't be going off the track. So, uh, yeah, I think, I think overall a pretty good, uh, pretty good answer. Here in the Zip Factory team tent with Simon, Zach Starbucks dad. Uh, Simon, from your perspective, new final corner as a pair, and safety improved, what do you think of it? I personally think it's real good. I think it's a really, it's so much better from a parent's point of view. I've seen so many carts come round there to a breast and accidents and and now it's, well that's gone, you know? And knowing that Zach's only going to come around there potentially on his own. <laughs> he can only take himself out rather than other people, you know what I mean? And it, it does seem a lot a lot safer. The last corner put in as a big safety feature. What do you think it's like to race on? Are you enjoying it? Uh, yeah, it, it honestly depends of what ratio gearing you have. Because if you obviously have big sprocket on, then you're, you're amazing down there, but not great down the straight. So I think it's a, it makes you um, think about it in a bit more strategic way. So putting a different... Um, cog on the back but I think for a corner to drive it's not too bad I think it does a job it, it's just another challenge I think Wilton needed to do it because of safety so I, I have nothing against it changes of the last corner here at Wilton Mill the tarmac still remains from the old circuit which used to be the fast right hander but this chicane is now in place where the drivers come out of the toe of the boot and then hang right heading into this new chicane a tight corner a difficult corner for the drivers to master they've not got just this corner to think about but the next one the new pit bend still a right hander but tighter than it was before the curb that used to be there has been lowered so it does allow the drivers to run upon it, but they've got to get their exit right so they get a lot of speed down the pit straight towards oblivion now to get a good lap time here at Wilton Mill. It's 2024, we're at Wilton Mill, it's the Rotax Action Honda O plate, we're back. It's the Paddock Show with me and Andrew Mather. Andrew, 220 drivers, bit of mud, mm -hmm. but the weather's been great and the racing has been even better. What more could you want from an Easter weekend? An Easter egg. An with... Easter egg, That's I've got some, the big oh. ones at home. Um, but yes, no, Paddock Show, Saturday night. It's a bit chilly, but it's been dry. That's well, been a... see, I was sensible. It's not often you hear me say that. <laughs> I got the long sleeves, the gelée. Now, all the top drivers are here, the top drivers, the top teams, but if you look around the, the vista here at 
Wilton Mill. It's a bit muddy, but we're in with the privateers, the heart and soul of karting, the lifeblood of karting, the, the, the drivers, the, the families that travel up and down the country week after week after week with a van, a generator, an easy up awning, and a really scruffy CRG cap. Let's speak to one of our privateers, Ethan Ling, come this way. Now, Ethan is obviously an excellent driver because he started his career at Landau International, International Raceway, Sorry. Global Home of Champions, World Capital of Motorsport. How are you, Ethan? Yeah, I'm all right. Yeah, but there we go. And moving on. No. <laughs> um, so you've got your dad, Steve, there, mechanic Steve. Uh, you're on one of three CRGs uh, in the entire field. What's it like? Okay, you, you, you race at PFI, you've raced at PFI club events, you've raced here. What's it like being a privateer against all the big teams down there? I suppose it's more of the. What's the word I'm looking for? Challenge? Satisfac satisfaction yeah. of beating the bigger teams when you can, obviously. Um, you know, turn up in a, like you said, in a van. My dad is my mechanic. Uh, Sorry. <laughs> I know. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then you got all the big teams here with all their computers. You know, they have got driver coaches, nutrition coaches. Ev ev you name it, they got it now. And we turn up in a van with a, with a cart. With a cart was with a cart that's actually four years old now. And wow. We can still sort of keep up to them. Thirteenth. I think Andrew in in one of heats was that right? You were thirteenth. It would second? it would have been thirteenth if I didn't get a nose cone penalty because of because of brake checking and defending. Shows he's trying. Shows he's trying. Yeah. Um, and you know, there is a mechanic. That is that is Steve Steve uh, Ethan's dad. You know, what's what's life like as a, a privateer? dad and mechanic when you're putting the cart down and obviously Ethan's got expectations but you've learned over the time to temper those expectations have you you have to be realistic what's yeah. it like um we've come to this time now and realized that we're we're never going to beat the top top teams we haven't got the obviously the equipment anything like that but as Ethan says it's nice just to come here put it down and put us in the mix yeah. you know and then to people it's nice to have teams look at you and go oh do you know what well, how are they up there when we haven't got the funding we haven't got the money to be in a big team but to be honest I enjoy it as being a privateer it's I think it's more fun you get more satisfaction out of it um, you know yes we could spend more money if we wanted to borrow more money and things like that but why why we're doing it the cat is supposed to be fun um, you know, we're not, there's no expectation to go to Formula One or anything like that. Um, the dream is just this is fun. It, uh, Ethan has Asp Aspergers, which sort of doesn't hinder him, but it, this is this puts yeah. him in an equal opportunity with other people out there. And you can put it on the cart, and he's like everyone else, and he's some better than other people at some of it. So that's that's why that we do it. You raise a really good point, and I know we got a lot of ground to cover. But it is very important. I've known this young man since he first ever got into a cart at Landau. And he is right, you know, you've, you, you've got Asperger's. You are one of the best ambassadors for anybody on the spectrum, you know, for how to, you know, get through life, how to have a better understanding and cope with life better through karting. How has it helped you? Um. Because because five years ago, you would have seen the camera and gone that way. Ten years ago, you would have gone that way. But yet here you are. You know, it's I'm 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 personally I'm really proud of of everything you've done and achieved. And there are a lot of other drivers out there, who, you know, racing with autism. You know, it's a big thing. And, and I got to say, this man here is an inspiration to a lot of people. It's like my dad said. Really, it's just. I share the same interests as some other people out there. Obviously, we want we want to win. We want we like driving yeah. carts that are literally millimeters to the floor. We like that. Yeah. We like that sort of aspect. And obviously, yeah. in that sense, I don't really feel any different. No. In that sense, um, yeah. yeah. It's pretty Happy much, days. Yeah. Right. Best of luck. We got Thank plenty you. of other drivers to speak to. Ethan Ling, number seventy six, CRG, Sydney Rotax. If you're looking for an underdog to cheer for, here's your man. Okay, absolutely. Andrew, sorry, I've hijacked. No, 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 I, no, it's I, very I, great to hear this from, way, uh, there's more privateers. Thank you, Steve, thank you, Ethan. Uh, as, as you say, Henry, racing for many years, a four-year yep. chassis as well. That just yeah. shows again, you know, it, the, money the, does talk in the sports yeah, of time, it does, but it, it does. doesn't necessarily mean 
cameraman to come out is going and compete. to avoid the mud. Oh, well done, well done. Professionally done. If it was James still doing the camera, I was letting him walk through the mud. Yeah. Of course. <laughs> but no, it's, it's that thing of, of you can come in and compete, and if you've yes. got the talent, which Ethan quite clearly has, you know, we've both watched him race for many a year. Absolutely. We'll go um, this way, because we'll it's this way. There's a cart that but way. We're, we're, out in the along. we're out, we're out in, the, in, the, in the back end of the paddock, because, yeah, this event, tomorrow, the likelihood is, now you did a paddock show last night. Yes. The, 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 the vast likelihood of the end result of this weekend is the winners are gonna come from that part of the paddock. Yeah. However, the, the love for the sport, it's down there, but it's up here as well. Um, you know, we, we've got, and, and, and there's people, not everyone's rushing off to the hotels. I mean, it's too cold for a barbecue. There's a driver running away there. But, you know, Quite you've literally. got the campers, you've got, you know, the camaraderie yeah it, it, th this is this is what the sport is all about now it's getting late let's have a little walk down to the lm motorsport race team mm. we'll have a little wander down there but again y you know this is uh, you know this goes back to when i was racing you know you had a van you had an easy up awning out the side you know you had a bit of equipment you may do we had a little kettle and microwaves you know there we go that is, is that uh well, I'm a, I'm a, we'll, we'll hijack this person here is it jensen we'll get him walker this get him off his phone oh, right nice. with jensen walker with the with the, cu with the cutting edge racing team it's good to see that name do you back. like it well, <laughs> do you like it yeah, we were talking about the life as a privateer. I mean, right, okay. this this is this is home, and the workshop. And the workshop, yes, yes. This. Does it make karting more fun doing it like this, even though it's a cha more of a challenge? To be fair, I do prefer to be in an all-in and with a team, but it's just the way it's worked out this week. It just hasn't been possible. But to be fair, it's it's not it's not too bad. It's yeah. not too bad. It's okay. Who's, who's doing the cooking? Uh, can you smell the sausages? Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's so if Jensen Walk was not out tomorrow, it's because the sausages weren't quite done. <laughs> ah. But I love this, I love this. This is uh, this is what it's all about. That's the dream. That's the dream. <laughs> and we're all we're living all the dream. Limit, we're yeah. all living That's the it. dream. We're all living the dream. There we go. Thank you, sir. That's all right. Thank you very much. Enjoy the sausages. I will do. <laughs> <laughs> right. Sorry, briefly got waylaid there. Eh? But again, that's uh, again. You got a little bit of graphics on your van. Mm -hmm. You know, easy up morning. You got kettle, microwave, kitchen. You know, beds in the back. Put the cart and everything. In. It's just, it's just fantastic. Now all the lights are off. The lights are off, but there are people home. Right, let's go fight, fight that driver. Let's go, go find the driver. Go, go, go. Let's introduce it here. What's your name? Which class are you racing in? Enter Max uh, Blair Smith. Blair Smith. So you're, so you're our Blair Smith, the privateer. Uh, how many hours did it take you to drive here this weekend from Scotland? I don't know. You don't know. It's that big a number you don't even know. Uh, you race really? out of Lark Hall, don't you? Yeah. Do you? Uh, how do you find Wilson Mill as, as a circuit? Is he, is he first time here? Have you raced here before? Uh, I done New KC last year. And then going in, into the to the O plate this weekend. How how did uh, how did your heats go today? Uh, my heats went well, and hopefully I can make it to the final tomorrow. And that A final, they're getting into that top 34. What would what would be a what would be a good result? What would you be happy with this weekend? Uh, top 20 or top 30. What is it like racing up uh, up, up against these <laughs> these big teams as well as, as a privateer? You, you're having a great weekend. You're clearly competitive out there. Are you enjoying how the racing is going so far this weekend? Yeah. And this circuit as well, obviously the, the changes. What do you think about that that last that last section? Is that a tight? Is that a place where you you finding some time? Is it good for you? Um, it's it's a little tricky. If you get it wrong, you, it's costing you because it's flinging you out wide. But if you get it right, it's like a second. You can find you can find a couple of tenths in it at least. Good stuff. You hoping to do uh, more racing the rest of the season? Yeah. Oh, good stuff. Hopefully, we'll uh, we'll see you again soon, Blair. Great to uh, great to hear from you there. As I say, all the way from Scotland, from Lark yes. Hall. Lark Hall. Hello, Lark Hall. From Coke Bridge. Charlie Cox. Oh, Charlie oh, Cox. That's that's That's, Blair Smith. that's, that's Coke Bridge. Blair Smith. Blair, 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 right. Blair Smith. Okay. Yeah. There's only one Charlie Cox from Coles Racing. Charlie. Uh, very quickly, sum up your day. Uh, decent overall. Uh, we've had what is it? Tenth and an fifth. So not too bad. Not too bad. Do you know where you put that? Put you for your super heat? Uh, yeah, eighth. Eight for the Subi. Very well done. For the Coles racing, more importantly, who's that? 
Uh, that's, that's Dad. Ah, because because Dad Dad was Dad was making fun of you, and then so, so, don't worry. We'll, <laughs> and who was and who's who's up? Who, 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 that's that's mechanic. Ben the mechanic. Oh, I know Ben the mechanic. Come in, Ben the mechanic. Right, we'll quickly talk. Hi, oh, Ben the mechanic. Hello. Uh, right, we're going to quickly talk about uh, how you how you somehow managed to work miracles and get this lunatic into eighth for his superheat. Well, honestly, I think he just woke up on the right side of bed. <laughs> Simply put, I think he was, you know, fast all last weekend when we were testing. Um, pretty fast yesterday, but a couple of setup issues and ironed those out, good feedback, and here we are. Bit so, of luck. So all the money that's spent in karting and all it boils down to is making sure you go to bed on time. Uh, I'm not very good at that one. <laughs> Shocking. Thank you very much. Have a good day. Right, we'll, we'll move swiftly on because they've all got dinner tape, dinners to go to. Um, a quick recap while we wait, go down to the next morning. Uh, we'll move across, we'll, we'll hang a left and then a right. Uh, a recap of the day. Any drivers that particularly impressed you? Finley Lines, I'm going to yeah. take as number one. Finley Lines, two wins by five seconds yes. over eight minutes. Yeah. So it, yes, there was a, a big fight for second, third, fourth behind, but the way that Finley was able to take charge of those races early on and go, yes. I'm driving off the front here. Yep. You can all fight for second, third and fourth, ladies Absolutely. and gentlemen, behind. I'm taking my zero points and uh, and putting myself in a very strong position before the day. I think Jacob Ashcroft as well, yes. stepping up to juniors. Well, have a uh, yeah, zip, with a good, a good amount of backing, very yes. strong uh, pedigree from previous years as well. But we talked about it in the in the broadcast, didn't we? That step now with the chassis change is bigger than ever when you go from that interclass to that junior. So, yeah, very impressed yes. from Jake. So, of course, you're now, unfortunately, we're on the wrong side. We're on the wrong side. New face, same position. Uh, from that, from, this, is, uh, we're not, this is not being cruel. From the have-nots to the haves. This is not, that's not about the drivers, but this is, this is how, this is the teams. These are the teams, workbenches, a very different uh, kettle of fish. We're in with Zip, Lorenzo, Cordal. You look absolutely thrilled to about to be interviewed is that because you're de is is lorenzo he's come you've got to come come back lorenzo oh, we've got two we've got two uh, he's not about to be interviewed. <laughs> why why is lorenzo so reluctant to be interviewed you've got the and the the, uh, the lasers out on the car which normally tells a story what's happened without swearing just a bad day please. just a, just a bad day just a bad day oh fair enough um this is what chassis is this by the way L lm it's a Landon Norris, so it's an OTK chassis, but obviously it's a, the Zip product. Um, it has it all, but, but for the, some of the other Zip drivers, it's gone quite well, hasn't it? We'll speak yeah. a couple down there. Yeah, we'll speak think, to, uh, to a couple a, of our. I think we've got a couple of our Micro Maxes over here. I think we've had our first. I, that was our first complete refusal to be on the paddock show for I the Renzo Cordell. Yeah, there we go, there we go. Right, take it away. We've Who got are? our Micro Benedict Seth Masiokas, if I remember that correctly. Uh, ben, how, how's today you gone? Um, Terribly wrong. <laughs> Terribly wrong? What happened out there? Um, so the setup wasn't really good and then I got up to like 26th. The set? 23rd. Up to, up, to, up to 25th. Henry, the, the setup apparently wasn't good enough. Who do we think? Should we ask who, uh, whose fault that was? Earl. Blame Earl. Was we'll, it Earl? We'll blame Earl. Last weekend you were very good. No, we're not going to blame Earl. Uh, it's one of those things, isn't it? Sometimes you can come to a race and not have the setup, but then an event so competitive, if you miss the setup by a little bit, you're right at the back, aren't you? Is that something that you're learning as a driver? That you'll go to different types of meetings and then the really big meetings, you just suddenly, you've got to be inch perfect from the word go. Yeah. Yeah, now, what about you? Is, is it say, any we're going to have to... We're going to introduce ourselves in here for the for the folks back home. What's your name? And what's your name? Alfie Mayor, fifteen Micromax. So Alfie, you, I think you're right. So you've had some you had decent races today coming through through the field, or is, or is it been a bit of a a bit of a mixed day? It's been a real mixed day. In qualifying, I got eleventh, the same as where I started on the grid. Uh, in the first two, which was I only hit today, my engine would start, so I, I had to I I got out on the formation lap and then. Uh, no, and then the person at the front of the grid never said to me, "I'm not allowed to regain my position." So I regained my positions. At, by the end, I've got I got like ninth, and then I got disqualified after the race. So it wasn't very well. That's that's really unfortunate. You've you've driven this circuit quite a lot before. You know, you've actually been, uh, been racing for quite a few years, haven't you? How how are you finding the Micro Max this year? Is it for, uh, is a good fun car to drive? Yeah, and with the new regs and ties, it's made the field a lot more closer than last year. 
We've got uh, another race tomorrow morning, if I'm uh, not mistaken. How are you feeling ahead of uh, ahead of that one? Uh, I'm feeling confident and hoping that I can win the next one. And you know you're going to make the final as well. Does, does that kind of make you a bit more relaxed, knowing that you're going to race all the way through to the final on Sunday? Uh, it makes me a little bit more relaxed, but at the same time, it makes me nervous because you're thinking about where you're going to finish in the final, and it makes you more and more nervous. Really good answers. Yeah, yeah. I was going to say, I, I interviewed you last weekend uh, at Glanagos, and you gave an excellent answer there. Last weekend, you were uh, dominated, the pair of you, on a full grid of Honda Cadets. This weekend, it just goes to show how you know competitive it is. But last weekend, you had Josh Cook and Jade Edwards in the awning, two British touring car drivers. Does that help? Now you've only got Earl. Is that good having those guys in the awning? Uh, I mean, it helps a little bit, although they was kind of helping LBJ Studs more than those because uh, his parents asked them to, but it still helped us quite a bit. Excellent. Good stuff. It, one, one good thing, it can only get better tomorrow. Right, it can only get better tomorrow. We'll leave the happy, smiling faces at the zip morning. Mm -hmm. Yeah, again, you just you, know, you have good days, you have bad days. It's got a bit dark, but we wanted to go to see Jax, didn't we? The new yes. Jax Project One Alliance. Alignment. Yeah, Alliance. I, I, it's, uh, it's, it's a new initiative, obviously, Jax Motorsport Project One. They've been around for a very long time. Um, uh, obviously, uh, yeah. our thoughts go around to, to Project One for... Hello to um, Maria and the family. Yeah, everyone. Yeah, we miss Gerard a lot. Um, and we'll have a look in here, but uh, yes. But this, 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 uh, this was announced earlier on this week that we've got this new partnership. Uh, hopefully, Jack is around. Is Jack, is, is Jack around? Right. Is well, we'll, we'll, ah, we'll catch Charlie Dad on the fact. No, no, no. Um, <laughs> Jack, oh, step Jack. on in if uh, if it's all right for uh, for a moment. Um, it's very much coming together. The new P1 Racing Group. Um, both teams with a, with a lot of history uh, in different categories. We'll just let Jack finish for a moment uh, and see how he's uh, how he's getting on. Jack, are we all right to uh, chat for a minute? New partnership. Tell us all about it. Um, well, obviously my background before was with Gerard back at Project One as a young kid. Shame, obviously, in passing. Great guy to the sport. Um, done a lot for us, for us kids back in the day when there was the likes of Foster Jones, Rob Browning, them kind of people, Dan Holland. Yeah, all them guys, real family community. Um, like I say, a big place lost in this paddock, Gerard. Um, Piers obviously is working super hard back at Ranch, pushing yeah. the cadet cart, the 950. Um, but the national team takes quite a lot of time and effort. We're obviously already established doing these meetings and we joint venture. Dean obviously, who run Project One, does a great job, come with us um, going forward. So yeah, it's, it's gonna be really good. So the idea is that, that the Project One side of, of the group, they'll take care of the, the club racing and then kind of give them that ladder within your group to elevate them up to the national level? Yeah, correct. So Project One Racing is now Project One Racing Group. Mm -hmm. Piers and Maria working very hard back at Ranch, like I say, pushing that along. Um, Piers is obviously going to focus on the carts and we've joined Merge together and we're going to take the drivers the national way. I want to just say one one other thing about Gerard Cox. Uh, when we used, when I used to work at Landau, uh, we had the Welsh Championships every year. Gerard would always turn up with a couple of drivers, cadet drivers, because cadet Honda was really good. We would always be having a raffle, a small club. It's gone now to raise money, and he would always come down with a crash helmet, a plain white crash helmet as a prize, and he just put hundred pounds in the thing, you know every single year for the five six years you know and the fact that uh, you know it was his service yeah uh, it's the only time a, a driver's ever been asked to put their crash helmets you know and that was uh, you know very 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 touching, very touching indeed yeah. we did a paddock show here at the end of the year we, we closed it out with gerard because mm -hmm. the, the, the the project one team the drivers all stay you know as a, a, a testament a to gerard the way he manages things and things like that and Gerard, you know Oh, it was there. We just said, you know, he said, "I'll oh, be nice, be kind." You know, loyalty goes a long way. And uh, even though Gerard's gone, you know, the loyalty of an ex-driver uh, and the family aspect of it. So, best of luck. Cheers, right. Absolutely. That, you know, you know, unfortunately, unfor hey, it's a, it's a horrible thing. You know, paddock shows supposed to be happy and joyful, but you know, 
it, we are a family, and you know, when you lose a, a member, anyway, uh, good luck, Jack. He's, he's, he's got to try and learn how to span a cart now, that's the problem. <laughs> he's only right now, it's getting dark. Ah, uh, I, I spot a little man there from Ambition Motorsport, Paul James. <laughs> Paul James, Paul James, Henry, the Welsh wizard. How are we? All right, I'm all right. I'm all right. Hello, oh, we're gonna, ah, right, this is gonna, gonna be good. We're gonna stand here now. Uh, no, 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 this is the paddock show. This is the oh, it's only the ambition team, right? <laughs> <laughs> Paul, come this way, come this way. We <laughs> Right, we're doing an interview. How are you, sir? Absolutely no swearing. gorgeous. <laughs> oh, are you? I'm, I'm, no, that's nice. Uh, how was your day? You're a, you're a Micromax driver, I think. Absolutely fantastic. Excellent, excellent. How many times did uh, uh, Paul's drivers put it in the wall? Paul who? Yeah, exactly, exactly. We'll speak to uh, Ambition Motorsport. A couple of years ago in the British Championship, Ambition were top of the tree in Honda Cadet. Took a step back, club level. Now we see the back in force this year, Paul. Yeah, we've returned. We've missed you so much, Henry. It's unreal. Like, <laughs> it's just, you're just a barrel of laughs. That's the 20 quid on your you? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, it's good to be back, to be fair. Like, we brought um, our Honda team back. Yep. Uh, that's really, obviously, come back into force with the 200 engine. Mm -hmm. um, it's been a lot fairer now from before. Um, That's a question. That, okay. It's a good question, yeah. A good question. From GX160 being, you know, the all, con you know, masses and masses of carts, brought the 200 in. Last year, the British Championship, there were that many, it's getting a bit. Is it better for the class as a whole and I think the it's competitors? it's totally better for the whole karting community. We need that, um, that feeder class for all the other classes. And you always find that better drivers come from me, Henry. And go on, from, from there. I'm from, I think from Honda, but yeah, you know, no, you are right. I mean, you know, you look at it. Uh, Josh, Josh Graham, Jensen Graham, you and Charman, to name but three in the last couple of years that have come through the Paul James Academy. Um, it's don't only, that, it's Craig, only don't so forget, Don't forget the Craigie. Don't forget Ken, and Kenzo Craigie. Yeah, okay. <laughs> the only reason they're so good is as Paul is so little, he can still fit in the Hondas to test drive them. Eye to eye, isn't it? <laughs> That's the main thing. <laughs> That's the main thing. Uh, big up the Bayford Meadow Massive as well. Right, yep. thank you, Paul. Thank you, guys. See you later. Ah, sorry about that. There we go. Paul, Paul Jane's ambition motors for everybody. And, and you're absolutely right there in terms of, of, of Honda B. We talked about it earlier on the on the broadcast, didn't we? Of the racecraft, the yes. momentum. You know, it, it's a different kind of racing that prepares the drivers very well for the future. And yeah, it's it's good to see. We'd like numbers to be. We'd love thirty a full grid of thirty four of them on the grid, wouldn't we? But but but, but, but also, but also, you know, you have got a situation where that's. Paul Jay, that's it's characters. Yeah. You know, Honda it has those characters. Project One, always, Gerard Cox, Paul Jaynes, you know, all these Hondas, Zip, you know, Earl and Roger. Now, in here, I doubt she's here, she's gone home. The only person, Adam Wooden's mechanic. I think uh. we, we, we're gonna we're gonna end this paddock show, because you've only got a couple of minutes left, haven't yeah. we? Look at this. All the KR sport drivers have gone. All the mechanics have gone. It's like a ghost town. I want to say Naomi Garcia here uh, from China, but look at this. One solitary mechanic. Now, this tells me one of two things. Number one, he's a very good mechanic, meticulous in his details, or number two, his driver smashed it up in the last heat and broke a wagon. Let's ask the man himself. Good evening, sir. Kai Clark's mechanic. Why are we here so late when everybody else in the entire awning is gone? Uh, I, well, I did choose to stay here on my own. It's not like everyone's just left me. It's more of a case of uh, I just probably had a little bit more work to do than anyone else. Not for anyone else's fault, Just I just wanted to do a few things that I didn't really need to do, but I'm just here. I only live close, so I don't really mind staying here. I mean, oh, it's, it's an important question. Okay, so you see the, the action on the track. You, we do the paddock show, and yeah, we're laughing and we're joking around and stuff like that. We, we make, I, I make fun of the car to mechanics. When you look at this guy, quite rightly so. Um, no, but, <laughs> <laughs> but the reality is, Andrew, they work incredibly hard. Yes. And even though, so Kai Clark, well, he had a penalty in his last race. Where, how, did you, how did Kai finish today? Um, yeah, he was good. Those couple of penalties didn't help, but it's just the experience. He's just moved up from Minimax. So uh, into the into the juniors, he's doing really well with the speed, like the control of the cart and things. He's really good with all that. Just uh, just the experience with the racecraft more than anything, I'd say. But he's he's definitely getting there. He's good. Now, without without giving away any secrets, you said there was a few things that you didn't have to do that you choose to. Do. What are what, 
as, as a general thing. So what needs to be done to the cart tonight? The cart came back in one piece from the last race. Yeah. What needs to be done and what are you going through to do that's going to be uh, long after everyone else has gone? Um, you don't have to give too much away, uh, but you know. Every, every night we always like take the fuel tank out, clean it as much as we can, um, take the engine off, things like that, uh, take the batteries off to charge, all that. That's quite a quick process, but then like most of us take the axles out most nights. Yeah. And uh, yeah, that's what I'm sort of on with now. And cleaning everything, it looks absolutely spotless. Thank you. Yeah. I do try. Yeah, and, that, and that's the th that's the, th the key thing. I think you know, uh, you know, it's it's late nights. It's Easter weekend. You're going to lose an hour's sleep. You're going to watch us during the lunch break tomorrow. Kai Clark, if Kai Clark is doing well in his super heat and in the final, it's because mechanic has spent the extra hours tonight meticulously going through almost every nut and bolt, and that's the level of preparation you need. One more question that we haven't done. We talked about this earlier on the oh. broadcast, Joe. The um the new last corner, has has that influence set up a lot for it, um, compared to last year or is it still about the same? Not massively. I mean, everyone's trying to get in that extra little bit. It's made us think about it a lot more, that's for sure. So uh, I think we've done a decent job getting on top of it, really, as a team. We were quite good last weekend at the pre-round. And then, yeah, we've sort of tried to carry it forward as best we can into this this meeting as well. But it's all different. There's more people here. Like the, the top standard of the drivers that you'd expect to be here are all here. So, yeah, it, it has slightly changed, we think, but not, not a ridiculous amount. It's not been, like, it's not changed the world. Are no. you, you, are their chassis getting any more damage going over that curb at the last, uh, the last corner? Because we've seen them getting all four wheels off the ground. Not, yeah, again, not massively. This place is quite bumpy anyway. You use yeah. the curbs as best you can. Um, it, it does, you know, make us check it a little bit more. We have the cart jig to check yep. that they're all straight after. Uh, every, race. Yeah. every every day really we do it unless you have a crash so yeah we've been on that but it's not it's not a huge amount nothing that we'd expect to see different from like pfi yep. you know where you're using a lot of curbs on on that same left hand side thank you very much okay that's, that's, that's right. a question answered so we've had a we've had a wonderful day of racing the noise the action the color is spectacular mm -hmm. now wilton mill falls quiet all you can hear is the clink, clink, clink of one or two spanners fettling and finding that extra tenth, that extra hundredth that could see one of these drivers crown British Open champion tomorrow. It's been a fantastic day. Andrew Mather, thank you for joining me on the Paddock it's Show. Been a pleasure. Well, it's been a pleasure. Uh, you know, you've done a, it's great to have you on board. Tomorrow morning, the silence will be replaced by 220 of Britain's best kart racers and drivers from all over the world trying to become British Open champion. Don't forget we lose an hour. We're live 10 a.m. It's Easter Sunday. Who is going to hop their way to victory? Well, we're going to find out across the course of the next uh, couple of hours. Back with live pictures here at Wilton Mill. Time is just before two o'clock local time here uh, in Northamptonshire. Myself, Andrew Mather and Henry Bodet getting ready for the first final uh, of the O-Plate meeting for 2024. And it's Minimax, Henry, who will go first. Yes, indeed. But of course, with a lot of things this year, things are very, very different in terms of our coverage we've been bringing you uh, pictures from the motorsport race control truck uh, with our driving standard advisor and uh, we've had nicole sutherland down on the pits uh, interviewing drivers after race but after the premiere of the paddock show now we have the first of what will be uh, uh, hopefully a season-long series of grid walks normally reserved just for car masters but here at the o-plate and hopefully for the rest of british championship season another chance to speak to the drivers just before they go out but uh, as we look there no so this is minimax we have got uh, 34 drivers uh, while we wait there, let's have a quick look. Who hasn't made it? Uh, uh, this this one's all good. because th this, 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 this had a, a grid smaller than 34 to begin with, uh, so they've all made it. Uh, I do think we can now head yes. down to the grid and Nicole Sutherland. Nicole, over to you. Well, thank you, Henry. We're just going to quickly catch up with our pole and front row. 
Finley, you just got a second. How are you feeling going into this race? Uh, confident. Yeah. You think you can get the O plate in there? Definitely. Very best of luck to you. Just going to catch up as well with Oliver Spencer, who is our 2023 Micromax O plate. Jono, Oliver, Ollie, how are you feeling in front ahead of this race? Good. And you are our 2023 Micro O plate. You reckon you can do the same again in Mini Max? Yeah. Yeah. Well, very best of luck to you, Oliver. JP, how are you feeling? Uh, nervous. Hopefully we can do it. Well, best of luck to you both. I think that's all we've got time for before we head off. So back to Henry and Andrew in the box. Thank you very much, Nicole. Uh, good to uh, hear a few thoughts. The nervous sounding a bit uh, uh, from the drivers, sounding a bit nervous down there before the start of, uh, of this one. Uh, it will be race number uh, 26 in the, uh, in the schedules. Uh, for Minimax 950. All the finals, longer than the superheats that we had earlier on today. There'll be 12 minutes plus one lap for uh, for the drivers to decide who will become British Open champion, who will become the O-plate holder in Minimax for 2024. The winner of this race will have the right to uh, use the O-plates the, the, throughout every single race that they do for the rest of the season, uh, including, of course, uh, the Vera Tools British Kart Championships. A uh, great season of events coming up for you. You can watch it all here uh, on the Motorsports TV uh, platform and network of channels, including the new uh, Karting UK channel on YouTube. At our Karting UK is the handle. Uh, if you've uh, if you've not done so already, head over there to uh, subscribe to that one as well. Plenty of uh, of content coming up, including the I say we had the paddock show earlier uh, from last night. We also had the paddock show from Friday night as well uh, at the start of the weekend. Which if you've not watched yet, uh, do give that a watch once uh, we're all done here. But the yellow light turns to green for the start of the formation lap. This is the Minimax 950 O plate final. Time for finals racing then at the 2024 British O-Plate. Here is the grid for the Minimax 950 O-Plate race. Finlay lines on pole position alongside Luca Holmes, Balak on the front row. Edward Haynes and Oliver Spencer start on row two. Tom Reed and Jack Collinson go from row number three. On row number four, Charlie King and the reigning Micromax Grand Finals champion Jensen Chalk. Hasnain Khan and Joshua Griffin are on row five. Blair Smith, Stonehouse Blair Smith and Daniel Minto on row six. On row seven, uh, starting 13th on the grid, Alex Goodson and Albie Friend. Zach Starbuck and Jaime Ambrose on row eight. Leo Livingston, Kean Bernard start on row number nine. Watch, watch a friend and watch for Bernard. Then you've got McAndrew Uren, another driver to watch. Finley Hines, Miles Burton, Max Gilman, Riley Merrill, Benjamin Lawn. All down to 24th place. Louis Radcliffe and Max Wheatley, Harry Taylor, and there's the rest of them uh, through the order. Are we good for a start of 12 ah. minutes plus one lap? We have had one retirement time already, which is Alfie Ward. We are good. Green lights. Away we go then for the Minimax 950 final. Is anybody going to be able to take the challenge to Finlay Lines, who's dominated the heats and the super heat? They're all defending to the inside. Edward Haynes is immediately up to second place. This is what we've seen. Henry is all round there. 360 for Riley Morrow in the number 38 for Sam Pollitt Racing, whose O-plate final finishes on lap one, stuck in the grass at Christmas Corner. Did you see the racing line that Finley Lines was taking into Christmas Corner? He had su he got such a good jump at the start. He was able all the 22 car going grass track in Minto uh, on the grass for the Hunter Motorsport team. As everyone else hugged the inside line, as you tend to do on the first lap, at the end of lap number one, Finley Lines leads by one and a half seconds. I said it before, nobody has done more winning at the start of the 2024 season across the board than Finley Lines. Now, is this the race for just second place or can anybody suddenly 
sort of get themselves together and try and close it. The problem that we have, as there's a move by Zach Starbuck in the 88 cut, is that Finley Lines has been inch perfect all weekend. And he has uh, been indeed. And the, the behind him is a fight between Haynes and Spencer. Uh, there's been two changes of position four. Holder of second place. This is again very good for Finley Lines. He's going to be able to pull away a 50.3 straight out the back there. 2.5 seconds. If Haynes, Spencer, Holmes, Ballack and the rest of them want to take that O plate home, they've got to get organized. They've got to start getting that train together oh. to pull in the time back to Finley Lines. Not good news for the number 18 of Jensen Chalk. He's up into the top 10, but a five second in race penalty will drop Chalk at the moment down to around 27th place. Yeah, so uh, fortunately, uh, Jensen Chalk is not gonna add the British O plate to the Dubai O plate that he won earlier this year and last year in Micromax as well, sadly. Going back a bit there, Albi Friend losing a, a couple of positions. That's all around uh, the teens at the moment. 13th place uh, being fought over at that point. Nine and a half minutes to go. What is the gap looking like between first and second? It's growing. Finley Lines is hitting the times hard here. 49.86. Uh, it has continued to drizzle. If you were with us before the lunch break, there has been a continuation of that very light rain. Not enough for wet tyres. That's why the pace versus earlier in the weekend is down a bit as Blair Smith goes down the inside of Oliver Spencer for fourth place but in these tricky slippery conditions a 49.86 is lightning pace from the race leader yes indeed uh, we are fighting over the minor placings um, I, I mean I thought that we were watching go-karting not Formula One because Max Verstappen, I mean, Finley Lines <laughs> is leading by a country mile at the moment. Uh, and pretty soon, there he is. So we'll give the maximum uh, motorsport back driver uh, his props. A quick check over the shoulder. Hunch is down behind the paddock. Now, I know that uh, Stuart is here. I'm sure Mum Nicky is uh, either here or watching at home as they... Uh, oh, and there's a problem. That is the number 42 of Oliver Spencer and the number 19 of Jack Collinson coming together, coming out of Christmas Corner. Just two into one, won't go. And all oh, and there's a big... 74 cart that is uh, Charlie uh, no that is Charlie yeah, Charlie okay. King getting shown the uh, outside of the circuit there uh, there's a bit of grass tracking somebody mentioned oh, it's strange that most of the hunter motorsport carts are on the Carlos Sainz chassis that's because they're the sole UK importer of said wagon seven and three quarter minutes to go then lines controls this race 3.24 seconds keeps hitting those purple lap times keeps growing that gap out ahead of these drivers here. Edward Haynes in second place, Luca Holmes Ballack uh, there in third place for Oliver Spencer. That problem uh, on the last lap means it will not be a repeat of the O plate victory that uh, Spencer had in uh, the Micro Max category 12 months ago. For Luca Holmes Ballack, though, he was on the podium in that Micro Max final, so it could be another top three finish for Luca Holmes Ballack now in the higher category. There is the number 16 of Hasnain Khan has been brilliant this weekend. Yes, he has. Has uh, gained two positions in this race so far. Uh, Kim Bernard is flying through the order as well. He's got a little bit under the radar in this race. Started 18th. He's already up to six. But, uh, you know, one other thing I, I talk about Hasnain Khan. I, I, I bumped into Hasnain's mum and his younger brother, who's got always, oh, we'll talk about Hasnain Khan's younger brother in a minute, as we've got a change for second place, Luca Holmes Balak moves into P2. Excellent Batman tracksuit bottoms for Hasnain's younger brother. The Batman and, and Wellington boot combination. Oh dear, it's not gone well for uh, Finley Hines. Yeah. So we've got a Haynes, a Hines, and a Lines in this race. Uh, Lines leads, Haynes is third, and sadly, Hines is out. That's the number 53 of Harry Taylor. He's had an up and down weekend. It's on oh, the attack. Good. Zach Starbuck through the toe of the boot. Gets past the number five of Joshua Griffin there. Albie that is for eighth behind. place. Albi Friend coming into this one as well. Very good, of course, in a, in a one-off race. Very successful in the 
at RMC Grand Finals in his young career. Another new fastest lap from Finley Lines. Well, I don't think he's quite going to get the lap record well, due to the track conditions. Well, I'm but not... this is still sterling stuff from La the Synergy driver. Lap record being a 48.9. 48, nine. Nine. He's that, yeah. only four tenths of a second off. Uh, last time bound, 49.3 for Finley Lines. Edward Haynes and Luca Holmes Balak, who were battling, did a 50.1 and a 50.2. Uh, Blair Smith on another of the Synergy carts, a 49.53. So it just goes to show that, you know, it's not as though Finley Lines' go kart is half a second lap quicker than everybody else. He has just utilized good qualifying, excellent track position, and by the time everybody else runs the same pace at him, he is. 4.6 seconds up the road. Uh, here's the battle of the seconds, and both Holmes Ballock and Haynes runs wide, and it's Blair Stonehouse Smith into P2 in the number eight card. At the moment, Mike Spencer's cup of joy is about to overflow because it's a synergy. One, two, three. Oh, it's off there. That's Joshua Griffin out of the O-Plate final. Spins down at Ashby. Everybody goes by. Was yes. up in eighth place. That is the end of things for Joshua Griffin in terms of contending for those podium places. Yes, indeed. Now, Smith leads them through the curbing there, over the, the hops at the final corner. And it is, well, Finley Lines backed off. He's at 49.51 now, uh, but we're not sure if there are any spots of rain. Change for second place again, and Max Gilman's out of the race as well. We just saw oh. there Luca Holmes Ballack back through into second place ahead of Blair Smith. Finley Lines' lead is now out to five seconds and more yet again this, uh, this weekend. He hasn't lost by less than five seconds in a single race. And it's, it's, it's a bit of a copy, copy of the whole weekend so far for Finley Lines. As yeah. you say, he's hit the, the early lap so hard as Haynes down the inside of Blair Smith on the entry mm. to the boot. Lovely move, that. Yes. Uh, one of those that's harder than it looks, uh, if you ask me. That's him back up into third. But this has been classic lines so far this weekend. He's now started to hit traffic. Now, this is something a little bit different for him. That's Joshua. Oh, Joshua Griffin, a bit of a miscommunication there. Uh. Joshua Griffin, I don't think quite realized uh, where Finley Lines wanted him to go. Finley Lines uh, protest is now on the outside. Oh, this, this isn't is, uh, good. This, this isn't is good. good. This should, this, uh, Josh, mm, um, Josh Griffin, I, he's upset because he is uh, he spun out of the race how and, you, and these are still young kids and you know the adrenaline you know uh, you, you can understand however the blue flags need to be out and josh there they are and you know josh griffin he's he's not doing himself any favors here i can understand how some of these drivers they get upset because something happens out of their control it's not their fault and uh, now finley lines goes through and I, you know, Josh Griffin, yeah, ah, black flag yep. for Josh Griffin. Um, you, you know, do not pass go, do not collect 200 pounds, go straight to the pits and uh, have an appointment with the race stewards. And again, you, you've Josh, got to give it to Lines Josh, there. He's Josh, just so calm in all yep. of what was going on there. The race for a moment was out of his control. It's half his lead. Oh dear, that's another Smith. synergy gone. That's Blair Smith that has gone off. Um, you know, and uh, Josh is a lovely kid. He's a lovely kid. He, 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 I, I know him for a long time, uh, and, and he needs to learn from that, I think, uh, as we all do uh, from time to time. There goes Albert Friend, followed by Oliver Spence, and that's the battle of the sixth and the seventh. And uh, Emerson McAndrew Uren uh, being chased by Zach Starbuck, and then, oh, is it a Tooley cart or is it an MLC cart? Can't tell, they look the same. <laughs> I'm going to keep on that until one of them changes the graphics kit. However, now. Finney lines, the gap goes back up only by a tenth of a second. As uh, we look now at Haynes and Holmes Ballock. Still fighting over second place. Jensen Chalk having another really good run. He's up to fourth place now. Uh, a little bit further down the order, this is the battle. Was the battle for around eighth place. Uh, uh, McAndrew, uh, Ewan and Starbuck all involved there with Alex Goodson back with our fight for second place. Here comes Jensen Chalk, but now down the inside, Edward Haynes, Oof. side by side through the initial part of the boot. This is a great chance for Holmes Ballack to break away now in second place and book himself a second podium in the O-Plate meeting for Rotax 
two years in a row. And don't Fighting hard now, Chalk and Haynes over third place. Don't forget, Jensen Chalk's got a five second penalty. Good point, yeah. Uh, so that would put him down to about 10th position. Um, but again, you know, he just wants to try and gain as many places on the road as he can. And, uh, oh. oh, and well, Haynes and Chalk, they, uh, how, how is it? They, they, they had um, a couple of discussions in the grand finals at the Road Tax Revisor Bahrain uh, back at the start, end of November, the start of December. Uh, and uh, Jensen Chalk, and they seem to be still discussing things now. And now it's the turn of Key and Bernard. Uh, to close in, Albie Friend, uh, you know, from where did Albie start on the grid? Down in 14th. Well, he started 16th on the grid in the, the O plate last year, 14th this year. By the time he gets to seniors, he'll be up on the front row and winning and winning them. It's yeah. simple that, you know, it's progress. Uh, there's a uh, goes to Spencer, and there's Emerson McAndrew Uren being chased by uh, Zach Starbuck and Alex Goodson. Here's the battle further down the order, the 53 and the 11. Uh, that's uh, Harry Taylor and Otis Cleary battling over 12th position. As we look now at Finley Lyons, is you know, has, has sort of calmed himself down and got up the road. Time um, has expired now for. Finley Lines, he knows he's only a lap and a half away, if that, from becoming O-Plate champion by taking that O-Plate throughout the course of 2024. Another new fastest lap of the race, 49.32. Finley Lines is looking to finish this one in style. Albert Friend, Albie Friend is also finishing this one quickly, but it needs to get up past Jensen Chalk and then ahead to these two. What a, a last couple of laps from Edward Haynes has closed into the back of Luca Holmes Balak. The race for second place is still on for both of them. Uh, fast finishing Bernard as well there in sixth. But look at this. Finley Lines has put in a dominant performance throughout the whole weekend. He kept his cool in these tough conditions at Wilton Mill. He's going to come through the final chicane in 2024. Finley Lines is your O-plate champion in Mini Max 950. A dominant performance in the final. He wins by 4.86 seconds from Edward Haynes, who gets second place on the last lap. For Luca Holmes Balak, it's a second podium in the Rotax O plates in a row. He did it last year in micro. He's done it again in mini. Uh, drop a gear, disappear. Finley Lines takes the biggest win of his career on what could be a very, very important year in that young man's karting journey this season. Haynes, Holmes Balak. Chalk will have a five second penalty. So the Albert Friend in fourth, Kian Bernard in fifth, Spencer, McAndrew, Uren, uh, Zach Starbuck, then uh, Alex Goodson. Chalk will be classified 10th provisionally. Then it's Charlie King and the rest. Uh, Theo Bradshaw, Josh Cormack, Hasnain Khan uh, falls to 17th position. And then sadly, the list of retirements. It could have been so much better. It's still great for. Um, for the Synergy Racing team, a 1-3. At one point, they had a 1-2-3 uh, as well. And, uh, okay, so after a season in 2023 where it was all about, in Minimax, where it was all about Dan Holland Racing and Strawberry Racing, there are some new kids on the block this year. And there is the fastest of the lot. In the lines... And uh, oh, Luca Holmes, Balak, and Blair Smith. There we go. Now, uh, somewhere in the pack that I saw is mechanic McCauley Austin um, uh, taking a lot of praise, a lot of praise. I've just seen Rob Hodgkinson uh, in the paddock. Uh, well, I haven't seen him for about 15 years. A big, uh, big to see Rob. There's McCauley Austin in his hat. Uh, again, the, 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 he's called me Corley, the little tin man in karting. And, uh, you know, the little tin man has guided Fanny Lines towards Oz. And it doesn't look, even look like Finley Lines has broken a sweat out there, getting uh, some no. congratulations. Oh, this, this is what I like to drivers. see. They just uh, give him some high fives. Oh, so don't leave the guy hanging. There, someone gives him a high five with the Vera, uh, with the black, and that's a, that's a smart crash helmet. Can't leave a man hanging there if you're giving him a high five. Uh, there's Josh Cormack coming in, the uh, Falker Tyron MOT 
uh, to this. But let's have a quick look back at the highlights of our first O plate final, Andrew. Let's have a look indeed. 12 minutes to decide it. And it's again another very fast start from Finley Lines. We've seen this through the course of the heat, through the course of the super heat as well. This for me is where he won this race, was able to get a big lead with everybody else squabbling over second place in the early stages. That's how we lost Riley Morrow at the start. Problems for Findlay Hines on a tough weekend uh, there. In the end, both of those two drivers would retire. Drivers looking to make their way up through the order. It's a close moment for Daniel Minto in the number 22 out wide on the back straight. But look at the lead that Lyons had early on, Henry. It's always going to be a very hard yeah. task for Spencer, Balak, and, and all the others to close in. Yes, indeed. And uh, here is the battle for the minor, I say the minor placings, second in the Open Championship. And again, there was a couple of incidents here. That was uh, Jack Collinson's uh, race coming to, a, not an end, but uh, coming uh, to uh, well, an eventful midpoint. Battle of a second between Holmes Balak and Edward Haynes uh, was good. Holmes Balak had the advantage at one point. Haynes got it back eventually. And uh, the rest was all about that driver there. Uh, I do appreciate... Uh, the uh, several marriage proposals <laughs> that I've received on there. Um, oi, watch, I, I, all I want to know is uh, how big your bank balance is. No, I'm joking. <laughs> Thank you very much uh, for the con I haven't paid for them, honestly. Um, that's, a, that's another really good banner placement there. That. Yeah, almost as someone planned it. Uh, Cart Sim are in the paddock, as they will be all year. Uh, so for all your karting simulation needs in the UK, uh, there we go. Um, in the karting van, which which goes all over Europe as well. It, it's, 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 the, the karting yeah. the kart simple van goes all over Europe. Yes, yeah. indeed. Um, but uh, yeah, a great uh, great run there for Finley oh. Lines. I don't think you could have really said any other driver to be more deserving. Than no, the no, of no, no. Let's have a, let's weekend. pick up a few things. Now, now there's Ronnie Smith down there uh, in the black top. He's now moved on to car racing. Uh, but he's back in the car. Back. Up top, you can see Reg Hayward uh, on the left there, and you can see Mr. and Mrs. Crowther. Now, what a great advertisement. Come karting, they said. Enjoy time as a family, they said. It's the start of British summer time, they said. It's nice and warm as uh, Mr. and Mrs. Crowther shiver on top of the Coles racing bus. <laughs> they just realised they're being talked about. Oh, there we go. Welcome to the UK, everybody. Let's have a, a look at the provisional then. And, uh, well, as I say, Finley Lines taking the win, Edward Haynes. And uh, let's throw down to the pit lane now for uh, a chat with Nicole Sutherland. So, big congratulations to Mini Max, second place O plate finisher, Luca. Luca, how was your race? Yeah, it was all right. I bet you're proud of your performance this weekend? Oh, uh, yeah, I guess, yeah. And is there anybody you'd like to thank? Uh, my granddad, my dad for taking me here, Synergy Factory team, Ross, all my mechanic, and Mike and Rob. It's a great result, Luca, very well done. We're just going to hear from race winner also, which is Finley Lines. We could just get Finley over. Finley, can we grab you for an interview? Finn, huge congratulations. Dominant weekend, dominant performance out there. How was that for you? Uh, really good. I was a bit really confused and like uh, disgusted by what uh, Joshua Griffin, uh, when he when it was a lapped cart going around trying to defend and trying to break check me and take me out the race, so and it's always well could win. But apart from that, it was a pretty nice win for me. Well, you deal, dealt with the situation very maturely, so big pat on your pit, big pat on the back for you there. And is there anybody you'd like to thank? I'd like to thank Synergy for the amazing cart set up, Rob and Mike especially, uh, Chaos Sport Engines, my mum and dad, Maxim Motorsport, all my sponsors, Cartsim for all the good training and everybody else that's been supporting me on my journey. Well, congratulations, Finley, and that one's for you. 2024 Mini Max. O plate winner. Congratulations, Finley Lines. But uh, and Andrew, I think that was yeah, yeah you know, uh, as succinctly put, um, you know, 
they're, they're these young drivers, and uh, you know certainly that Finley's got his you know from a driver's point of view. Uh, he, yeah, he wasn't impressed with uh, what Josh Griffin was doing, but as a commentator, you can understand. You know that's not Josh. He's not, Josh is a nice kid, but obviously the intensity. In the heat of the moment, when the red mist comes down, things happen. That's enough of that race. We're on to the next race. The grid is forming. And this is Junior Rotax. Now, let's have a look. We'll start off with who we don't have uh, out on the uh, on for this final. So, very, very quickly... Um, uh, Unfortunately, Michael Walker, William Archer, Owen Neve, Ryan Gill, Finley Buck, um, Zach Turner, Michael Dalton, Shane Chandaria, Ironman Bansell, Harrison Whitcomb, Jack Thompson, Vlad Tomenchuk, Harry Hurst Grover, Eric Brinsmith, Callum Foster, Owen Wallace, Rory Armstrong, Naomi Garcia, Jacob Woods, Emily Cotty, Jack Baker, Oliver Meek, Isabella Stanmore Wilson, Jake Graffiti, John Richardson, Elliot Surtees, Matteo Palazzo, Omar Cindy, Sebastian Lush, and Eli Baden. They haven't made the final. We will tell you who has made the final after this commercial break. Over on the grid here ahead of our junior Rotax O plate final. Just going to quickly catch up with pole sitter Jacob Ashcroft. Jacob, how are you feeling ahead of this final? You've had a great weekend so far. Yeah, I'm feeling good after a great weekend. Hopefully, I can finish it off in the final. Yeah, and what are your expectations for this race? We know junior Rotax's races are always exciting. What are you thinking? Um, I'm just hoping I can get a good start. I mean, if it comes out to be a massive fight, I mean, I hope I can stay towards the front. And if I do go back, I just need to concentrate and get back to the front. Well, the best of luck to you, Jacob. We've just got time to catch up with Harry Bartle, who will be sitting alongside the front row with Jacob Ashcroft. Harry, just quickly, thoughts on the race, what you're expecting? and uh, Well, try and get to the lead as quick as I can. And then if it all pans out, I can try and get a gap and get away, but... Anything can happen. Well, very best of luck to you, Jacob. As you can see, as we work our way down the grid, incredibly competitive. So we've got Strawberry and Dan Holland on the front. More Dan Holland carts along with Sam Pollitt. Just going to work our way down and see if we can catch up with Benjamin Baker. Now, Benjamin, one of the Dan Holland racing drivers, he started his weekend in qualifying in 63rd and now finds himself 21st on the grid. So, see if we can catch up with him quickly. As you can see, strawberries, We've got coals in here as well as well as some privateer drivers. Joel, privateer. Benjamin, I saw in qualifying you had a bit of a difficult start to your weekend, but you've made yourself into the final. What are you looking forward to doing? Uh, just looking forward to uh, go up the grids, hopefully get a good position and see what happens from there. Anything can happen, really. Very best of luck to you, Benjamin. Clearing the grid now ready to start our race. Thank you very much, Nicole. Yeah, great effort there uh, from Benjamin oh, Baker to, uh, to I get I apologise. Um, oh, that's, Stu Stratton. That's oh, where we've just Stu. lost any monetisation. Sorry, on the, there we the go. That's, uh, that's quartered our viewers. <laughs> uh, Henry, let's have a quick talk. Uh, let's actually yes. go towards the, the back end of this grid oh, first. Yes, my yes. goodness me, has there been a bit of a story of who's made it into yes. the top 34 we and who hasn't made it. We, I ran through the list of drivers who haven't made it. Now, at the end, the very last lap of the superheat this morning, Kenzo Craigie was running up in the top five or six yep. and dropped to 16th. He's made it. We'll find out where he starts right now.
Let's whip through this grid. Jacob Ashcroft starts in pole position alongside on the front row, Harry Bartle. Row two, Lewis Goff and Joshua Turnbull. Row three, Thomas Minspearing and Jacob Jukes. As the number 64 car gets going, William Antrobus, Joshua Smith, Brandon Truman. Oh, they're all going off. That's the number eight, that's two. The, that's, that's the pole That's setter. the pole man. Jacob Ashcroft is off the track. He's trying to get the car back on. Oh, did he just spin on? Yes, he just spun, warming his tyres. But he's OK. He's back in, and they've got two rolling laps. Uh, Andrew Smith, Truman, Hasty, Freeman, and Bland for your top 12. On to row number seven, then. Charlie Neve and Cameron Nelson. Albie Lapp and Charlie Cox. Joel Dixon, Cohen, and Aris Miauskas starts on row nine. Hugh Moulton, Jack West, Benjamin Baker, Aidan Mitchell, Harrison Crowell, and Noah Barham are next. We're going to quickly cycle through the rest of them. Ray and Gando's in. Kenzo Craigie. He's in on, on a tiebreaker, a four-way tiebreaker, 51 points, and that was between Craigie, Hanson, Hanson McDonald, and Michael Walker, who misses out by virtue of the fact he qualified lower than the other three drivers. And you know what? I thought they were going to have a second rolling lap. Flag yet, they have, yet. they have, they're gonna get okay. I thought that we were gonna go racing there. Well, I'm, I'm looking at the Kenzo Kenzo Craig, Craig having it off. No, I think we are green. We I, are green. I think we're green. I thought, oh no, there's chaos and there's confusion, and another driver off. That's the number 72 of, of uh, Aris Majewskis off, off the track. So, we've had two other drivers going wide. We, I've seen Aidan Mitchell off the track. Ray Gando, the Canadian driver, is off the track. Looking down, uh, Ash, well, we'll, we'll, get the num we'll get a check next time by uh, Harry Barton leads from Joshua Turbo, Lewis Goff, William Antrobus, Brandon Truman. I, do I thought there was going to be a second rolling lap, but there wasn't. That's not a regulation. They obviously told once. So, let's have a look. Where's Jacob Ashcroft? 18. He's, He's down to in 18th place. Well, it's an was... absolute disaster for Jacob Ashcroft. He has got time to race his way through, but he's got to... He's got to hope there's a lot happening at the front of the oh. order for the next ten and three quarter minutes if he's going to claim this open title. title. Hang on, did he did he start at the back of the field? I think he started at the back. If he's if he's up to 18, the race, that means that somewhere on the opening lap he's passed about 20, about uh, 15 cars. Yeah. Well, what an absolutely remarkable start to the Junior Rotax final. Uh, I've got a feeling, Henry, this is going to be one of those races that never quite calms down. No. Bartle leads at the end of lap two. Joshua Turnbull second. Lewis Goff third. Antrobus and Truman in the top five as well. Who's made good pro Harrison Crowther's on an absolute tear through the field. Has gained 11 places in the first he's two laps. He's about to gain 12. And he's, he's just absolutely passed. flight. There is Ashcroft in the number 82. Right. Who's now up to 17th place. Uh, probably another one as well as that. Kenzo Craig, he's had a spin, but still gains three places. Three wides into Osiers, and somehow the juniors make it work. This is the 28. That's Truman. Got to think all their three wide into the boot. That could go wrong, and it's gone wrong because some oh, Aiden Mitchell uh, pulling off the side of the track there. Now, uh, I, a couple of those cars, there's somebody with a very badly damaged NASA panel there. Jacob Ashcroft punching the steering wheel but i tell you what he, he shouldn't punch it too hard because he's about to break into the top 10. is indeed it's a long way to go in and this he started one. last yeah, he started last he's up to uh he's up to as you say to 12th place he's not that far behind everywhere else it just overtakes galore chaos in some ways out there organized chaos once again from the juniors still. Nine minutes to go in this one, of course. That's Zach Green down the inside in the 53, going for a move. I think that was on Adam Wooden oh, and, for and another I, spot in uh, in the top 15 there. And Uncle Tyrone joins the live chat just as Brandon Truman uh, has a problem and falls to 28. I think it might be Leon Hasty who's got, yeah, it's Leon Hasty, the number nine, who's got the loose NASA panel for Thule Motorsport. Eight and a half minutes to go. This, oh, this is a change. That's this a is panel the, is skew Freeman everywhere. Down the inside of Spearing. That is for seventh place. Uh, uh, yeah, there's, there's, there's NASA panels all over. The, there's NASA panels askew in abundance. 
uh, all over the place. So let's right. Oh, oh. there's a problem. There. Oh, that was just missing the tyre barriers as well. That is the George Whitbread uh, Racing uh, cart of the number 64. Uh, was that uh, Mr. Uh, Joel, that was Dalt, uh, Dixon yeah, Joel Cohen. Dixon Cohen? Oh. Um, Good to see oh. that Joel didn't make contact with that uh, that uh, yes. tyre barrier. I've been in that one. It's it's not nice. Oh, go for it. oh yes. So let's a reset. Eight minutes ago, Harry Bartle leads Lewis Goff by 1.2 seconds. William Antrobus is a further two seconds back. Then another two seconds back to Cameron Nelson and Harrison Crowther in the top five. Then it's Leon Hasty, Harry Freeman, Lucas Blanford. Joshua Smith and Thomas Min Spearing. And Leon Hasty has just had a technical flag. Then it's Jake that will promote Jacob Ashcroft into the top 10. Pole sitter, spur of the formation up from pole, had to start at the back and is now into what is ninth position because he's just passed the number 10 cart of Thomas Min Spearing. And he's still not losing that much time relative Brand, to the leader. Seven Brandon minutes Truman, to go. Sorry, sorry, Andrew. Brandon Truman is now heading back up the order because can he drive a car? Of course he can. And uh, Uncle Tyrone is back in the live chat after a year away. Uh, oh, Leon Hasty has failed to recognise the uh, technical flag and has now been given a black flag for his troubles. Um, I, I mean, Jacob Ashcroft, it, I mean, he will, he can still finish in the top five, it will be of no consolation. And that is why uh, uh, Leon Hasty, the black flag there, um, it, it's... Okay, we are, Nicole asked Jacob Ashcroft why he fell back at the start of the superheats. Mm -hmm. And what was his answer? His answer was, well, I didn't get enough heat into my tires on the rolling lap, and therefore my car wasn't very good. So what did his Dan Holland racing team tell him Make sure you really get some heat into the tyres. So he goes out and he starts warming his tyres vigorously, too vigorously, and there's your results. Yep, and that's all learning. And you, uh, again, it's we've all got learning, to remember, he's stepped up to juniors, it's the different chassis, apart from the different engine, that's the change over the last few years, going from the Inter to the junior class up to the, the larger chassis. He, you're absolutely right, he will be kicking himself. Yeah, but, uh, but I mean, he, he, that's a great thing. We've got the pit lane reporters now, so yeah. we can follow that story. Yeah, we know why. He was told, make sure you get some heat in your tyres, because remember the last race when you didn't, and we had that interview with Jacob. So there we are. Now, the pieces of the jigsaw puzzle all come together. You almost guarantee he'll never do that again in his entire hey, racing career. You know, we had, we had one, of, one of the main junior road tax contenders, Nigel Hathaway, such an experienced mechanic. And there goes, uh, uh, you know, Hath even Nigel Hathaway, 35 years in the sport you know, so focused on making sure that he gets a, an exhaust welded for Harrison Whitaker. He, he goes in a park for maybe the tyres on. Never done it before. You'll never, never do, do it, it again. again. Right, five minutes to go. Harry Bartle in full control. 1.79 seconds clear of Lewis Goff. William Antrobus there in third. Nelson and Crowder completing the top five. Jacob Ashcroft is still your fastest driver out there on circuit. He's now back up to seventh place. This uh, is the fight for Joshua Smith coming through the field uh, on the Jackson uh, Project One Racing Group effort. Where's he up to wow. now? Tenth place. Zach Green's another Sorry. driver flying through the order. It's gained 17 places in this and race. Here's another move for Harry. Ashcroft. That's him uh, going past Harry Freeman, back up to sixth place. This is the remarkable thing. He's only eight well, seconds off the race leader. Jacob Ashcroft's fastest lap of the race, a 46.36. It is three tenths of a second faster than anybody, anybody. else. Uh, while you're commenting, uh, there's, a, there's a screen here which I will try. I tell you what, what was the gap in qualifying three tenths off pole? To give you some idea of Jacob Ashcroft is driving the wheels of that cart. Uh, you know, he's angry, he's frustrated, all those things. And he is doing things he probably couldn't think. So three tenths of a second in qualifying. Fifteenth in time to qualifying with that's, that kind but of that, gap. But that's how close, generally, how evenly matched these carts are. People talk about Rotax racing. Oh, it's all a bit rough and tumble. Well, it's because it's so competitive and equal. You know, generally across the board, you don't really have. I mean, we've had Vinny Lines winning by a mile, and now we've got Jacob Ash. Oh, and. Uh, a mechanical flag for Thomas Min Spearing. There we are. The Argenti cart is out. So Jacob Ashcroft, that, that's the difference between first in qualifying oh, and a Smith. spin for Joshua Smith. 
a difference between first in qualifying and 15th in qualifying. Yeah. That's three tenths of a second. And Ashcroft is three tenths of a second quicker than anybody else. With uh, That will put him into six. Got to say, we're not talking about Harry Bartle that much. He's leading uh, Goff and Antrobus. Great stuff. I'm impressed by Cameron Nelson and Harrison Crowther. There we go. There's Nelson and Crowther. Uh, how long can they hold off? Because, uh, you know... Uh, let's have a little look. A 40, I don't think we're going to see a 45 second lap in this race. Smith leading Albi Lapper. And uh, that is now Kenzo Craig. He's up in the 12th. Kenzo Craig, 31st to 12th. We're talking about Ashcroft, like he's the only one doing things in this race. Uh -uh. Craigie up 20 places. It is indeed. Two and a half minutes to go then into the latter stages. Harry Bartle in what seems like full control, but uh, given what's been going on behind is anything but that is Thomas oh. Spearing out of the race. So strong in time qualifying earlier on this weekend. That is not how he would have imagined his O-plate finishing. Change for fourth place. Crowther ahead of Nelson. Ashcroft continuing to charge along here. Is there a, dis a slight chance of a podium here for Jacob Ashcroft? If you can get past these two drivers here, Crowther and Nelson, and then you never know what could happen between Goff and Antrobus in the latter stages. There could still be a chance for we the youngster there on the DHR machine. There is your race leader having a lovely Easter Sunday drive. Harry Bartle clear by two and a half seconds. We shouldn't be too surprised that Harrison Crowther is doing so well in these cold conditions at Wilton Mill. December 2020, I've got my book of stats out. Uh, December 2020 in Minimax, Harrison Crowther in very similar cold conditions won the final round of that year's Minimax British Championship for Coles Racing in the number 17 cart at this circuit. However, he is not going to hold off uh, Jacob Ashcroft who is simply irresistible at the moment, and that would put Ashcroft into four. Yeah, he's made his way past, uh, or down the inside, into the no, boot, ooh, well Harrison. defended by Crowther, saw him coming, just held the outside line. Oh, oh he's very only careful. Close there as they go into the new chicane. Crowther holding on to this fourth place now, less than a minute to go on the clock. Bartle, Goff and Andrebus looking good for the podium. This is the closest battle on circuit. Crowther checks over his shoulder, moves to driver's right. It's going to say to Jacob Ashcroft, if you want my fourth place, you're going to have to go around the outside, which is very hard to do, of course. Back down into Ashby once again, to the defensive inside for Crowther. <laughs> side by side off of Ashby between himself and Ashcroft. Nelson nearly gets caught out by that, and round the outside goes Jacob Ashcroft. That is fourth place. But he's now, he's got to be too far behind, even if well, there was like an in-race penalty or something like that. The yeah, gap is too big now. He's not going to get onto that podium. Well, uh, I mean, OK, so with 10 seconds to go, that was that battle. Uh, the, well, there's no battle. But Harry Bartle for Strawberry Racing is clear. But I want to talk a little bit about these two drivers. So, uh, Lewis Goff and William Antrobus. Sam Pollitt Racing, they've got the Exp Xpirit chassis. They have been, we talked about tier two teams trying to get the tier one team. Sam Pollitt Racing are working diligently. They're working very, very hard as Jack West retires to break into that top bracket. There's another Argenti move there from Kenzo Craigie. He started 31st, uh, no, he started 33rd, and Kenzo is now 9th. Fantastic drive, uh, and uh, uh, yeah, again, Mercedes Formula 1, they don't tend to pick, you know, if they're going to pick a driver to go on a young driver programme, they're going to pick a good one, and they have. Now, it's going to be last lap across the top increments, the final time for this man, Harry Bartle, uh, one of the, a number of drivers this paddock that started off. There's Rodney the dog on the back of his crash helmet. Good old Rodney watching back home. Um, but yeah, started off in the Daniel Ricciardo series. So many of these drivers did. And now he's raced at an international world level, European level. He's going to be a British Open champion in a couple of corners time. He is indeed. What a drive this weekend from Harry Bartle, joining the likes of Macaulay Bishop, Ethan Jeff Hall and Daniel Ginchard. Harry Bartle is your 2024 O-plate winner in Junior Rotax, a Junior Rotax race that still hasn't finished with its drama to the end. Oh. William Antrobus has taken second, third place for Lewis Goff. This is for the minor placings. It's racing like the first lap still. Over the line, they all come. 
Jamaica Bashcroft finishes fourth, fifth for Crowder, Nelson Freeman, Craigie, Blanford and Green inside a top ten. You had three Oof. drivers in that top ten who all moved up at least 16 places in that uh, that marvellous Junior Rotax uh, final, if you like, your drama delivered in spades. Um, Uncle Tyrone fans, Brandon Truman was running in the top five, dropped the 28th, drove back up to 14th. Can he drive? Yes, he can. Of course he course can. He can. There we go. Uh, and sadly, at the bottom of the order there, the drivers who failed to finish. Uh, this will be interesting. Now, you mentioned how many drivers gained lots of places. Did they gain those places whilst keeping their nose he oh jacob ashcroft punches the steering wheel uh no nose code penalty for jason uh, uh, jacob ashcroft people ask how old is he this is his first year as a mini as a junior max driver excellent glove throwing great to see good at uh, you know uh, he, okay he will he will He's, he's lost an O plate, all right? Yep. He's going to be absolutely devastated. He, he knows, he will, and he will always know, that he could have been British Open champion this year, and he's yep. not. However, when, and this is what Dan Holland, the team, will do. They will go back and think, okay, let's do the learning now. Yep. Right. He, he, he's going back and said, well, you've just passed the entire field, nearly, you know, in, in, in 12 minutes. And your best lap, he did a... 46. He set the lap record. That's a lap, that's he set a lap record in this race. New lap record holder, Jacob Ashcroft there. Um, you know, incredible. In cold, damp conditions, you know, when all said and done, somebody asked you how old he was, he'd be 12 or 13, you know, maximum. Uh, there, and there's a, you know, good drive. So there's the Sam Pollock team. So uh, that is Lewis Goff, uh, who got passed on the last lap by his teammates, William Antrobus. Yeah, well done, Sam Pollock Racing. Harrison Crowther, oh, that's what you want to see. Uh, do you know what? Harrison qualified for the uh, Grand Finals in Rotax in 2021. And then had a, he's, he's had a terrible couple of years. He seems to be back now. Mm. He's a very talented little driver. Uh, Macaulay Bishop looking through the gate there just to you know, congratulate some of his former rivals. And, uh, you know... Looking down the thing, so Jack West, uh, Aidan Mitchell finishing third, it's Ryan Gandu, the Canadian driver in 29th, Luca Mongi 23rd, Kai Clark, well, Joe Bleakley was working on Kai's uh, cart late into the night, he's joined the paddock show, and he comes away with 23rd place, but, uh, woof, you know, great drive, Lucas Blanford, didn't we talk about him? Ah, now, that is a, is that a fawn? I think it might be, yes. It's a fawn, oh, shh. Uh, let's Quiet. have a look at some of the uh, highlights from that race the drama, which uh, started even before the race start. There is Jacob Ashcroft joining the back of the field, going, no, 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 no. I want another uh, a formation lap after his spin out of the pits. He wouldn't get it. Away they would go for 12 minutes. Good start uh, for the number 74 of Lewis Goff. Ran wide, a little bit wide through the crook. That allowed Harry Bartle to get up the inside. Harry Bartle did not look back from that entire race. He will have been... Completely oblivious to everything else that was oh. going on behind. That was a huge moment for Joel. Uh, yeah, the Joel Dixon Cohen, Cohen, yeah, the George McBread uh, racing driver. Got back in the race, but in the end would finish P27. Some storming drives yep. through the field, the likes of Harrison Crowther. That was a close uh, moment yeah, for that Smith, was, uh, Smith. A half it? spin. Uh, but as I say, Crowther up 18, Craigie up 25. Uh, Blant, uh, Green as well up 16. Actually, uh, four this, in effect. Yeah, this is, this is the end Ashcroft of Jacob Crowther. And it got a little bit tetchy between Ashcroft and Crowther. But, uh, yeah, this was the end of uh, Ashcroft's re-ascension up the ranks. And uh, it almost got very, very naughty there with the three. Because three three carts side by side, any rear tyres. Uh, that Luckily, Evera goes through. Ah. It, lap record, that will come, you know. And uh, yes, uh, Stu Stratton just just looked back and remembered I was saying nasty things about his back. There we go. And that's that was just the juniors. And there's plenty more uh, plenty more action to come here uh, at Wilson Mill. Three more races to enjoy. Micro Max will be up next. Honda Cadet uh, and Senior Rotax as well still to come for their uh, O Plate finals. And uh, if you enjoyed that, if you've missed any of the races so far this weekend, remember you can watch it all back, <laughs> just, uh, including on the new Karting UK 
uh, channel. What's, what's abusing you now? <laughs> well, we saw a fawn out there, like a baby deer. I said, I wonder what it is. A grass dog. A grass dog? A gra anyway, enough of that. Let's go down to the Cole Sutherland in the pits. We are over here with Harry Bartle, our provisional 2024 Junior Rotax O-Plate winner. Harry, congratulations. How was the race? Uh, pretty boring race, to be honest. Uh, got, a, got into the lead at the start and just maintained the gap until the end. Bit of a cruise round for you then. And would I be right in saying that seven Rotax wins in a row? Uh, <laughs> yeah, you would be, yeah. Congratulations, Harry. There's that one for you. you. Congratulations. Just going to hear from the other podium. So, P2. William, how was your race? Yeah, it's good. Uh, I could have probably done some more damage at the start if I wouldn't have been shoved off on like lap two. But, oh well, second, second at the end of the day. Yeah, very big congratulations. And are you feeling confident going into the rest of the British Kart Championships? 100%. If we showed that pace in the British, like how we did here, we have a big chance of getting a seeded. So, yeah, I'm really happy. Great. Thank you, William. And we're going to hear from your teammate as well, the other Sam Pollitt podium driver, Lewis Goff. Lewis, can you talk us through a little bit about the race, how you found it? Uh, it was off the start, um, to be fair, uh, Ashcroft spun on the out lap was unfortunate for him, but um, on, the, on the first corner I did a mistake straight away on that first lap, what cost me basically, because um, I think Turnbull and um, Bartle came through, then I think Bartle got that gap, and I just like struggled midway through um, the race with a bit of pace, but to be fair, I uh, P3 and it's a bunch of points this weekend. Yeah, well, big well done to you, Lewis. Thank you for your time. We'll head back over to the comms box for the next O-Plate final of the day. Make sure you don't miss out on any of the action. Back to you, Henry. Oh, thank you very much, Nicole. And uh, it's good to see lots of family members here waiting for the next race, Andrew Mather. And the next race will be... Micro Max. Uh, looking forward to this one. New, yes. uh, new bunch of drivers into the Rotax ladder uh, and some other familiar faces as well uh, who've, uh, who's gone for another year here in 2024. Uh, another 12 laps plus one lap for them. And, uh, yeah, great to see a uh, strong crowd here at yes. uh, Wilton Mill. Some, some big names and faces uh, here this weekend. Well, yeah, there, there are indeed. Uh, so, you know, you've seen uh, a lot of ex carters coming back, you know, you know, chance to have a little bit off. Now, we're commentating from uh, those behind-the-glass doors, uh, uh, you, you know, the, the, the central glass doors. That is the Alpha Live production uh, unit uh, and where all the social media content is coming from, um, you know. We're very pleased with. Now I know that we've got. Uh, there is the youngest drivers, and again he, the fist bumps. They're all they're, they're all going to go out, so they're all going to go. They're going to go to war, but they're all good friends. Well, a lot of them are good friends afterwards. Now, this is the holding area. So this is the W. Well, it's not the W grid yet. That's the uh, you've got to get from paddock or park. Uh, you've got to get the, the pre grid onto the W grid. You can see there. There's a man holding. Uh, the, the the metal bars that is oh hello that's me hello ah <laughs> um, oh dear uh, that's the metal bars that's rear width yes that is the, the, that's the rear width there is uh, oh no that's one of the zip that's drivers be Alfie Mayer in the that's Albie Mayer yeah because it's got Mayer at the back of his race suit I like what you've done there Andrew I like what you've done there um, that's jolly so as well they're going to go out on the grid. Now, I apologise. So there's, there's Stu Stratton again. Once again, I'm sorry, Stu. It wasn't me. It was the camera angle that, that caught you in a, in a rather unfortunate predicament pose. Um, I guarantee that he's never going to take a photo of me in the, for the rest of my days. Uh, looking down at the uh, dummy grid, of course, they're not forming up on the dummy grid. They're going to go out onto the circuit. Nicole Sutherland. Uh, is going to be interviewing them uh, on the dummy grid, uh, on the pr on the actual circuit. Though you know, a new another new feature this year. There's the young man just walking off the left-hand side of our screen. 
there. Uh, that was Diem Pahal. Uh, could this be a very, very significant day, uh, not just for Dian and his family, who have worked very hard, but for karting as a whole in our quest for complete inclusivity, you know, and uh, accessibility to one and all. We will see, we will see. Um, the rest of the carts going out there. There's uh, the Cato Motorsports, um, you know, of uh, race suit of Luke Millward. Luke Millward, he was voted. His dad, Joe, I've got to say his dad, though, his dad, Joe, did send me a message on social media that I haven't replied to yet. Uh, uh, I'm very sorry. Um, I'm, a, I'm a very silly man. And, and if, you, if I don't do things straight away, I'll forget about them because my brain is old and adult now. Uh, so I, I, you know, I do apologise to Joe, but uh, Luke Millwood, uh, Trent Valley Kart Club's most improved driver of the year last year. Uh, let's have a look. There's the Cutting Edge Racing number 22. Uh, good to see Steve Cutting's team. That's Jensen Walker. Well, he's, uh, we spoke to Jensen in the paddock. He's running as a project. There's Luke Millwood's dad. There's Joe. Um, and the number 38 cart uh, coming out onto the circuit. Who else have we got? There's one of the Richardson Chassis Engineering uh, drivers there in the number 16 cart. That was Xavier Ramsey uh, coming out. So we'll have a, uh, you know, I've got to say, the <laughs> you know you feel old. There's Dan Ashton uh, keeping a watchful eye over things. Some of, the, some of the people I used to commentate on are now the dads of <laughs> some of the younger drivers, which is... Um, uh, which I find quite upsetting, really, because it reminds me how old I am. Um, only 43 this year, even though I'm, I look 21. A young, a young uh, I look 21, yeah. but I'm only 43. Um, no more marriage proposals on here. Ah, now, as we watch a couple of drivers getting their wagons put down, I believe there's Gary Rolfe and Logan Rolfe. I believe Nicole Sutherland is going to speak to some of the youngest members of the field on the grid now. So we're back on the grid over here for the next race of the day, which will be our Micromax O-Plate. We're here with pole sitter Austin. Austin, how are you feeling ahead of this race? Um, hopefully we can just win, yeah. And are you feeling confident? Uh, quite. Well, very best of luck to you, Austin. I'll let you concentrate. We'll head over to talk to Max Jolly as well. Max, what are you hoping for in this race? Obviously, big win, but what's your goals? Uh, my goals, top f top five would be good, yeah. You feeling confident? Yeah, definitely. And these are always busy and exciting races, so have you got anything that you're looking out for to happen? Um, I'm looking out for some battles and fun. Yeah. Well, the very best of luck to you. We'll catch up with Max's mechanic quickly. How are you feeling ahead of this race? Yeah, I'm confident he's got it in the power, so I think he can do a good job. Fantastic. And uh, are you dad as well, or? No, just a mechanic. Just a mechanic, so, but uh, I think we've got it in the bag. Very best of luck to you. So head further down the grid. So behind Max, we've got Evolve Carts. We've also got one of the Faro brothers on the third row. So Arthur will be in this race, brother Albert also in the same grid, which I bet for their family is always very exciting for those of the Farrow family that are watching at home. Start a bit further down to Josh Cook. Josh, how's your weekend been so far? Paul, good quality, good heat one, drive away at the front, but then Super Heat had a spark plug failure so dnf for the start but hopefully come back in this one yeah and are you feeling like you can make some places up and get back up to the front definitely great best of luck to you head a bit further down the grid so very best of luck to all of these drivers ahead of their o plate final Thank you very much, Nicole. Uh, looking forward to this one. 31 drivers out on circuit, uh, ready to go for this 2024 uh, Micromax UK, uh, UK O plate final. Uh, will be the next race for us here at Wilton Mill. And uh, you see the yellow light there indicating 30 seconds before the green light shows to commence uh, the, uh, the 
uh, formation lap. We'll be back in a short few moments' time after a message from one of our sponsors. Back here at Wilton Mill, green light and start of the formation lap for the final in Micromax UK. Here's a grid then for the final. Austin Oman starts on pole position. Max Jolly alongside on the front row. Charlie Page and James Roots go from row two. Arthur Farrow and Dean Pahal on row three. Row number four, Luke Millwood and Alfie Garrett, Maximilian Amberhart and Joshua Cook. Then Logan Rolfe and uh, on the outside of row number six, Alfie Garrett. Uh, Benedict Asmasiokas and Josh uh, Hushka start on row seven. Xavier Ramsey and William Crombie on row eight. Archie Rogers Tyler and Harris Barber start on row nine. Harry Ratcliffe, Alfie Mayer, Albert Farrow, George Swire, Jensen Walker, Chester Fawkes, your top 24, Sebastian Behrman, Oliver Dawson, Ethan Lloyd, Toby Biggs, Alan Galudi and Lucian Smith. Watch for Lucian Harper Das. Will go out or will he not? No. Adam Galudi and Sebastian Behrman also not out there. Are we ready for 12 minutes? No. no we're going to go around to one more lap. Uh, we should remind as well, uh, yes. another one of the stories here this weekend, uh, first time okay. that a Brit uh, Viratool Motorsport UK British Kart Championships event yes. counted towards the FIA International Karting Ranking. The FIFA International Power Pack Karting Rankings. No, I know it's not FIFA. <laughs> but that, and you know what? That is really, really significant to the FIA. Um, it's, it's signifying that, yeah, you know, we're biased. This is probably the most competitive national karting series anywhere in the world. Yes, you, you've got other, other, other national series, series are available. I can see a Scoozer in the USA. Uh, you've got some great stuff going on in Chile at the moment, believe it or not. The UAE's got a great championship. Uh, I'm going to be out competing in Latvia later this year, which has got another great championship, but the UK is where it's at. And uh, yeah, the FIA, looking outside its traditional uh, the, the championship oh, that you and Anthony Jordan are, 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 are representing. And yeah, that's really, really good. Of course, last year, the 2023 International Karting Rankings, topped by Britain, Lewis Werrell. Yes. Doing very well now in the senior categories. Are we ready this time? Yes, we are. Green light, 12 minutes, and away we go for the start of the Micro Max final. Brilliant jump there from Max Jolly around the outside. Takes the lead in the early stages, heading up to Christmas Corner for the first time. The number 20, that's a great start. That did Pahal has come yes, through to second it place. Is. What a start for Pahal. Are they all going to make it through Christmas Corner? The answer is yes. And the driver, the Nigel Mansell style crash helmet as well. Look out for him. I'll try and get a number check on that. That's a, a, a you know a great helmet game there by, uh, <laughs> um, by that young man. And uh, in, oh, and there's somebody going very slowly that I think was possibly the number 88 cart of Chester oh, Forks. And there's another, there's another zip uh, cart going over the grass there, at, coming out of Oisier's. That was, uh, yeah, as you said, that was Maximum Eberhardt. And uh, into the finals came for the first time. And, well, we've had two O plates with a dominant winner so far. Uh, Max Jolly has got a handy advantage. Now, the Hunter Motorsport team, they won the Dubai O-Plate with Kai Hunt in senior Rotax. Haven't won a British O-Plate yet, although Dia Pahal, neither of Richardson Chassis Engineering. And Charlie Page with the Synergy team, well, he's hoping to add a second uh, uh, old plate for that team after Finley Lines earlier on. I've seen some very mature heads on young shoulders so far this weekend in Micromax. And for Pahal, Farrow, Page, Oman, Millwood, all drivers who know each other very well. They're racing up already in numerous, uh, numerous years, of course. They've got a job right now which has closed down Max Jolly, and they are doing. 0.74 of a second was the gap at the end of lap number one at the end of lap number two it's still max jolly in the lead of this one but the gap actually no it's gone back out that was a mega third sector 
from Max Jolly back out to three quarters of a second. That could be quite key because if you're strong in sector number three, Henry, and you've got that drive out of the corner, you're going to be good on the run up to here, Christmas quarter. Here's a fight for fifth place. Yep. Owen, Millwood, Garrett, and Cook all getting involved. There's a little bit of tape or something. Yeah, that, off one that of was the just to maybe off one of the radiators, uh, poss possibly. Nothing to concern uh, the drivers about, but this could be game on. Now, uh, Arthur Faro. Uh, was challenging Dian Pahal going into Christmas Corner. Pahal held him off without losing too much, uh, you know, without losing too much ground to Max Jolly. Now, uh, Jolly is another great shot. Look at that over the curves of these drivers. These are our Micro Max drivers, aged eight. Eight, 9, 10, 11, they can't go up to 12. New pass is that for the race leader. Now, uh, that will be a signal. The second and third place drivers, and again, Fero looking to the inside, and again, Pahal closes the door. But they, uh, Pahal and Fero's team, they need to be signaling. Okay, the race leader is pulling away. Let's, you know, you could discuss who, who leads later on. At the moment, you're fighting over second, push together. Doesn't matter who's first and who's second pushing. The pair of you need to work together, or else uh, Jolly is going to uh, disappear off into the distance. Indeed. Oh, the closing, they're very good through sectors one and two. As Oh, lovely stuff down the inside there from the number 38 of Luke Millwood. Through as well as come Joshua Cook, who's having a good final so far. Had problems uh, that Nicole spoke uh, to him about in the... Uh, latter round of heat, but we know the pace is there for Joshua Cook, and there it is. New fastest lap of the race, 53.30 seconds. Still a good amount of time to go, of course. Here coming down the yep. inside is Millwood, helped by Cook once again. That's Charlie Page they've uh, just dispatched. So Millwood up to fourth, Cook up to fifth, Page down to sixth. And there, well, Page almost down to seventh because the number 11, Carlo Austin Oman, his dad Tristan would have been proud of that attempt. Certainly no shortage of guts and gumption from uh, young Austin Oman following in his father's footsteps. Uh, Alfie Garrett, James Roots and Elliot Travis. Remember, Travis, he's one to watch, qualified very well, ran up front yesterday, had a spin earlier on in the superheat and is now fighting back. And then there's the pair of zip drivers uh, chasing him. That would be Abrahart and Alfie Mayer. Alfie Mayer uh, from 20th on the grid to second. The gap between these two drivers, Dian Pahal and Arthur Faro, and the race leader, Max Jolly, it was six tenths of a second at the start of this lap. I think it's going to be a lot less when they come to the next timing split. It's down to five tenths of a second. Indeed, seven minutes to go in this one, still in the opening half of this one. There is the number 24 of Arthur Faro. Trying to just gauge, I think, at the moment for Arthur Faro. It's another driver with a good record round here, and I've seen him race at Wilton Mill before. Likes racing this course as that's uh, another move from Elliot Travis down the inside this time on James Roots for eighth place and likes to bide his time as well does Arthur Farrow the gap is down to 0.35 a second and Max Jolly now right now if you're Max Jolly the young driver it's a great experience to be up by the front but don't tighten up keep it loose yep. keep it smooth he's checking over the shoulder that's fine as here goes Farrow for another good run down this end. okay tell you what Pahal's got some really good speed yes at the, at the top end of Christmas yeah uh, I mean he's got that force motorsport Jordan Baines tuned engine on him uh, but what he also has is that he turns in late sharp and the car bites Grits. now yep. if I were Arthur Farrow I would now be abandoning my plans to try and pass Dian Bahal going up the hill towards Christmas. He's tried three times. Dian Bahal has taken the same line, the same speed every single time, and it hasn't worked. Now Dian Bahal is closing in with the leader. We're looking back at this battle at the at tail end of the top ten. That's Roots, Travis. Oh, dear. And that off. is one of the Sam Pollock racing drivers in the war it's harry radcliffe out of the race oh. now pahal is as close as he's ever been here are the leads trio and uh, oh thought it was going for a, a very light move there but well, well, i mean that's, that's, that's a, that's a unique line yes really good. yes five minutes and 20 to go oh, then oh, max jolly has now got a job on here because pahal and pharaoh are right there behind and luke millwood's 
got some good pace at the moment, helped by Josh Cook being the fastest driver still on the circuit, 52.97, so we're into the 52s now. Uh, the new track record is currently held by Josh Cook from earlier on in the weekend, a 52.52. Uh, so you can see that the pace is coming back to the drivers now. Five minutes to go. Very good run through the final couple of uh -oh. corners there for Max Jolly. I but is he now under a bit of threat? Because Dean uh, Mahal's going to be in the slipstream now, heading up to Christmas Corner. Harry Radcliffe has got back on, and he is... Here, here we is. go, though. Because I was going to say, as Dean Bahal takes the lead, or does he jolly round the outside? No, Bahal leads. They're coming up on slower traffic. Harry Ratcliffe has got back into the race, and he's not far up the road there, just flashing through the, the top of the screen there. Now, the leaders and the top three are being caught by Millwood and Cook. Five drivers under a second uh, separate them. Well, this is what we want from a final here in the O plate. Jolly defending to the inside there against Arthur Farrow. This, this is the best opportunity now for Dean Pahal to race off the front. Needs a strong lap here to hold that lead. And it's always oh. side by side for the lead. Pahal oh. and Jolly down towards Oblivion. This is what we've been thinking about with the changes. Pahal defends well, but it's got to get across to drivers right. Jolly's got the overlap. He's oh, on the curb there. Through Ooh. fine ladies Three down wide. the inside. Three wide with Farrow on the outside. Jolly goes through into the lead. Millward hops through into second place. What a beautiful bit of cart positioning there. And is now going for the lead. Millward down the out inside into Ashby Corner to the front of the O Plate final with three and a half minutes to play. Well, the KR Sport Junior Division uh, have a race leader in Luke Millward. He raced with Toby George Motorsport last year. Now Toby George running the KR Sport Junior uh, program. Dean Bahal fought back into second position. Millwood, though, and talk about experience. Millwood's got that experience. He went out to the Tillotson T4 World Finals in Valencia last year as part of Team UK. So he's got that experience of racing at an international level. Talk about tightening up, Andrew. He is one driver that won't tighten up under pressure. Oh. Pahal, what a move to the inside. Dear Bahal has got the front end of that cart on rails turning in. What a move. Came from a long way back, but had it under control at all times. Bahal checks over the shoulder. Fifth. Sees that Jolly is still there. Josh Cook is now up to third. I've got to say, I think J uh, Josh Cook is the, is the danger driver yep. here. The best pace, raw pace, I'd say is in that number nine. But Bahal has track position. Two and a quarter minutes to go. Fair Through play. the chicane once again. Can Pahal hold on to this? And they're still catching up to that traffic. I it's Harry Radcliffe say, up yeah. ahead. Fair play to Dean Pahal. The last time I saw a dive that deep was when my ex was going through the history folder on my laptop. Great stuff. Uh, Harry Radcliffe pulls to one side. Good driving there from, ha uh, from Radcliffe to not get involved in this battle. Max Jolly's trying different things now. Knows that the move into Christmas is probably not going to work because Pahal is just so strong through that portion of the circuit. The question is, where is the move possible now for Max Jolly? Is it on into Otis? This is an opportunity for drivers, but no, not this time. Jolly just holds it. It's a very well-driven race, this, from these five young drivers. The waiting, the knowing that it's a bit too early to give it the last big send when you've still got a minute and a half remaining on the clock and, of course, the plus one lap oh. through the chicane again. Look at the millimetre perfection of these young drivers through that final corner. One, two, three, four, five. I'll tell you what, Alfie Garrett's not out of this yet as well. He's yeah, only no. one and a half second. Well, he's one yeah. second off the back of this group. If they Here do start we... fighting, and they have started fighting, Jolly down the inside for the lead of the race. He's got to get the speed off the corner right because Pahal's going to come back. Beautifully positioned yet again by Jolly. But now the undercut indeed down into the hill. Pahal retakes the lead. Have they run too much wide? Josh Cook's now wheel to wheel with Max Jolly on the outside for Wilkins. That's the opportunity for Farah to hop back up to third place. Now into second place. This is going to invite Garrett and Page back into this fight. One and a half seconds covers the top seven. That is Cook down the inside. So it's Pahal. Uh, from Pharaoh Cook, that is your one, two, three, two more laps. Yes, indeed, 20 seconds, and you can see the frantic, the hand signals going, it's all now one. It's push, push, 
push. Go, go, go. It's Pahal from Pharaoh, from Cook Jolly. Here comes Arthur Pharaoh, and I said oh. I would have ball, and he's got in front of the thing. I, I did say earlier on he's got to abandon that, but it's learning, he's learning, he's learning. Pahal was always going to turn, and that's Pahal's line. So we're now down to six at the front, and Charlie Page and Alfie Garrett, they had to uh, take evasive action. Joshua Cook is the record holder around this new layout at Wilton Mill. Joshua Cook needs the lap of his young racing life to find a way past the ever impressive Dean Pahal here this weekend in the O plate. Time has expired. Final lap board is going to be out. There it is. It's a very good run for Pahal out of pit oh. bend through oblivion. That's Hold oblivion gone. Very strong, of course, up into Christmas, but here comes Cook. Cook with a great run up the hill. He's going to have to do it round the outside when we know how strong Pahal is on Apex through Christmas and has done so again. Here, here comes, comes Jolly Max on Jolly. the outside. Is there a move down the inside for Cook? He's having a little look at it. Jolly's having a, a think about it as well. That's Ashby gone. The corners are ticking on by for Dean Pahal to take victory in the open. Here's the opportunity for Josh Cook down the inside. Wheel to it's wheel. Orteous. Has he made the move? He has. Josh Cook takes the lead. The boot remaining. The first part is a key overtaking opportunity. Oh, no. Boom goes Pahal. Off goes Jolly. Another driver is the number 38 of Millwood as well. Josh Cook from the fourth, the fifth row of the grid, becomes O-plate champion in Mini and Micro Max for 2024. He waited, Henry. He knew he'd have one opportunity yep. to take the win, and he did it. And again, you look at that, the number nine plate on the cart. Josh Cook finished ninth in last year's British Championship. It was that little bit of extra experience that got it on the day, he, you know, Perfect timing, and sadly, Pahal and Jolly, who controlled, let's say controlled, they were first managed. and second for much of that race. They managed to cover cover. Jolly finishing eighth, uh, and uh, further down the order was Dia Pahal uh, in 16th position. And they will be two drivers who will contend for a British title this year, I am sure. Looking down the order there, Harper Das, Harry Radcliffe finishing down the order, Chester Forks, Benedict Das Masiokas, Al Albert and Arthur Faro. Well, Arthur Faro, great drive from Arthur, but it's Cook, Page, Garrett, Roots, Abrahart, and May from uh, 20th to 6th, <laughs> Oman, Jolly, Hauschka, and Millwood, but uh, Max Jolly. Uh, we'll pick them up. There's Max Jolly uh, going through there. The number 14, uh, just behind Dian Pahal. Those are, karting is a tough sport. It makes there are not many weak individuals, and I mean weak by weak-minded, in this sport. These kids, and they are kids, they learn how to take their licks early on. They, they, they bounce back there for every, and there's happiness. Charlie Page and the mums. You know, they're, they're, they're there, you know. It's just the end of the day, you just want to give your, your, your son or daughter a big hug at the end of a race. I just want to say one more thing on Dean yes. Pahal. The last, the last time I saw Dean race was, yep. at, I think, at Warden Law uh, at the back He's end of last year. He's a different driver. Uh, worlds different. The, the, the rate of, of improvement for Dean Pahal, I think you're absolutely right. And I it's not the result that Dean would have wanted today, but there is a driver who is going to be a, a force to be reckoned with Absolutely. in this year's Virtuals British and Car I Championship. And I had a long conversation with Dean's dad last year. Now, they, you know, they've, they, they've got an old bus, an old minibus. Mm. They've converted it to a workshop. And, and, you know, and Dean's dad said, well, there are a couple of people in the paddock have said, you know, oh, they made a bit of fun of me uh, because I got a bus. So I got to, I got to do what I got to do to keep Dean racing. Yeah. You know, we've got a couple of little sponsors that help us out. But yeah, you know what? At the back of an old minibus, that's how we're going to do things. But, oh, there's Max Jolly. Let's have a little look at the highlights, and there were many. So we've got a 12-minute highlight package to bring you now <laughs> for that race. Uh, it was a great start there. Now, Dia Pahal from six. He gets a really good run. There he is, third cut in line. Look at him duck under the inside. The front end of that cart was excellent. It really was a great piece of engineering. That was Maximilian Eberhardt taking a, a, a rough tumble through the uh, exit of Ozias there. Uh, the race early on. Uh, got into a good rhythm. Uh, some drivers coming through the field, such as Josh Cook, Alfie Mayer as well. Uh, drivers, the 
improvements for the drivers through that final chicane over the last two weeks have been a testament to this field. This was the first key move, and the first time that we saw Dean Pahal, the front end of that car, oh, Christmas yes. corner was the strength. You see so many times drivers yep. dive for the a early apex through Christmas and run on. That was a key factor straight away. Well, that's Max Jolly fouled, tried to find space every time, but Pahal just kept holding it round the outside. That eventually was the point at which Jolly came through, but it brought others into play. Millwood, Cook, Farrow, who were all there to try and take this oak plate. Yeah, but that's what you want as a driver. Look, car turns in, change direction, you, hold, you turn the wheel once, the front end bites, and the back end doesn't bog down, but it doesn't try to come around on you. And that's that sign of a very well set up pointed cart. Now at this point, Bahala done very well here to keep uh, Jolly behind, and I was thinking to myself, okay, that's where, you know, they're running out of service. Now it all starts to get loose. Pharaoh had to go for his move there, but Bahala was always gonna turn in, that was his line, but uh, learning now, Josh Cook, a bit more experienced than Pharaoh, start setting up Dian Bahal for the move, half a lap from home. Yeah, and made the key move uh, into Otis. It's more, though, most likely the last opportunity that Cook uh, and that would was, have had. That was Alfie Garrett and Charlie Page celebrating second and third. Brilliant. That was that was brilliant. You know, they're not O plate winners, but they're second and third. A great result for them. And uh, you know, it, it, the Coles going to have some very very happy Micromax drivers. I think Charlie Page is, a, is another one for, compared to the last time I saw Charlie race. Yep. Uh, he's raced here quite a few times, uh, but a, a huge step forward, and that'll Absolutely. be a result that they uh, remember for a very long time. What a race. Let's head down to Nicole Sutherland. She's going to get the thoughts of the drivers from that Micromax UK final. So we are here with Micromax P3 finisher, Alfie. Alfie, how was your race? Um, it was pretty good. Um, some disasters went, came in front on the last lap, so I just went down the inside and that's how I got third. That's great. And is there anybody you want to thank for this weekend? My mum and my dad. Great. Very best. Well done for, for the, your result, Harry, and good luck for the rest of your season. Thanks. We're just going to catch up with P2 as well. So, P2, come over. Charlie, how was your race? Good. It, it was really hard because um, he was on, on my bumper the whole race, so it was really hard, and then he overtook me. I pushed him for a couple of laps, and then the front, the front four, five, I think, they, they all tangled up, so, and then I came second. Is there anybody you want to thank for this weekend as well, Charlie? Matt Shoya, my mum, my dad, Alfie, my mechanic, and my nan, my nan, my dad, and my grandpa, and my sister. Great. Well, very well done. We'll see you in a little bit for your trophy presentation. We're going to catch up as well with our provisional O-Play race winner, Josh. Josh, we caught up with you on the grid and you said that you felt confident that you could make some places up and you definitely have. Can you tell us a bit about the race? Start just thought I had to get through and well, got a bit stuck in P5, but in the last lap overtook Deanne for P1 and that's it. P10 to P1, pretty impressive result. I'll give you your provisional O plate and is there anybody you'd like to thank for that one? My dad, KR Junior, KR Engines, my mum, Luke Connor, Louis Connor, um, Toby, George. Congratulations, Josh. Josh, we'll just throw back up to the comms box with Henry for our next race of the day. Uh, thank you very much, Nicole. Uh, getting ready uh, soon for uh, the next race. If you're just joining us, welcome to live coverage of the 2024 British O Plate, the uh, Rotax and Honda British Open Championship, organised, of course, by uh, Motorsport UK. Uh, first meeting for the new season of the Vera Tools British Kart Championships. Andrew Mather uh, and Henry Baudet on commentary duties for you throughout the day. Two more races to enjoy here at Wilton Mill. The, uh, the first one of those two going uh, off of the formation lap in around uh, well, less than seven minutes time. Uh, half past three, it'll be time for the Honda Cadets to take to the circuit for their 12 minute plus one lap final. There you see uh, a selection of the Honda Cadet GX200 runners uh, just 
getting everything set before moving into the uh, into the dummy grid. Conditions here right now. We had a little bit of rain earlier on today, a bit of drizzle around uh, around one o'clock, but. Uh, Really, it's, it's apart from that, it's, it's been a dry tyres day. The track is fully dry now. This, of course, altered uh, layout at Wilton Mill uh, with the new chicane. Uh, this is, uh, in fact, a little bit of history. This is the last, uh, it's the first, sorry, final in Honda Cadet GX200 on this new layout because uh, they weren't part of the, uh, there wasn't a Honda field at the uh, go kart, at the kart club event last weekend. And uh, 18 drivers due to go out on circuit for this one. Uh, an illustrious list of names have been Honda Cadet O Plate champion. And uh, last year it was uh, Kian Bernard, who was the winner ahead of Theo Bradshaw and Ralphie Branscombe. Branscombe is in this field, starts on the third row of the grid. Uh, before that, Kenzo Craigie, 2022 O Plate champion. Noah Wolf, 2021, all three of those last winners have uh, proceeded on to the next stage and further uh, with some great performances over the years. You look further back, of course, 2019, Connor Duncan was the O-plate winner in Honda Cadet. 2017, Lucas Ellingham, uh, a, a, an expert of this circuit. We'll see Lucas uh, later on this afternoon uh, in the senior Rotax final. If you go a little bit further back, you've got names such as Ollie Behrman and uh, Jess Hawkins, who have their names on the uh, on the list of honour for Honda Cadet uh, O-Plate winners. So 18 of them uh, getting ready for this one. Keep your comments coming in. Let us know who you are uh, supporting in this race or uh, the seniors as well. Don't forget the senior Rotax final is coming up after this one as well. So don't worry if you are of a senior Rotax supporting uh, mind. Don't worry, you haven't missed uh, their important race uh, so far today. Uh, if you have missed any of the races from either today or yesterday, remember we had all of the heats uh, for you live here from Wilton Mill. That's going to be something that we're going to be doing all the way through uh, 2024. Every single uh, Vera Tools British Kart Championships event uh, broadcast live Saturday and Sunday. Henry Bodet rejoins me in yes. the commentary box. I'm looking forward to this one. The Honda Cadet, Wilton Mill. It's always oh, a great yes, combination. yes. And, um, you know, I have got my, uh, you know, I'm, I'm very, very grateful to mm. uh, Maria Cox um, for uh, presenting me with um, Gerard's much beloved, well worn bucket hat, which uh, I constantly refer to him as though he had just come back from a weekend at Glastonbury or a Stone Roses <laughs> concert. And, um, yeah, this is a, a, a class that is so close to the heart of Gerard, the, the training ground for so many, many young drivers. Yeah. Uh, you can see the white, the green and the red of the Project One team, uh, the Project One cart, the chassis the team. And uh, there are many, many people in this paddock that owe their time in karting or their start to uh, a much missed friend. And uh, some of these young drivers, they will, you know, it's uh, it's a it's a very uh, it, it's, it's it's karting, yes, it gets you. And uh, Nicole Sutherland is down on the grid now. So we'll be walking onto the pre-grid today with Ed Spain. Ed will be starting his final third. Ed, what do you think of today? So yeah, I think it's went really well, but um, we can't say it until this happens. And are you feeling confident that you can maybe get that O-plate win? Yeah, I'm going to try. And these races are always exciting. You never know what's going to happen. So are you thinking, do you have any tactics at all? Or are you just going to go into it with an open mind? I'm just going to go into it with an open mind and see how it plays out. Hope to come first over the finish line. Great. Very best of luck to you, Ed. We'll let you get concentrated. We'll just work our way down the grid, maybe her from our pole, sorry, second row. Oh no, we are on pole. I think they just started a, a position behind. We'll have a quick chat with Kev, Kevin Ivanov. Excuse me? If I'm uh, not in his dad's way. Kevin, how are you feeling ahead of this race? Um, feeling decent. Anything can happen, just wishing for the best. And you've had a great weekend so far. You said earlier that the Zipcart factory team were happy. And are you happy so far? Yep. 
Well, very best of luck to you, Kevin. Just work our way down the grid. Talk to our Project One driver who will be starting on the second row. Can you just tell us a little bit about how your day's been so far and what you're thinking for the final? Um, my day's been all right. Um, we haven't been able right. to find set up this weekend. Um, the first heat, um, I came, the second heat, sorry, today I came um, 11th to, sorry, 14th to 5th. So I'm pretty happy with that. Um, I've got pace, so hopefully I can be in the battle by the last lap to see if I can win it, yeah. That's great. And Honda Cadets, even though they're the youngest drivers at the event, it's always an exciting one. We'll head back up to the comms box now with Henry and Andrew, and they'll introduce the race. Oh, yes, and we will. 17 drivers. Uh, very sadly, Albie Smith won't be out wow. there. Um, we saw him have an incident earlier on, but I can see him, and he's watching, and he's thinking to himself, right, if I can't get the old plate in 2024, how am I going to get the old plate in 2025? And he's there thinking so. Now, right, let's talk about the drivers that are out there, because we are going to be going racing very shortly. But of course, this is the Vera Tours British Kart Championship, and we are so grateful for Vera's support. All set for racing here at Wilton Mill. The Honda Cadet GX200 Final Four. The O-Plate in 2024 uh, with a grid that looks uh, a little bit like this. The uh, the lights will uh, shine green in a short few moments' time and then we'll run you through going to say, yeah, there's order. no rolling laps to stand yes, and start. Right, start. Kevin Ivanov, Margaris Kavakis, Ed Spain, Ryan White, Ralphie Branscombe, Luke McGall. On the fourth row of the grid, Keen Sullivan and Elliot Bork, Ronnie Smart and Archie Cannon, uh, Ricky McIntosh and Harry Grant on row six, row seven, Jack Fulbrook, Harmer and Shea Hilton, Andrew Sutherland, Shea and uh, C. Creighton, and away we go then for the formation Ah, it will lap. be a formation lap. I was uh, there thinking, I, I, I assumed that it would be, uh, not this, as, as my, my, my bad that we rushed the grid there, apologies to the 17 drivers, we did get them all in, you know, because uh, uh, I, I apologise to the disembodied voice in my yeah. head, uh, that's Margaris Kavekis, he's the second driver starting on the front row today to spin on the rolling lap, can he get back in, well he should get back into his grid position, so the disembodied voice in my head is upset with me, which is very, very difficult to be upset with when I can't see the disembodied voice in my head. It's like I'm having an argument with myself. Now, the question is, is, is Kovacis, it's just a stay yeah. calm moment now, and he's oh, well, furious yeah, with himself. Yes. That's, that's understandable. Hopefully he'll be able to, uh, to get back into that second place on the grid. The other thing to remember as well, 17 cart field. Well, we yes. saw Jacob Ashcroft come through from the very back to finish in fourth. Uh, over 12 minutes in Junior Rotax earlier. Yes. That is a slightly saving grace for Quebec is that if he yes. does have to start out the position, he's still got 12 minutes and less carts to overtake to get back to the front. Yes, yes. And he's still staying at the back. Now, there, there's obviously a regulation about where you have to be. Now, ah, now, there's Dan Ashton telling the drivers. So this is key. So Quebec is is there at the back now he's going to try and communicate with dan ashton uh, i don't think he's having so quebec is starting from the back of the grid drama before we get to the start and dan ashton saying okay you be careful uh, yeah, he, it, well right. done good communication there from dan ashton to the young drivers we wait for the lights the lights go out and we're off and racing 12 minutes then for Honda Cadet GX200. Good start for Kevin Ivanov. 
for Skip Factory. They took a 1-2 in this race last year, and it's a good start for them. Where is Marguerite Kabakis? He's going to be looking. He's already got past four drivers by the time they've run up to Christmas Corner. Yes. That's a very good start for the Lithuanian privateer down the hill then towards Ashby Corner for the first time. Perhaps to report all 17 drivers running. There is Kovekis down oh, the inside. He's to keep it calm. The, yes. He's just enrolled in the Jacob Ashcroft School of Aggression. Uh, <laughs> uh, and it went a little bit too wide there, but uh, he's still got time. Now, the problem that he does have, though, is Kevin Ivanov is trying to clear off, off ahead of this trio of cars. Ryan White, Ed Spain, Ralphie Branscombe, Luke McGaw, Kean Sullivan. So one driver, the pink crash armor there, the number 96, Ralphie Branscombe. We saw it earlier on. There's one driver that can manage a race, and wait, is Ralphie Branscombe. Uh, so he'll be he'll be, be a very smart driver, is Branscombe. Um, don't really get it. If you see his dad, you haven't got a clue where he gets it from. I'm <laughs> only joking. Uh, as Branscombe goes through, so passes the number 14 card of Elliot Bork down the hill towards Ashby. Uh, here's Margaris Kavakis, and this time he does get the cart turned in in time. The number 88 cart there, uh, Shay Hilton, was running a little bit wide, but Kavakis learned, and you know, he's learned from his mistake coming into Ashby on lap number one. Got it sorted this time. The problem he has is that we're starting to spread out a little bit. Those two cars, they're not teammates, they're very similarly livery, though. Ricky McIntosh Jr. and Harry Grant. Yeah, that's the, uh, that's the battle for 10th well, place. At the I'm going to invoke there. That reminds me of the old Delta karting liveries from many moons ago. And uh, there are a couple of Delta karting drivers still here in the paddock. Uh, but yeah, a lot of uh, old school mention from the Delta karting uh, days. Uh, here we go. There's a Project One kart going up the inside. And that would be Ronnie Smart picking off Elliot Bork for sixth position. Very good stuff from Ronnie Smart, very good stuff as well from Ryan White, his Project One teammate, who has set the fastest lap of the race so far. 0.48 seconds behind Ivanov, needs to keep working there with Ed Spain in the number 72 to close that gap in. This is a key phase of this race. Yes, there are nine and a half minutes of it to go, but if Ivanov can break away, get, you know, a two-second lead, maybe even three-second yep. lead, that's going to be very hard for the rest of the field to pull back. It may be an altered Wilton Mill, but it's still that same ethos of got to use your head round this circuit when you're racing in Honda Cadets. It's a, it's a level that teaches drivers so much about racecraft. Even of giving it everything he can, 53.94. As here comes Branscombe, third in this race last year. Is out oh, as Keith Sullivan. Sullivan. Keith Sullivan, one of the front runners in this race, is not going to oh. see the chequered flag towards the front of the order. Stops on Lap four, we're not sure what's happened to him as Kovekis yeah. is on the move now. Kovekis now up to 11th, make that 10th yes. with uh, the demise of the number 26. Yes, indeed. Now, out of Oziers, onto the sort of the infield straight towards the boot. There is Elliot Bork. Now, we saw him lose a couple of positions in that number 14 zip cart. Now he's looking to try and gain a couple of places back. Archie Cannon in the number 42 is directly in front of him. Then it is the number 51 of Ronnie Smart. So that's the battle on your screen of 6th, 7th and 8th. Behind them is now uh, Margaris Kavekis. So Margaris is closing in. He is... 5.6 seconds, there he is, the black and white, the, I said the karting zebra um, of Margaris Kavekis. He's got clean track in front of him. Can he close in without the aid of a slipstream or somebody pushing behind? Ivanov only leads by seven tenths of a second. That's good news because Ryan White is clo he's close enough to maybe put him under a little bit of pressure if he can get some help for the number 72 cart of Ed Spain. Tenth and a half has been taken out by Ryan White so far in sectors one and two. So expect that lap, uh, that gap to be coming down uh, as we go round another lap. 0.79 was the gap at the end of lap number four. It's 0.61. So White and Spain just need to keep doing as they are, keep pushing along. They are pulling the leader back in. They may also get some help from behind as well because Ralphie Branscombe has just set a really nice bit of pace there. 53.86, new fastest lap of the final so far. Top four covered by a second. Yes, they are into uh, Ashby's. And uh, 
We'll have a little look there. The, uh, the, the zip cut of Kevin Ivanov. The gap has shrunk to half a second. It was seven tenths of a second. We could have a four, possibly a five car battle because Luke McGall is hanging with Ralphie Branscombe. Branscombe is the fastest driver on circuit at the moment. Last time around, 53.86 for Branscombe. New fastest lap. There's Kavekis, and Kavekis is closing in on this next group of cards. Six minutes to go. Six minutes okay. to go, indeed. Plus a lap. Yep, plus a lap. Now, if Kavekis, and it's a big if, Kavekis needs to get past uh, those three drivers, these three drivers, that is Smart, Cannon and Bork. He needs to get past them without losing realistically any time. It's going to be three quick, decisive manoeuvres that doesn't cost him any momentum and, does, and, and neither of these three drivers can fight back. If he can do that, then the way that the top five are looking, they're going to battle, they're going to slow each other down. I am a betting man, that's why I drive a very small rubbish car. <laughs> but I would say that if you can do that, Kavakis isn't out of a chance of winning yet. Yet, but it's uh, the time's ticking yeah, on by time, five and Time half is not Kavakis' friend right now. Branscombe's got the pace from the, uh, from the back of this group as well. That's another purple lap time for Alfie Branscombe, pushing those two carts ahead, White and Spain, towards the leader, if you Kevin. Even of right now, it's stay calm. We've said it already today in other classes. When you're in this position, don't get tight at the steering wheel. Don't grip it tighter. Don't try and drive harder than you've done so far. Keep doing what you're doing. This is the nature of Honda Cadet. And if there's one driver who knows that, it's Ryan White, the reigning British car champion in Honda Cadet. That super run through the second half of the season uh, in 2023 that gave him the honor of the one plate. What a great story it would be for another strong result for Project One Racing in, uh, in this year's O-Plate. Many, many times we've seen a Project One Racing machine towards the front in this race, and we're seeing so again. Four minutes, 40 to go. What is the gap? What are those gaps doing across the top nine? It's pretty stable across the top four. Luke McGall, a little bit isolated at the moment there in fifth. That sixth, seventh, eighth battle, though, is starting to fall back. That is mm, not good news no. if your Margaret Quebec is because your gap to the leaders is, is now growing, extending up. Yes. It's a wall. It's an impregnable wall at the moment. Smart Cannon and Bork from uh, for Quebec is to get through and he's seeing his opportunity of being on that podium slip away. Yeah, they are one. Now, okay, so oh no. And again, coming into Wilkins, he again he wants to be careful. The last thing he wants to do is take himself out, take another uh, one of those drivers out. The first uh, cart he's gonna try and get past is Elliot Bork. Uh, he's had one little nibble at the inside and uh, Bork defend or didn't defend, but Bork, you know, wasn't, you know, at Margaret wasn't going to get by. Uh, we'll have to see now. Three, four minutes to go. And uh, yeah, I, I mean, okay, two minutes to go, he, he had a chance. Now, unfortunately, I think it's probably game over. We've got a new race leader, Ryan White, in the number one plate, takes the lead away from Kevin Ivanov. And the entire weekend, White has been struggling, struggling, struggling. He spoke to Nicole Sutherland on the grid um, and said, you know, we haven't had the setup, right? Ivanov coming straight back at him, coming into Wilkins. Oh, oh and uh, that's White over the grass, down to fourth place. And uh, right, OK, Ryan, you've got to keep both hands on the steering wheel. I know that you're probably not a, a, a bit upset about that, but... Carts go faster when you've got both hands on the wheel. And there's still a chance to win this. It's going to be less than a second covering the top four still. That's good news for Luke McGall, all of that fighting. It's brought him into play now. So it's one, two, three, four, five, with three minutes remaining on and counting. Fighting for the lead here at Wilton Mill for the Honda Cadet O Plate 2024. What is the gap to Group 2 like? Never mind that right now. Branscombe down the inside using the experience of 12 months ago when he finished third in the O-plate here at Wilton Mill. Hits the front, two and a half minutes to go. Is Ivanov, Ivanov going to strike back straight away? Because that's the best time when you've, when you've been overtaken. Yep. The best time to re-overtake is in. straight away. That's good positioning once again from Ralphie Branscombe. Holds onto the lead, has a check over the shoulder, gives himself a little kick in the seat to yeah. say, come on, we've got this. Two minutes to go. And Ed Spain's still there as well Ooh. in third place. Yeah. Good catch by Ivanov having a slide through the final chicane. I was going to say, you've got to channel your inner Dave Goddard to go wallop straight in. 
It's a banger racing uh, commentary uh, tactic there, that is. Okay, uh, big banger racing me down in uh, East Anglia mm. this weekend. Oof, can't wait. A bit of banger racing. Not on the track, though. This is go-karting. And Ralph Vibranscombe holds off Kevin Ivanov as they come through Inkermans down the bottom now. What can Ryan White do from fourth? What can Ed Spain do from third? Margaris Kavekis is into sixth position. 90 seconds, six and a half seconds. It's he needs a, big, a lot to it's happen. A, well, he needs an awful lot to happen. Uh, you know, and of course, no, nothing like that's happened in any of the previous races that we've seen. Ivanov back to the front as we head into the boot. Really good move there from Ivanov. There's still going to be a number of laps of this one to go. Let's check what the time is going to be like as they come out. Oh, there's going to be three more laps to go here, yeah. Oh, yes. Just over a minute remaining on the clock, and we're doing 53 point something lap times. There is Kovekis in the back of shot. Clear now of Cannon, Bork and Smart. What kind of pace has he got? He's going to ha he's needing oh. the biggest fight in the world. Well. Front, but if there's one class that's <laughs> going to do it, it's Honda Cadet. Uh, he needs the biggest fight in the world. As Ryan White and Ed Spain go wheel to wheel, side by side, all the way across the top through Inkermans and down towards Ashby. And now side by side for the race lead. You know what? Margaris Kovakis is thinking himself, I, I know it's Easter oh. Sunday, but could it be Christmas Day? And Brands come over the grass, straight back on, and we're down to three for the lead group. Brands come though, keep your head, they're going to get two more laps uh, after, uh, after this one. So they're going to cross the line with 10 seconds or so to go. Brands come in fifth, he's got to get his head down. Kovekis has already gained one second. I, uh, yes. And getting closer all the time. <laughs> so the time now has expired. The next time around, they'll see last lap board. Ivanov, defense to the inside. A little bit of encouragement from, uh, from Spain there onto Ryan White. Ryan White, who's won so many of these Honda Cadet races over the last 12 months. Can he do it here in the O plate? Kevin Ivanov, who's been superb so far this weekend. Here comes down the inside at Spain. Good defence there from uh, from Ryan White round the outside. Here comes Luke McGall down the inside, side by side for the lead once again between White and oh, they're hooked together. They're yes, they've got a little bit of slow there down the inside. Here comes the 35 of Luke McGall. They're still all in play, Henry. One yes. more lap to go. Can Kevin Ivanov hold on? Well, Luke McGall hasn't led an entire lap all weekend. He goes into the final lap of the O plate, running in second and chasing down Kevin Ivanov. Ivanov looks over his shoulder, doesn't defend. That's significant. They're tripping over each other for second, third, fourth and fifth. This is now Ivanov's race to win. It's now Zip Cart's race to lose. There is McGall defending second. We don't know who's going to be on the podium. We don't indeed. Spain down the inside takes uh, White's fourth place. White fives back. Oh, five second in time race penalty for the number 50. Kevin this is Ivanov. the battle for this the win. This is the fight for the O plate in 2024. It's not going to go the way of Zip Factory team for a second year in a row. This it's is the fight into the final chicane. Bradscombe's got Branscombe's it. going to take this. Ralphie Branscombe is going to become O plate champion in Honda Cadet for 2024 in the most dramatic scene you've seen today. It's Ivanov on the road, but a play Plus five second penalty for cart number 50, which has come up on our timing screens here in the box, means he will drop to fifth place. Branscombe takes it from McCall. Spain on the podium as well. Wow. And I just looked at the middle. Ralphie Branscombe's parents. What an absolute, you know, the joy. Uh, they realised, you know what, that's... Uh, I, I'm not sure what the in-race penalty was for. There was an incident with you know, Branscombe. There was an incident with Ryan White. But uh, we won't reflect on that. What we will reflect on is the fact that uh, Ralphie Branscombe, arms aloft as he crosses the line. And what cart does Alfie Branscombe drive? He drives a Project One. And Gerard would be very, very, very proud of the way in which he did that. Ivanov... Oh, but there it is, there it is. And uh, Ralphie Branscombe, the LMM, well, he's entered as a privateer. Um, 
But yeah, and I've got to say, you know, as a, you know, yes. Project really? One, Gerard Cockney, very, very proud of you. A lot of people, a lot of people in this paddock that we're very pleased. Just uh, Project One is the British Open champion in 2024. And look at that. You don't need words. I'm going to shut up. You don't need words. That is what it means. Ralphie Branscombe joins a very, very illustrious yes. list of champions who have gone on to great things and that's very good to see as well and he very always sporting gets moment between so and much he all, uh, Ralphie, Ralphie Branscombe always gets so much support on the uh, the live chat which uh, which again you know is is fantastic um, you know that was an absolutely crazy race well, it, was, it was a cadet it was a Honda cadet race that's all you need to know now uh, I, we're gonna wait there's gonna be mum and dad are gonna come in into the picture in a minute yeah there's Margaris Kavekis Oh, Penny for his thoughts. What I'm just going to say about Margaret Quebec, kind of similar to what we said with Jacob Ashcroft yes. when he had the same mistake. Yep. He'll be gutted. Yep. He'll be really disappointed. But we've got to remember, this is this is a young driver who's only just come into the world of owner karting. Yeah, yeah. Last year was doing arrive and drive, you know, further down the karting pathway, showed his talents, and That's he's converted here. He's got he's done a lot of great even, work this even weekend. Even more impressive in that case. So Ryan White briefly took the lead. At this point, you can see Branscombe there in fourth position. White and Ivanov, they dispute the top spot for most of, much of the race. Wheel to wheel, side by side. That was uh, one incident that Ryan White ran wide. Now, Branscombe, he had a little uh, go for the race lead, but Branscombe also ended up uh, dropping back a little bit further back, going over the grass, coming out of Ozier's. And... Uh, not on this occasion, so Branscombe did have the lead. Luke McGall, there in the number 35 cart, was just there. Smart drive again from Luke McGall. Here is, now this is uh, another issue. So Branscombe to the inside and uh, up over the back of uh, Ivanov's cart there. Uh, and then Ryan White uh, went for it with Ivanov. It was wheel-to-wheel -wheel stuff, but uh, as they came out of the final court, he just got the bumper hooked on the front of his cart. And I thought Luke McCall might just snatch the win here, having not led a lap all day. But this was the move eventually decide the Open Championship. Brands can go around the outside of McCall at the boots, holding off. We were saying all weekend, we haven't had a side-by-side -side moment coming into the new corner. When we got it there, it was for a British Open title. It was indeed. Great celebrations in Park Ferme at the end for Ralphie Branscombe. As you say, third last year, he stayed in Honda Cadet and uh, can be very proud of his name being added to uh, the, uh, the Open Champions list for Honda Cadet. Very much looking forward to seeing how Ralphie Branscombe gets on now for the rest of the season. Let's head down to Park Ferme for the penultimate time today and Nicole Sutherland is going to have the thoughts of the drivers. We're here with Ed Spain, Honda Cadet third place finisher. Ed, fantastic race, really exciting. How was that for you? Yeah, it was very tough about all the battles all over the track, so yeah. And catching up with you earlier on in the weekend, you said this is only your second year of racing, so really great result. Yeah, it is. And is there anybody you'd like to thank for this weekend? Yeah, I'd like to thank Ambition Motorsport for the setup um, and the driver coaching, and I'd like to thank my sponsor, SMS. Well, congratulations, Ed. We'll catch up with you later on on the podium. We're just going to go to our Honda Cadet second place finisher. Second place, really great result and really, really amazing race. Can you just tell us a little bit about it? Um, so it was it was very close, like so close. It was just down the um, oh, into the boot. He got me round the outside. Got the benefit on the corner. So, but still happy with the result. Definitely great res result overall. And is there anybody you'd like to thank? Um, well, I'd like to thank John that runs the team for setting up the cart and getting it perfect. Um, I'd like to thank Mum and Dad for, well, just being on the um, go, just helping out with everything. So, yeah. 
Well, congratulations. Thanks very much. We'll also speak to our provisional O-Plate race winner, which is Ralphie Branscombe. Ralphie, what a race. How was that for you? It, it was lovely. I just, I, I felt like, when, as soon as I saw that five second come up, I was like, yes, this is it. Yeah, and uh, we definitely heard a lot of excitement from family and friends over there. Is any, anybody you'd like to thank in particular for this weekend? My mum and dad for paying for it all, LMM Motorsports for giving me this lovely car. And I would just like to thank all my sponsors like Adrenico, Sharp, JCC Young Ones and Go Bobby. Congratulations, Ralphie, provisional winner. Here is your 2024 O-Plate. And a what? very well done to uh, to Ralphie Branscombe and uh, yeah, what yeah. a lovely bunch of interviews there oh. by Ralphie and by uh, you know about uh, uh, Luke McCall and, and Ed Spain. You know, really, really nice. Uh, you know, fantastic. Uh, Andrew, we got one race to go, and then the weekend is over. One race. Where has the time gone? It's senior Rotax. We had 60 plus drivers enter. Here is a very quick list of those drivers who haven't made the main event. Alex Duncan on a tiebreaker uh, misses out. Sadly, the, Hunter, the Scottish driver, the Hunter Motorsport driver, Sam Baker, Christoph Sala, Ethan Martin. So one of our Austrian drivers did not make it, Christoph Sala. Uh, Ethan Martin, Sam Longley, Ethan Ling missed out. If it hadn't been for the last lap of the superheat, Ling would be in, but he is sadly out. Ollie Goodyear, Luke Pate, 40, Matthew Lambert has made, has not made it. Neither is Ralph Jungling, uh, Ramirion Ubi, Reese Bailey, Willoughby Steele, uh, Dukas Prevalonis, Arthur Thacker, Max Taylor, Yannick Jacobs from Germany, Benjamin Southgate, John Brown, hope he's okay after his role this morning, Jack Gillingham, uh, Gemma Hyons, Caitlin Seabrook, Joshua Rudd, Les Taylor, and George Hunter. They're not in this race. Sadly, they failed to qualify. Nicole Sutherland will be getting ready and she'll be speaking to some of the drivers who have qualified. Uh, there in the foreground there, just turning us back to next to the driver, there's the gentleman with the blue Jack Dax race jacket. That's Alex Moody. You can see his faded race suit because he left his new race suit at home. Um, look at that. It's, it's not a red and white Cato Motorsport race suit. It's a pink and white um, uh, Cato Motorsport. Lucas Schlegel from Austria uh, for the Kraft Motorsport sport team. Lucas Schlegel has, has raced in the Rotax Grand Finals uh, the Potenza Engines team for the Kraft Motorsport team uh, the Gilbert family and you know yeah, Jan Stiak uh, and what have you they, they, the Kraft Motorsport team really smart livery cards mm -hmm. and going very well as well if you are looking for a under uh, uh, for a underdog terrible grammar Henry Baudet if you are looking for an underdog in this race look no further than Stefan Kazmarzik starting 31st. Gustav Usakov's down as a privateer. Spencer Brawl on the CRG 21st for cart number 65. If you're that way inclined, that is, and you want to cheer for an underdog, uh, Spencer Braum, uh, very, um, he's the driver that famously ended Anthony Jordan's career in the British Karting Championship when Anthony said, so you're trying to tell me this is easier and cheaper to race in Belgium than the, Brit in the British Championship. And then Anthony realised what he had said. <laughs> but Spencer Braum, uh, runner up, he's got the Team UK race suit on, uh, runner up, oh, he's, no, he's got a CRG race suit on, of course he has, Nathan Chafer is here. Uh, um, but he, uh, finished second in the Rotax E20 final. There is uh, the, the grid forming up. All the major players are there. Hunter, Higgins, Cunnington, you know, Dan Holland, Hunter Motorsport, Guy Cunnington Racing, KR Sport, Sam Pollitt Racing. Teddy Pritchard-Williams has told me I am going to be coming in this one. Don't you worry, I'm going for mm. it. Uh, he said, mark my words, I'm going towards the front. So watch for Teddy Pritchard-Williams standing there, Super Ted. There is Matthew Higgins. He's got the little cheeky Welsh dragon on the back of his crash helmet. And speaking of little cheeky chappies, there's Paul Spencer. Yeah, Paul. Um, uh, uh, for Strawberry, uh, Strawberry Racing Supremo. Uh, Miss Lomax is there with some curtains. Uh, 1998 called. They want your hair cut back, Reese. Uh, and there's Matt Cooley uh, showing uh, uh, the, the strawberry racing hoodie. And uh, we'll be getting ready to uh, speak to some of our contenders. 
uh, very, very shortly as we uh, look and wait the final race, Andrew Mather, of the weekend. Oh, it's been a super weekend, hasn't it, here at Wilton Mill to kick things off for this year's Vera Tools British Car Championships. And I know it sounds a little bit corny. I've been looking forward to this week, uh, this race all week, so it's going to be cracker. Before we get to it, though, let's head down to the grid and to Nicole Sullivan. Nicole, over to you. On the grid here, ahead of our Senior Rotax 2024 O-Plate final, just quickly catch up with pole sitter Kai Hunter. Hi, Kai. Hi, Nicole. Day so far, good? Yeah, I think it's been it's been a bit challenging with the weather. I think uh, in our last heat, obviously, it rained on slick, so I just wanted to keep it on the road so I can be starting pole for the main final. Yeah, and you're undoubtedly one of the most experienced drivers in the paddock now. In these races where it's much longer than the heats, how do you manage with the extra time, tyre management? I think uh, around here it's obviously quite abrasive, so you can't just go full, uh, full out too soon. So, But I think it is a final, so I'm going to give it everything I've got. Well, best of luck to you, Kai. Thank you. Just see if we can quickly catch you up with another driver. We'll interrupt Caden McQueen's fun. Caden, Rotax O-Plate, how are you feeling? Yeah, uh, confident. I think we've got the speed. I think uh, we made a little mistake in the pre-final, which meant that we didn't start as far up as we should, but we've definitely got the speed and uh, the knowledge of the track to, to do something with it. So, um, yeah, we'll just see how it goes and plan it out and make sure we make the right decisions. Well, very best of luck to you. Caden will throw back up to Henry and Andrew in the comms box. Thank you very much, Nicole. Yeah, really looking forward to this one, four o'clock here in the UK. If you're watching us uh, from around the world, live coverage of the 2024 British O-Plate, the British Open Championship, the last race of the weekend, the final for the senior Rotax O-Plate. Had a quick chat there with, of course, Kai Hunter, won this race last year and the year before that and in 2020 as well, looking to make it four from five in the seniors and uh, five from six across all, heats, uh, across all categories because let's not forget he won the junior one back in 2019. Having said that, there is a, a very long list of illustrious drivers trying to stop him. We'll be back with live coverage here from Wilson Mill after these short messages. Back with us live here. Next up, it is race 30 of the weekend, the senior Rotax O-Plate final. We started the weekend with 60 odd drivers, 60, uh, 61 in total. We finished with 34. Let's run through the grid for this year's O plate in senior Rotax. Kai Hunter starts on pole position alongside his former teammate and good friend Matthew Higgins. Guy Cunnington and Macaulay Bishop start on row two. Kayna McQueen and Jack Lilly go from row three. Lewis Gilbert and Ben Follen start from row number four. Teddy Pritchard Williams, Joshua Graham, Tristan Rennie, and Kean Garrity. And oh no, Alex Moody. He is now in a bad moody. Lorenzo. Somebody didn't oh his tire on. Lorenzo Cordell, Neil Clark, Jack Collins, Jamie Perilly, uh, uh Perilli, and this uh Angus Scrivener and Tyler Harris. That's uh, your midfield running into row ten, Morgan Porter and Brandon Klein, Nagelvort, Spencer Brown and Reg Haywood go from row twelve. There is the rest of the order, the field coming round uh, to complete the formation lap. Yep. Already we've had problems, I think, for Tristan Rennie. I think William Pemble, yes, there is there William, is Pemble, William Pemble, has oh. had problem. And also Alex Moody. Are we good for a go? No, I thought no. that might be happening. Let's go around again. No, Just I to wouldn't. run through the second yes. half of the order once again. So uh, Neil Clark and Lorenzo Cordell on row seven. Jack Collins and Jamie Pirelli on row eight. Angus Scriven and Tyler Harris on row nine. Morgan Porter and Brandon klein Nagelvort on row ten. Spencer Brahm and Reg Hayward row eleven. William Pemble and Deacon Russell on row twelve. Archie Buttle and Gustav Usakovs on row 13. Ewan Charman, great to see him here in this final. He's on row 14 alongside Liam Hartley. 
Alex Cole and Alex Moody were due to start on row 15. Moody is already gone from this one. Stefan Kaczmarczyk and Lucas Ellingham go from row 16. Ellingham, who was the runner-up in this race last yep. year. Gabe Fairbrother and Lucas Schlegel completes the 34 qualifiers. And I just race. spotted Joe Turney in the paddock. I was yes. doing some driver coaching For with our Gentsy Motorsport, yeah. the Kart Republic. And, of course, Joe, uh, you know, recover, has recovered now after that uh, horrific accident that he suffered in the World Championships last year while he was on course to become Britain's next World Karting Champion. He probably still will be next Britain's next World Karting Champion. He's got to wait for this year to do and it. And it could be on home soil as well. And it could be on home well. soil as well. OK, we'll talk about that later in the year. Now we've got a British Open Champion to decide. 12 minutes are underway here at Wilton Mill. Away they go for the senior Rotax final. Good start for Kai Hunter straight into the lead. Guy Cunnington up to second place. There's a little bit of wrestling at the back of the field. Yes. And immediately, that's Caden McQueen on the attack in his first final in the O plates for KR Sports. Seven years with Croc Promotions. What can he do here? He's defending straight away from Matthew Higgins. But that is just the start. That Kai Hunter wanted, has won this race the last two oh. years, has won it three times in the last four, through coming there as well. Well, there's the driver wow. who broke that streak in 2021. Lewis Gilbert, the number four, is already gaining positions. Yeah, and Teddy Pritchard-Williams has also made a storming start. There goes Super Ted flying over the curbs. And there's Spencer Braum uh, up a couple of places on the CRG as well. Now, Teddy Pritchard-Williams has got to pass Lewis Gilbert. So Hunter Cunnington, Higgins, Gilbert and Pritchard-Williams makes the move, stick into Christmas corner and puts... Teddy up in, oh, on the back of the pack, oh. there's another driver, Ewan Charman, that is a heavily, ah, now, is he going to, there's a, a handshake there, is he okay? Something on That's that barrel has failed and uh, has taken Charman and it's taken Neo Clark and Archie Buttle out of the race. New leader, Guy Cunnington. Well, he did this a week ago in the club round preparing for this event. Guy Cunnington hits the front of the order at the end of lap number two. Demotes Hunter down to second place. There's Lucas Ellingham coming through the field. Multiple time club champion here at Wilton Mill. Runner up last year. What can he do? Yellow flag. No overtaking through here. Who went with Ewan Charm? Good to see that Ewan's okay. He had a really bad crash at Swire a few weeks ago. Been great to see him in this final. Uh, but his 2024 season it just hasn't got yeah. going yet at all. Ten minutes to go. There's another driver off there. That was a Tooley uh, Motorsport two, driver. Neo Clark. Yes. Neo Clark has fallen down to the bottom of the order. Buttle, Pemble and Moody, as we know, uh, didn't take the start. Guy Cunnington leading this race. So much success over the years. Now, of course, running his own team, his own effort. Look at the commitment of the drivers through the final chicane. What does yeah. he do here, Henry? Is that's the problem? Is that uh, Angus that's Scrivener the 49 in the number 49 card, yes. that's uh, had a problem? What does Cunnington do here? Does, how does he play this when he knows he's got Hunter and Higgins right behind him and a very fast charging Lewis Gilbert well, in fourth? Lorenzo Cordal's weekend of misery engine. Well, what Guy Cunnington needs to do is get his head down and drive it like he stole it. So Trowbridge leads Horton Le Spring, leads Trafeglois, leads Dol Rye. We've got, uh, you know, the south of England. You've got Mid Wales. You've got oh. Scotland. And you've got the People's Republic of Thailand. We are battling it out up at the front of the British Open Championship. That's good news for Cunnington. Head down and he's going. Well, we spoke to Matthew Higgins at the start of the weekend. We said, how is he going to race against his former teammates and good friend? He said, oh, the hard. same as I've always yep. done. Hard but fair. That was a great move from Matthew Higgins down the inside. Here comes the number 43 of Kenny wow. McQueen. And also, look at that down the inside. Number That's 33. Kean Geraghty. Kean Geraghty said this a few weeks ago in, uh, in Valencia. He's come alive. He's been off the pace in terms of race pace all weekend. We've seen it in a single lap. Now the pace is back for Geraghty in that strawberry racing machine and there's still a long way to go in this race. And you know I like the Jack Lilly in the number 33 car making the move. McQueen opened the door and Lilly just died through. Joshua Graham down to eighth. Macaulay Bishop down in ninth position. Geraghty tenth. Uh, and then behind the top ten, it's Rennie, Follen, Brougham, Porter, Usakovs, Hayward, Nagelvort, Perilli, Cole and Ellingham. 
it shows that we're going to, you know, so far, Kai Hunter, the only driver that really contended for the old plate last year, is there again. Now there's Bishop Hall, oh, Bishop Whoa. passing Graham, and uh, Garrity trying to go around the outside of Graham as well. So he makes a move. Graham comes back up the inside. Now, if I were Key and Garrity, uh, these two drivers, they raced in juniors last year together. I would just follow Macaulay Bishop. Every time Bishop opens the door, oh dear, black flag for Jamie Perilli. And I don't know why that would be. Perilli, he was running in about 60 to 70 place. There's Lewis Gilbert up into P2. Kai Hunter, his quest for a fourth British Open title is beginning to hang by an unravelling thread. But if there's one thing we've learned over the years in this commentary box, Henry, is it's never count out. Kai Hunter, there's a bit of management, of course, to do in this race. We're still not in the second half of it on time. Coming round through the final chicane once again. Guy Cunnington having taken the lead away from Hunter on lap two. There you see the black flag for the number 40 of Perilli out of this race. Up to Christmas corner they go. Here comes Lewis Gilbert. Has oh. he got the speed? He's going to the inside for the move for the lead in the O-plate final. And Senior Rotax has done it. And through. Brilliant stuff from the 2021 winner of this race. Is Guy Cunnington going to strike back? No. As out of the race after that black flag. There is the number 40 of Perilli. Now, J uh, Teddy Pritchard-Williams has just passed the reigning O-plate, GP plate, and British champion to move himself into fourth position. Gilbert, uh, I ignore the fact we've lost Matthew Higgins from the uh, timing and scoring pylon, but I can assure you that he is out there in the number uh, two, Dan Holland. I love this. Craft Motorsports, Guy Cunnington Racing, Dan Holland Racing, Strawberry Racing, Hunter Motorsports. This is the curtain raiser to what we're going to see all year in the British Championship, and I cannot wait. And there's more coming through from the back as well. Caden McQueen and Jack Lilly working together right now. Keen Garrity and Macaulay Bishop have swapped uh, places once more. Bishop's hopes of... Uh, of well, replicating what Hunter did in 2020, moving from being the junior champion the year before and winning the seniors on first go is probably fading away right now. Five minutes to go. Gilbert still leading this race from Higgins and Cunnington. He's got a bit of a gap sparks as they run flying. up towards uh, Christmas Corner. Indeed, Sparks flying full commitment here at Wilson Mill. Uh, absolutely fantastic. There's McQueen. And then you've got another... You, uh, run through the foot of the five teams. Seven different teams, the top seven. KR Sport and Sam Pollitt Racing all there as well. Oh, this is great, great stuff. But, you know, not for the team owners. And Higgins looks at Gilbert defence. Four and a half minutes to go. Uh, Gilbert's thinking to himself, well, you know, it's a bit early to bed. However, oh, Way. and uh, Higgins was saying, yes, uh, Lewis, three wide coming into the new corner. And Teddy Pritchard-Williams is up in the second place. He's had his strawberries this morning. Super Ted is flying. Is indeed. Guy Connington retakes the lead of the race. Has got a bit of a gap. The rest of them have got to get organised now. Joining the pack of uh, the, at the back there, you've got Caden McQueen and Jack Lilly down the inside. Bishop on Garrity for eighth place. So many laps. Those two drivers have raced each other round here through seniors this weekend, through juniors, through the cadets years as well. Great to see them fighting in the top ten once more. But we're focusing here at the front of the order on this battle for the lead. Guy Cunnington holds on to it for now. But Teddy Pritchard-Williams, this is why they call him Super Ted, is closing in now. It's got to be up into Christmas, you would think. But is three and a half minutes too early to go, Henry? Uh, no, I mean, in this type of race, you've got to go. When the car comes to you, you've got to go. Pritchard-Williams to the inside. Oh. Wheel to wheel. Cunnington loses 
Crow down to third and Gilbert. So it's now Pritchard Williams, Gilbert, Cunnington, Hunter. Here comes Higgins and you've got now Lily and McQueen and Bishop have joined the party. Hunter back to third. And this is it. This is when Kai Hunter starts to strike. He can, he can sense that weakness of ones ahead. He knows three minutes is more than enough time for him to race through back to the front of an order and take his third senior row tax O plate in a row. Less than three minutes to go. Teddy Pritchard leads at the end of lap number 12. Lewis Gilbert is right there. We've already seen him pull one move up into Christmas Corner. What is the waft like up the hill? It's not bad for either of them to the inside. Pritchard Williams, that's going to bring Hunter back into play. Connington back into play. Higgins, Lily, McQueen, Bishop, Geraghty, Graham, Joshua, Graham's back in this as well. Oh. As down into Ashby. Oh. Teddy Pritchard Williams is oh. trying to hold them all up. Surely this is going to come to blows for someone. Three wide. McQueen. McQueen round the outside. Takes fourth place. That is experience round this Wilton Mill circuit. Caden McQueen is on the charge. You know what? Lewis Gilbert there, he did, he gave a little nudge to Teddy Pritchard Williams going into Ashby's and slowed down inadvertently back at the field. That was very, very gentlemanly driving there from Lewis Gilbert because he knew that he probably pushed him wide. And we've now got Gustav Usakovs in 12th place is the last driver in this pack. Guy Cunnington has fallen down. Two, four, six, eight. We've got about 20 drivers. I know Alpha Live have got a new feature, race of the week. You can close the polls on it. It's going to be this one. 90 seconds to go. Teddy Pritchard Williams still leads. Kai Hunter waiting for that opportunity to go through. You know he's going to go for it. This is why he's been win <laughs> race winner in this race so many times, three times before. Can he find a way through? In, back in comes Gilbert as well. Over the curb again jumping over that curb huge amount of it taken by Guy Cunnington there's going to be three more laps of this one ladies and gentlemen and we still don't know we haven't a clue who's going to be open champion for 2024 Hunter to the outside oh, no. and goes across the grass Pritchard Williams spins out and it's gone the hope of being another Welsh champion in this race is over Lewis Gilbert has come to the front Lewis Gilbert could he take a Another victory like he did in 2021. Matthew wow. Higgins is still there. Bishop's there. <laughs> Macaulay Bishop. Don't we wrote him out, off, Bishop didn't we? Yet. What are we doing in this comms box? Because Macaulay Bishop, the winner of the junior race last year, with two laps to go, Hunter is out. Hunter that is out. it. The run for the last two years will not continue to three. And it's one, two, three clear of the field. Gilbert defends the outside. Bishop, Bishop around, around the outside. outside. That oh is my outrageous. Goodness, me. The junior champion from last year has done thousands of overtakes around Wilton Mill over the years. That may well be the best one he's ever done. But the work is not complete. Oh, oh, no. Time is up. We're on the penultimate lap. Bishop hits the front. Macaulay Bishop leads this race Higgins to the inside of Gilbert the clock has struck zero the countdown is over one lap 1200 meters Macaulay Bishop leads by 10 cart lengths at what is being an absolutely pulsating race checks over his shoulder Higgins is second Gilbert the fact the fight is on further back Jack Lilly defending from Graham Cunnington Porter but it's a Dan Holland 1-2 on a weekend where well you've got to be time it right that's what you've got to do Macaulay Bishop will come into Osiers Higgins in second and Full Slim Shady in effect, round the outside, round the outside. Bishop is going to be British Open champion for the second straight year. He did everything to win in juniors. He took every win, and that's his first big one in seniors. Macaulay Bishop becomes senior Rotax British Open champion for 2024. <laughs> he was down in eighth place. We wrote him off. But that's why you shouldn't. Macaulay Bishop, I tip you know my something? hat to yes. you over all the years I've seen this man race around this racetrack. That 
That was the best one yet. Do you know something? I haven't seen emotion like that. Last year, he made a bit of history. He won two British titles. Last, I haven't seen emotion like that from McCauley Bishop since he won the 2020 British Cadet IARMY Championship at PFI. That's how much it means to him because he's got a huge weight of expectation on his shoulders coming into this year. And uh, yeah, he raced in senior in the grand finals. I've got to say, he didn't endear himself to a lot of people with his pick him up, put him down, you know, attack, 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 attack attitude. That was two months ago. Oh, there's a nose cone for Matthew Higgins. That will drop him out of the podium. There's Caden McQueen. I tell you what, let's run down the provisional finishing order as they finished on track because we had 10 drivers, well, uh, 12 drivers separated by four seconds. It was Bishop, Higgins, Gilbert. But we know Higgins has got a penalty. Then we have McQueen fourth, Morgan Porter from 19th to 5th, Jack Lilly in 6th, Joshua Graham, Guy Cunnington, Gustav Usakovs, Kian Geraghty. Gustav Usakovs gained 17 places in that race and just missing out on the top 10. Ben Folland, Tristan Rennie, Spencer Braun, Brandon Nagelvoort and Reg Hayward. The list of winning Teddy Pritchard Williams finishes 18th. Oh, what could I mean? There's Reg Hayward up and out of his cart already. There's Kai Hunter and, you know, it hasn't gone this time. But, you know, the team, the family team, they're there. They, did, they, they, they are. are there. Alfie Lawrence's mechanic uh, helping hit the cart back to the thing. We're going to obviously, Nicole's going to speak to our winners. We are going to speak to, uh, well, I will come back to round it off, but that was 12 minutes of everything that we love about this sport. I'll I tell you what, mate. We, we the two of us, we've, we've been round the world. We've been round, right, you've, you've, you've been to America, we've been round Europe. All right. I don't think it gets any better than that. Here no. in the British, the Viratul British where it's Championship. At. Daventry is where Road it's Tax at. final. That was tremendous. Never mind race of the week. I think that's a contender for race of the year. Early and doors, it's, only, right. it's only March, ladies and gentlemen. If you enjoyed that, if it's your first time here, make sure you've clicked that subscribe button. Well. And uh, of course, to our cast in the UK as well. What a what a way to finish things here at Wilton Mill. I thought that we would. I mean, the, the race of the year. I mean, we we had a, we had a couple of amazing races in the USA earlier this year. We had a fantastic mighty Bambino electric race at Glen Gorse last weekend. That is a, for an MS UK a Motorsport UK British title. Uh, but <laughs> there's the smiles. Wow. There's the smiles and Teddy Pritchard, but he's well. Teddy, he said that he was going to be a factor, that he was he coming was. forward, he, and he was. And uh, um, but there's uh, there's Gary Shield from Jag Rotax and uh, Macaulay Bishop. He passes the telephone of doom. There is no thing. And there's uh, there is uh, yeah Gary and uh, Tina Shield from Jag Rotax. Now what he's got to do, he's got to get over the way scales. Uh, there's Lucy Derrick, who's been providing a lot of social media content for us this weekend. She's part of a really big Motorsport UK Alpha Live team of officials. Let's have a quick, a quick look. Can we? <laughs> a quick look at the <laughs> highlights of this one. Uh, Hunter and Cunnington led away. It was a good, clean start. There was, there was a Stefan Kasmarsik at the back of the field, losing a bit of ground. That was the problem, Archie Buttle and Ewan Charman. And it was all handshakes at the end of it, so that was okay. Cunnington led from Hunter, and this was sort of like quite calm because there were only what, five drivers in the main pack at this point. However, just the nature of the racing, people, you know, they weren't overly defending. However, it was close. Higgins, he made his bid for victory. Guy Cunnington, this was about three and a half minutes ago. This is what we said, you know, what has Guy Cunnington got to do? I was like, drive it like you stole it. Yep. Uh, Gilbert went for the move and got the in, got the move done. However, Gilbert then started to defend. Obviously, he's thinking, okay, if I lose, if I'm not going to lose one place, look at the sparks coming over the curbs. About there, oof! That was one of the Craft Motorsport carts. Uh, jig appointment of the jig for that cart. Um, but that, yeah, that's this is where it all started to get a little bit um, touchy. It did indeed. Guy Cunnington took the lead once again. Teddy Pritchard-Williams up to second place. And then...
the Welshman went on the attack in his first uh, British this Star Championship a, weekend for Strawberry. <laughs> but they're very close there. Yes. Got to the front. Great move from Lewis Gilbert there to, uh, to take and, second place. And that's, and where, Gilbert, else that's where Gilbert backed the field up because he knew he'd give Pritchard a bit of a nudge going into Ashby's. So he then slowed everything down. And that's what sort of the, kicked off the chain reaction that eventually led to this. It's this moment indeed. Hunter having a strong second half went to the outside. A little bit of oversteer yeah. for Pritchard Williams on corner entry. That took both of those drivers out. And then the moment which, let's see this again, Bishop to the outside. That's a that's, that's two of the top four from last year's senior road tax British Championship that he's just gone by. I know he had a, oh. a relatively easy run to the junior title last year. Well, that's that was mega. Well, that's two drivers that have both finished the top ten of the of the road tax grand final. The, 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 yeah, the best in the world. in the world at road tax. And Bishop is first senior, first year as a senior driver pulls off an absolute worldy of a move. And, uh, well, if that's not wow. whetted your appetite for the How long till ahead? PFI? Can we go to PFI now? Three weeks. Can we pack up You're going to have to Three wait, weeks. Henry. Oh, Three weeks. I can't but, uh, yeah, well, oh. that's uh, properly got us going here in the box, ready yes. for uh, round one of what will be a five-round meeting for this year's Rotax calendar uh, for the full uh, Vera Tools British Car Championship season. PFI on the weekend of the 19th to 21st of April, Lark Hall uh, in mid May. Warden Law, great to be going back to Warden Law at the end of June. Kim Bolton, and then back here for Wilton Mill uh, to finish the season as well. It is going to be a stunner. If you thought last year's Senior Road Tax Championship was good, I think 2024 is going to be uh, even better. Absolutely brilliant stuff from, uh, from all 34 drivers. Uh, we knew it was going to be a competitive one, and uh, indeed it was. Hopefully we'll be uh, down in the paddock, down in Park Ferme shortly uh, with uh, Wendy Cole Sutherland. And yes, we can now head down to Park Ferme uh, to get some of the thoughts of our drivers from that incredible senior Rotax O-Plate final. Nicole Sutherland, over to you. So final race of this weekend, complete senior road tax. We're here with Lewis Gilbert, who finished second. Lewis, how did the race go for you? Yeah, it's pretty hard when you're starting a little bit further back, but we got we got to front pretty easily, and then it was just a fight from there, to be honest. Uh, a few up, ups and downs during the race, but we, I think we've done a good, good job to get second, so I'm happy with that. Well, very, very well done, Lewis. And is there anybody you'd like to thank? Yeah, big thanks to Craft Motorsport for getting us here. Pretends the racing engines for the ongoing work with the power. And uh, mum and dad, Kyle, Luke, everyone back at home who's uh, supported us. Well, congratulations, Lewis. Thanks very much. We'll just flip over to third place, which is provisionally Caden McQueen. Caden, how was your race? Give us a, give us a debrief. Uh, yeah, very messy. Um, you know, like I said previously in the interview yesterday, uh, everyone's going to give it their all. It's not about championship points. It's just a one-off race, and you know, everyone wants to win the O plate. So, uh, the first big, big British race of the year, uh, everyone gives it their best shot, and I think that just sometimes was maybe a little bit too far and got a little bit messy. But uh, yeah, no, it was good. I don't think we quite had the pace. We just managed to race it well and bring it home in third. Yeah, and of course, the British Kart Championships will be here later on in the year. We'll be returning to Wilton Mill, but of course, for that race, points will count. How are you feeling about that one? Yeah, I think uh, maybe a little bit of work to do, uh, more my side than the team. Uh, but that's not an issue. We've got plenty of time to, to get everything dialed in and ready for that event. And is there anybody you'd like to thank for this weekend, Caden? Yeah, a massive, uh, massive thank you to KR Sport, um, KR Sport Engines as well. You know, my sponsors behind the scenes do an amazing job to make me be here. Uh, and also to my parents for putting so much time and effort into something that, you know, is, is a hobby that's very expensive so, um, and time consuming. But yeah, no, a big thank you to everyone behind the scenes. They've done an amazing job and give me something that, that can win. Thanks very much, Caden. And of course, the driver we're all looking forward to hearing from, Macaulay Bishop. Macaulay, I don't think I can say a lot more than what a move. Yeah, it was good. I mean, um, I was sitting in P3 uh, the whole race. I wasn't that quick and like raw pace, but I'd, um, all start defending, made my way up the list, and um, yeah, two laps to go. Just 
So um, you know, I just got a bit creative. You know, I just went for the move, see if it worked. It worked, and then um, got a little gap in the last lap. Just got my head down, and then yeah, just finished the race P1. And I think uh, a move like that, especially around the outside in that corner, on two very, very quick drivers, not many people would even consider it. What what was going through your head? Well, I was just sitting behind them, and um, I was like, I might as well just go for it. Um, I nearly went off the track, but um, luckily I just managed to keep it on the track. And is there anybody you'd like to thank for this weekend, McCauley? Yeah, Dan and brother for mechanicing, all of DHR, support's been really good. Uh, Dan, uh, my mum as well, and time racing engines. Congratulations, McCauley, provisional O plate champion. There's your plate. So I'm now joined by Andrew Mather. However, Andrew, you not a race podium finisher. Absolutely not. Way too slow to even be on the uh, on the grid with uh, with these drives. But what a final! What what a way to uh, to finish. What's been a great weekend and a, and a great way to to kick off things for uh, for the Viratools British Car Championships. Great to be part of the team. Big thanks to to yourself, Nicole, for uh, the the weekend and everything that you've done down here. And Henry as well. Great to have Henry back in the paddock. Wow. Yes, I know. I was gonna, what, what a weekend, you know, what a weekend. Can I just say, well done and very well done. You know, we are all about bringing youth into motorsport in every fact, you, you know, wow. sort of youth <laughs> and youth there, you know, straight from the, from the driver's seats into the thing. So this is all about development, bringing on the future of the sport. It's the future of the sport on the track, in the paddock, behind the cameras, behind the microphone as well. Um, it's it's, it's going to be a very, 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 very good season. I've been waiting for this moment since last call last year. <laughs> it's great to be back. The championship is looking really, really strong. I love the innovations that Alpha, the Motorsport UK, are putting in because it's always a combined effort. You know, the media have got to work with the organisers, the organisers have got to work with the media to create the best pr overall product that you, the viewer, watch. We hope you've enjoyed it. Yes. Indeed. And we all do it again. Uh, three weeks' time. Hope you can join us for PF International for round one uh, of the Rotax calendar. And if you're not done so already, make sure you've subscribed and hit all those notification bells so you don't miss a single moment here uh, for the Vera Tools British Car Championships. Hope you have enjoyed it from myself, from Henry, from Nicole. Uh, we'll see you at PFI in a few weeks' time for the start of the, uh, the main championship season. For now, though, here from uh, Wilton Mill. Enjoy the rest of your Easter Sunday and bye bye. <laughs>